The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, Book One. From my grandfather Verus, decency and a mild temper. From what they say and I remember of my natural father, integrity and manliness. From my mother, piety, generosity, the avoidance of wrongdoing, and even the thought of it. Also simplicity of living, well clear of the habits of the rich. From my great-grandfather, not to have attended schools for the public, to have had good teachers at home, and to realize that this is the sort of thing on which one should spend lavishly. From my tutor, not to become a green or blue supporter at the races, or side with the lights or heavies in the amphitheater, to tolerate pain and feel few needs, to work with my own hands and mind my own business, to be deaf to malicious gossip, from Diognetus, to avoid empty enthusiasms, to disbelieve all that is talked by miracle mongers and quacks, about incantations, exorcism of demons and the like, not to hold quail fights or be excited by such sports, to tolerate plain speaking and have an affinity for philosophy, and to attend the lectures first of Bacchaeus, then of Tandesis and Marcianus, to write essays from a young age, to love the camp bed, the hide blanket, and all else involved in the Greek training. From Rusticus, to grasp the idea of wanting correction and treatment for my character, not to be diverted into a taste for rhetoric, so not writing up my own speculations, delivering my own little moral sermons, or presenting a glorified picture of the ascetic or the philanthropist, to keep clear of speechifying, versifying, and pretentious language, not to walk around at home in ceremonial dress, or do anything else like that, to write letters in an unaffected style, like his own letter written to my mother from Sinuessa, to be readily recalled to conciliation with those who have taken or given offence, just as soon as they themselves are willing to turn back. To read carefully, not satisfied with my own superficial thoughts, or quick to accept the facile views of others. To have encountered the discourses of Epictetus, to which he introduced me with his own copy. From Apollonius, moral freedom, the certainty to ignore the dice of fortune, and have no other perspective, even for a moment, than that of reason alone. To be always the same man, unchanged in sudden pain, in the loss of a child, in lingering sickness. To see clearly in his living example, that a man can combine intensity and relaxation. Not to be impatient in explanation, the observance of a man who clearly regarded as the least of his gifts, his experience and skill in communicating his philosophical insights, the lesson of how to take apparent favours from one's friends, neither compromised by them nor insensitive in their rejection. From Sextus a kindly disposition, and a pattern of a household governed by the paterfamilias, the concept of life lived in accordance to nature, an unaffected dignity, intuitive concern for his friends, Tolerance of both ordinary people and of the emptily opinionated. An agreeable manner with all, so that the pleasure of his conversation was greater than any flattery. And his very presence brought him the highest respect from all company. Certainty of grasp and method in the discovery and organization of essential principles of life. Never to give the impression of anger or any other passion, but to combine complete freedom from passion with the greatest human affection, to praise without fanfare, and to wear great learning lightly. From Alexander the Grammarian, not to leap on mistakes, or captiously interrupt anyone who makes an error of vocabulary, syntax, or pronunciation, but neatly to introduce the correct form of that particular expression, by way of answer, confirmation, or discussion of the matter itself rather than its phrasing, or by some other such fallacious prompting. From fronto, to understand the effect of suspicion, caprice, and hypocrisy in the exercise of absolute rule, and that for the most part these people we call patricians are somewhat short of human affection. From Alexander the Platonist, 
rarely and never without essential cause, to say or write to anyone that I am too busy, nor to use a similar excuse, advancing pressure of circumstances, in constant avoidance of the proprieties inherent in our relations to our fellows and contemporaries, from Catullus, not to spurn a friend's criticism, even if it may be an unreasonable complaint, but to try to restore his usual feelings, to speak of one's teachers with whole-hearted gratitude, as is recorded of Domitius and Athenodotus, and a genuine love for children. From Severus, love of family, love of truth, love of justice, to have come by his help to understand Phasia, Helvidius, Cato, Dio, Brutus, to have conceived the idea of a balanced constitution, a commonwealth based on equality and freedom of speech, and of a monarchy which values above all the liberty of the subject. From him too a constant and vigorous respect for philosophy, beneficence, unstinting generosity, optimism, his confidence in the affection of his friends, his frankness with those who met with his censure, and open likes and dislikes, so that his friends did not need to guess his wishes. From Maximus self-mastery, immune to any passing whim, good cheer in all circumstances, including illness, a nice balance of character, both gentle and dignified, an uncomplaining energy for what needs to be done, the truth he inspired in everyone, that he meant what he said and was well-intentioned in all that he did, proof against surprise or panic, in nothing either hurried or hesitant, never short of resource, never downcast or cringing, or on the other hand angry or suspicious, generosity in good works, and a forgiving and truthful nature, the impression he gave of undeviating rectitude as a path chosen rather than enforced, the fact that no one would ever have thought himself belittled by him, or presumed to consider himself superior to him, and a pleasant humour. From my adoptive father, gentleness and an immovable adherence to decisions made after full consideration, no vain taste for so-called honours, stamina and perseverance, a ready ear for anyone with any proposal for the common good, to reward impartially, giving everyone their due, experience of where to tighten, where to relax, a common courtesy, excusing his court from constant attendance at dinner with him, and the obligation to accompany him out of town, and those kept away by some other commitment, always found him no different towards them, focused and persistent in deliberation in council, never satisfied with first impressions and leaving a question prematurely, the concern to keep his friends, with no extremes of surfeit or favouritism, his own master in all things, and serene with it, foresight for the longer issues, and unfussy control of the least detail, the check he put in his reign on acclamations and all forms of flattery, his constant watch on the needs of the empire, his stewardship of its resources, and his tolerance of some people's criticism in this area, no superstitious fear of the gods, nor with men any populism or obsequious courting of the mob, but a sober steadfastness in all things, and nowhere any vulgar or newfangled taste, in those things which conduce to the comfort of life, and here fortune gave him plenty, to enjoy them without pride or apology either, so no routine acceptance of their presence, or regret in their absence, the fact that no one would ever describe him as a fraud or an impostor, or a pedant, but rather as a man of mellow wisdom, and mature experience, beyond flattery, able to take charge of his own and others' affairs. Further, his high regard for genuine philosophers. For the other sort he had no hard words, but easily saw through them, sociability too, and a sense of humour not taken to excess, sensible care for his own body, neither vain nor valetudinarian, but not neglectful either, so that his own attention to himself left very little need for doctors, doses, or applications. Most importantly, his readiness to defer ungrudgingly 
to those with some special ability. It might be in literary expression, or the study of laws or customs or any other subject, and to give them his own active support to reach acknowledged eminence in their own specialities, acting always in accordance with tradition, yet not making the preservation of tradition an overt aim. Further, no liking for change and chance, but a settled habit in the same places and the same practices. To resume instantly after attacks of migraine, fresh again and vigorous for his usual work, not to keep many matters secret to himself, only a very few exceptional cases, and those solely of state concern. Sense and moderation in such things as the provision of shows, contracting of public works, doles and distributions, the acts of a man with an eye for precisely what needs to be done, not the glory of its doing. He was not the one to bathe at all hours. He had no urge to build houses. He was not particular about food, the material and color of his clothes, or youthful beauty in his slaves. The fact that his dress came from Lorium, sent up from his country house there, the many details of his way of life at Lanuvium, how he handled the apologetic customs officer in Tusculum. Nothing about him was harsh, relentless, or impetuous. And you would never say of him that he broke out a sweat. But everything was allotted its own time and thought. As by a man of leisure, his way was unhurried, organized, vigorous, consistent in all. What is recorded of Socrates would apply to him, too, that he could regulate abstinence and enjoyment where many people are too weak-willed to abstain, or enjoy too indulgently. Strength of character, and endurance or sobriety as the case may be, signifies the man of full and indomitable spirit, as was shown by Maximus in his illness. From the gods, to have had good grandparents, good parents and a good sister, good teachers, good family, relatives, and friends, almost everything, and that I did not blunder into offending any of them, even though I had the sort of disposition which might indeed have resulted in some such offence. It was the grace of the gods that no set of circumstances likely to show me up ever arose, that I was not brought up any longer than I was with my grandfather's mistress, and that I kept my innocence, leaving sexual experience to the proper time, and indeed somewhat beyond it, that I came under a ruler and a father who was to strip me of all conceit, and bring me to realize that it is possible to live in a palace without feeling the need for bodyguards, or fancy uniforms, candelabra, statues, or other trappings of such like pomp, but that one can reduce oneself very close to the station of a private citizen, and not thereby lose any dignity or vigor in the conduct of a ruler's responsibility for the common good that I was blessed with a brother whose character could spur me to care for myself, and whose respect and affection were likewise a source of joy to me, that my children were not born short of intelligence or physically deformed, that I did not make further progress in rhetoric, poetry, and other pursuits in which I could well have been absorbed, if I had felt this my right path, that I was quick to raise my tutors to the public office which I thought they desired, and did not put them off in view of their youth, with promises for the future. That I came to know Apollonius, Rusticus, Maximus. That I acquired a clear and constant picture of what is meant by the life according to nature, so that with regard to the gods, their communications from that world, their help and their inspiration, nothing now prevents me living the life of nature. My falling somewhat short still is due to my own fault, and my failure to observe the promptings, not to say the instructions of the gods, that my body has held out so far in a life such as mine, that I never touched Benedicta or Theodotus, and that later experience of sexual passion left me cured, that though I was often angry with Rusticus, my behavior never went to the point of regret, that my mother, fated to die young, nevertheless lived her last years with me, that whenever I wanted to help someone in poverty, I was never told that there was no source of affordable money, and that I myself never fell into similar want for financial assistance from another. That my wife is as she is, so submissive, loving, and unaffected, and that I found no lack of suitable tutors for my children.
that I was given help through dreams, especially how to avoid spitting blood and bouts of dizziness, and the response of the oracle at Gator, just as you use yourself, that for all my love of philosophy, I did not fall in with any sophist, or devote my time to the analysis of literature or logic, or busy myself with cosmic speculation. All these things need the help of God's and fortune's favour. If you could take religion and a, and a spiritual process and make somebody activate a part of themselves that they didn't know was there, you got something there. And I think that's all of what we're doing in all ways is trying to reunite, reactivate those parts of ourselves that we've had cut off or we've had dormant to try to survive in this sick and twisted dynamic. The spiritual practice, right? Certain things like I do here, just meeting with people daily, talking it out, uh, doing a simulation, right? Imagining certain things, maybe a form of meditation you could argue, uh, will reform the perspective will reform the way we think and feel and how we act and live if there's truth there that resonates. So that's the modality I prefer because I think anything else is kind of a shortcut and really it's just a tool meant for extremes that, you know, even then you still have to come back to your life and learn how to live it. It might just be that everybody should have some experience in their life that takes them out of themselves and it forces them to surrender over to something so they can learn the art of surrender in certain situations. You know, how do we learn to really live and thrive again? Cool to have structure, habit, procedure, process, certain levels of responsibility, accountability that lead to success. How are we going to love again? How are we going to live again? How are we going to thrive and co-create and have community? Right? So I see both aspects in self and I see a lot of those same aspects and others that come forth in these spaces. But again, it's a slippery slope uh, in a world of religious dogmatics when the other side of that is actual nihilist, infidel, worldly scum who really want a whole population on drugs, right? It's a slippery slope because one side is going to call you the devil. The other side is going to say, yeah, let's do that so they can take drugs all day, every day and claim it to be the all. I can't. That's why I can't support it and promote it because I know what it will turn into. Greetings, folks. Another day at the office, Outdoor Command Center. Uh, Brian O'Shea is in the back, and that's always uh, a high point for me. And I'm always excited to see him. He always brings something to the equation. Uh, if nothing else, something to work with, something to play off of. So I appreciate uh, him and his good humor uh, and obsequious nature, as the man down there mentions. A great word that was used, million dollar word. So Brian O'Shea has an obsequious nature when it comes to comedy. Okay. He's very attentive to the details and the understandings and the science and the art of comedy. Sir, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, sir. Uh, thanks for having me. Obsequious. What the fuck that means? Think you just defined it. God, My yeah. sister knows obsequious. She lives up the block from me. She's an exotic dancer. It's Rob Cleveland's friend. Yeah, Rob Cleveland's cousin, obsequious. That's not right, man. Heard great funny. things about you. Holy shit, Joe Rogan's down there? No, you didn't hear great things about me. I called you Ho Rogan. Why would you lie to me, Joe Rogan, right off the fucking bat? See, this is why I can't do business with any of you. Right off the bat, he's gonna argue he's gonna he's gonna lie to me and then cause an argument. You know damn well you haven't heard great things about me concerning you, because I've talked shit about you. Unless you're just willing to go past that immediately and have good humor about it because you're immensely successful. Well, maybe that's why you are where you are, but highly doubtful. I'm thinking that's potentially not Joe Rogan, because it doesn't line up. I've done broadcasts saying Ho Rogan would be here. And I lied. I always tell the truth, even when I lie. Because folks knew when I put that up there that he wouldn't be here. So, was it really a lie? Or was it clickbaiting? Triggering? So, go ahead, Joe Rogan, if that's you. Come on up here. I want to see you and talk to you. 
If not, I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's not really you. Okay. Joe Rogan isn't going to concern himself with the likes of Paul Unslave, theorist, Sobset, potential terrorist, according to many. Uh, oh, no, he won't. He's got more important things to do. I mean, there are the Thorpe family. Why would he come here and bother himself with me when there's a whole family of talent and ability over there? Wit. Brian O'Shea, get back here. I didn't tell you to leave. And what do you got to say for yourself and Ho Rogan down there? Ho Rogan. Theo Vaughn, I think, tried to pit me off to Ho Rogan. Caught me backstage at the comedy store one time. Talking and Joe Rogan just interrupted like you and just dominated the conversation. And he's like, let's go watch Theo. And then he, they all went left and I went right. But if I went left, I think I would have. Maybe I ended up sucking its cock or something. That's one way into the industry. It's the way most people take into the industry to be tank with you. What I know. What Snafu Snaps tells me. He says they're all pedo pogos. And you pretty much got to suck P. Diddy or Joe Rogan or someone's dick to even get in the room. You know, I don't want to be a part of any of that necessarily. I mean, I don't know. No, probably not. I'm sleeping in the tent the last few days. That's good. Getting proper rest. What else? New job, opportunity. Went on stage last night. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what I got for you. All right. Yeah. Oh, fuck. No, 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 these guys are cool down there. You're all right. Right. Yeah, we're all cool here. Everything's cool. Yeah, it is cool. <clears throat> a lot of synchronicities. A lot of things like time. Are you met Joe Rogan is what you're telling me? I'm pretty sure I just heard you say that. I kind of check out when you speak. You know that. You know what? You know how that works. Yeah. It's probably the way Joe Rogan checked out. I think you said that. You just said Joe Rogan checked out when you were speaking, just kind of cut you off and said, hey, let's go watch Theo Vaughn because he immediately recognized that you were, wow, completely lacking in any kind of energy or success or results and that probably Theo Vaughn would have some of that when you obviously have none of it. Yeah. Is it possible yeah. he came to the same conclusion I did? While I don't necessarily like Joe Rogan, uh, is it possible that we both had the same conclusion of you at one time, at one time, right? It's important yeah, that we yeah. clarify, like, like, like before at one time, that was the way like yeah. Jack always says like yesterday, there was a problem today. No. Yeah, absolutely. That's possible. I met him three times. This is my new symbol. Uh, Trident times. Yeah, I met him three. Uh, first time was I was grinding poker for the summer. My buddy, and all I did was watch Joe Rogan podcast. People think I love Joe Rogan. They're like, bought me tickets to his comedy show, right? My, the guy who was backing me in poker tournaments. He's like, you worked hard all summer. I'm going to buy you tickets to Joe Rogan, and we're going to go together. We went and saw Joe Rogan and then afterwards. Are you sure that that wasn't a date, technically? It sounded like that guy just took you on a date. <laughs> You've been working so hard. I'm going to take you out to dinner, and we're going to go to a comedy show, all right? You fucking homo. You're going on a date with me. Sorry, go yeah. ahead. I just, I don't know, it sounded really weird the way you just phrased that. But go ahead. It's like Puffy yeah. taking other men shopping, you know? Right. Yeah, I end up in these weird uh, homoerotic situations. I lived with a gay guy in L.A. Anyways, um, I didn't pay rent, really. But anyways, yeah, I met him. Uh, then after the show, there was a big, long line, right, for everyone to shake his hand and suck his cock a little bit. So I didn't want to wait the big, long line, so I went walking around. And then I came back like 20 minutes later. The line was gone, and he was talking to someone. I interrupted him. And I, instead of being like, hey, man, I... I like your podcast and shit. I just kind of touched him and then I just shook his hand without saying anything. And he looked at me like this. He was like, like, like he was pissed off. I think that I kind of interrupted his conversation and then I didn't say anything. I shook his hand and he kind of just like gave me the, you're a fucking idiot vibe. And then I, so you forced a handshake with Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? What did you think that was going to lead to? I just, in like, my what head, went through your mind? if I forced his handshake with Joe Rogan right now, he's totally going to be impressed. I took charge. <laughs> I'm gonna just emanate success. 
only a successful man would force a handshake with Joe Rogan or a crazy person. <laughs> right. I was a little bold. The, I, I, here what's going on? What's, what's going, what's, what was that? Oh, my car. I keep looking at my car like if someone going into it. <laughs> you think right someone's going to steal it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm an idiot. What are you? <laughs> he's he's keeping know. track of that, that Lumina from 99. Right, there's a high chance someone's gonna want to take that full of jars of urine and a bedroll. There's just there's, there's multiple sleeping bags in there and urine, and he's he's watching this thing like it's like you're in no danger, bro. You're in no danger of that car getting stolen. I think I just like when people walk by it and look at it, and then they stare at it for a little bit. Sometimes take oh, so you're watching to see people's reaction to them looking at your car. Yeah, you want to know if you're getting put on radar. <laughs> That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I'm in a posh area, so I really stand a out. Posh area. But today, I did order a hot water to put my peppermint tea bag in, and then I slid the lady a dollar bill. That's like, I'm not that much of a loser sitting here all day using your bathroom facilities, you know? But with the Joe Rogan shit, so here was what I was thinking. I was like, okay, everyone was just like, oh, I love your podcast. You're great. And he just went through that for a half hour straight, the big long line. So I was just like, I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to shake the guy's hand. And But he looked, but I interrupted this conversation and I was an idiot. All right. Then, <laughs> second time I met Joe Rogan, he was in Chicago. And he works for the UFC, right? And so these, whatever, dude. I ended up taking a picture with him, right? Put my arm around him. He's real short. And I smiled and he smiled. Someone took a picture. Took because everyone was taking pictures with him after the show. I didn't even go to the show, but the, I just went to the after show to take a picture with him. Like an idiot. Then Paul hates me. Then the third time. I'm not saying anything, Brian O'Shea. I'm holding my tongue. I'm letting you go. Right. Then the third time was the one I described in uh at the comedy store where I was, yeah, there was like a three or four comics, and then Joe pops in and he got real like he was real like uh candid. He uh, he was like treated me as like some. He thought thought I was just like some professional comic, well paid person, just a normal comic guy. So he's doing a candid thing, and he goes, "Let's go, just go watch Theo." And I was like, "Should I go?" Fuck that. I don't know. I thought that story would be more interesting or something, but at the sparring session, go. What sparring session? The Rogan? Right. That's what you that's what oh, someone would say. He doesn't want to bring it up. The spar the workout. The workout we did together. Yeah, I mean, come on. You know, you're gonna like if you're gonna tell the story, go all the way. Don't bullshit us here. Yeah. Well the here's the thing. So there's this girl, right? I was, when I was living in Vegas, I was living with these two, this young comedian. Dude. Let's get to it, man. You blew Joe Rogan. It's right, obvious. Right. It's a fucking girl. emanating from your core. A girl I dated, her roommate blew Rogan, and she and the girl oh I was my dating. God. Ah. Ah. Sorry. It happens sometimes. I just, I, I holler out because I just, oh my God, I can't imagine. Joe Rogan has the balls to be Joe Rogan and go around and let women blow him. But oh, I'm in the UFC. I was on Fear Factor. I'm Joe Rogan. Blow me. Right. And then the and then they do it. Shocking. Shocking that that even exists. Yeah. So this. So so I'm living in Vegas. I'm I'm living with seriously. This no, I gotta stop you. I gotta stop you. I need a I need some feedback here because I might be subtly hating. Any women, if there's any women down there, uh, transistors, trans, trans, transformers, whatever. If there's anyone down there that could just inform me, do you find Joe Rogan to be attractive at all? Is a bizarre looking head, quite frankly, so do I. Uh, and so does Brian O'Shea. He covers it up like most doctors do online. Um, it's the hair, it's the greasy hair today. The reason where was that going with this, right? extremely odd shaped head bizarre look in his eye constantly acting like two and three different people just fake seemingly um way too confident and douchey for his own good 
Yeah, man. All right. A lot of these same things will be said about me. I'm going to move off this topic. He's, he's Jack, though, even though he's 5'6". So, right. Even that's like douchey and annoying. Can you imagine meeting a man who's 5'6"? It's like it's Joe Rogan. Oh, man. I got to get out of here. I don't want to be in the room with this guy. Yeah. So just, I'm in Vegas. Eye to chest with a grown man. <laughs> I should pull up that picture of me and him. I should it should show how the height difference. Um yeah, so I'm living living in Los Angeles. I got this roommate, this kid, and he's dating, he's a comedian, and he's dating this other comedian chick, right? And I, and I get jealous because he brings she comes over every day, and I'm just like lonely, lonely island in uh Los Angeles. And uh and this chick, anyways, ends up like touring with rogan and there's rumors that she's sleeping with him. i don't know how the fuck i got on this dude i thought that story was going somewhere too oh no did you say, did you say lonely island this lifestyle is the no, this is this is Lonely Island. Yeah, that's that might be before your time, Brian O'Shea. That's that's Fantasy Island, but it's Lonely Island. It's the Lonely island, island you occupy. Yeah, Lonely Island is also the name of a musical trio from SNL, or one of the guys was from SNL, and I think they did that Dick in the Box song. It's all connected, dude. It's all synchronistic. Oh, You're like real low energy here and like low on content. Fuck it off. It's, it's like really, you're really kind of straining me to kind of do something with you in this. And you're looking around now. That's never <laughs> I'm looking for people to never feels good when you start doing and, that. Looking for people to put the camera in. The Can I ask you why you, again, you are a consummate professional and you're very obsequious when it comes to comedy and performing. Why would you choose Starbucks? as your venue to present and perform when obviously you're not as comfortable there as you would be maybe in the urine soaked car. Uh, laptop is just running out of juice while the OTW action. So I guess I could you just get like a fucking generator or something. Like, are you able to come up with that? Could you steal one or something? I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying. My you like just put a fucking generator in the car and just sit in there and just like pop it on when you need juice, as you say? Just fuck. That wouldn't annoy the people even more. Got a big generator. Get an Elon one. Get it. There's got to be an Elon one that fucking you put a little, put a little uh, pad out. It soaks up the light and then it like right. converts it to electricity and then you just plug right in. Yeah, I should just put a full solar panel on the hood on the roof. Yeah, he's a little one. 200 watts. Yeah, I should. I should be. I should have that shit for real in my situation. A lot of sunshine here in Las uh, Vegas. What the fuck was I just going to say? No weed for four days. If I start smoking weed again, you got to call me a bitch and say, nah, not for you, my man. Doesn't work. Fuck. Cleveland loves me. Make fun of me. I fucking suck, dude. Brian. You seemed more in your element. You was at Red Rock. Yeah, I could start going back to Red Rock. Well, maybe we'll find that girl again. Bartender. Just be cool. What's her name? Melanie? Yeah, do you feel more at home there because Snafu Snap says you have melted brick teeth? Here? Where? Yeah, like, do you oh, feel Red more Rock. at home at Red Rock? Yeah, the Red Rock. I do, actually. I love the Red Rocks. That's what all the mountains are red brick rocks. Red bricks. When's the last time you got on stage, bro? Last night. I told you earlier, but you fucking weren't listening. What's your material looking like nowadays? You've been working it or what? Oh, same old oh. crap. Biggie yeah, small, good. heavy breathing. Biggie small. Oh, I got the whole set. I'll tell you exactly what I did. Yeah, give me the fucking set, bro. Let's go. I don't know why you waited this long. I got to get it out of you. Okay. You so know, we workshop here. That's what we do. I wrote your best joke ever with you. Yeah. I'll give you half credit on it because you were there when I did it. You got two good jokes. You did, you did two good jokes. Two? I had one last night and it fucking escaped me. 
Oh, yeah, I was I was getting into a bit about how when because me and Jennifer were talking about cheating, and I was I was doing a bit on bit about how women only cheat when they're miserable in a relationship. Men only cheat when everything's great. And I, I got to work the bit out. I don't know if there's anywhere to take it. Yeah. I'm going to need you to be a ghostwriter in comedy and rap. Right. And running game on ladies. So I'm going to show you what I look, look at when I look at my cards on stage. So this says like croutons. Is that backwards? Okay. This is a good bit because now we could see a peek into the mind of Brian O'Shea and how he works his on stage resentment. Yeah. So I look okay, at so this. we got like croutons. That's the key words. Now, where does that take us? And then I got this bit where yeah, the comics kind of know it, but I say, I say, is anyone here into croutons? And then I'm like, I'm just trying to weasel my way into talking about eating ass. It's a bit I'm working on. I don't know. It's kind of, it's a bit about eating ass. It started from a, a far. <laughs> yeah, it's like, really bad so far. Really bad. Right, right. It's uh, but that, yeah. I'd work on that. that. I'd work yeah, on that. Right. It was an can, we, can, can, you, can you not describe the bit? Could you just hold up the cue card and then do the bit? Is that possible? Fuck it. Or was that it? Well, that wasn't it, was it? I mean, is this please tell me that wasn't it. <laughs> but the comics like it. I don't know if this one kind yeah, of really out. bad. No, no, they're telling you they like it because they want to laugh at you on stage. It inspires them to do better comedy. Yeah, no, no, throw that out. Let's go to the next one. Really, well, bad, is, <laughs> really bad. Disappointing, bro. The thing is, even if it doesn't work, I, I could kind of play on it in between. Like even yesterday, I was like, yeah. all right, do it again. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't want to be insulting. Give it to me again. Maybe it'll hit different. It's not gonna hit different. I mean, I'll do it again just for the pain and misery. But do, but really do the bit. Don't fucking read it to me. Like don't oh, don't mail it in. No, it, uh, dude, dude, I can't. I will. I don't think it's gonna work. Then someone after the show comes up, this comedian, this this former soldier, he's like, man, croutons, dude, I fucking love croutons. Get them in the ranch, bro. And then the other guy's like, yeah, I love croutons too, dude. And they got into this whole crouton discussion after the show. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? But anyways, uh, let's do the oh, bit. Just do the bit. We'll do it again. Yeah, just do I, the bit. I'm at the show. Fuck, fuck you, Paul. All right, I'm at the show. No, dude, I just told you. Anyone like anyone into croutons? I don't even know what I said yes. I can play it for you. You want me to play it? I'll play the fucking show. Oh, yeah, go ahead and play it. I always love you on stage. It, it definitely hits different when you're on stage. Somehow it works. It's it's so bad that it works. I, I didn't even perfecting the it. Norm McDonald. Like I thought I was getting somewhere with the willingly purposely bombing while also trying to be funny. It's a hard fucking act. You know, it's a hard line to walk. It's hard to perfect that act, right? It's very uh Who's the man now? Now the name escapes me. Look, I'm Alzheimer. I'm Joe Biden here. Uh, who's that? Who's the famous comedian? O'Shea. Let's test your knowledge and skill because I've talked about him here before. And THC. I got some really good reefer going on here, and it's it's it it hit different, bro. Like that colored man who always says it hits different. Okay? I'm not gonna lie to you. I never do. Uh, I'm 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 starting to I'm starting to do storytelling like Scott Two B. And that's why numbers are low today. Very Scott to be in here today. Not only am I overweight, but I'm, I'm very low energy. <clears throat> I'm uninteresting. I can't get my references together. It's very Andy Kaufman. Okay, forget about it. I was going to ask you. You wouldn't have come up with the answer anyway. It's the I whole bombing on purpose while also trying to communicate an idea and be funny. Hard thing to perfect and even harder thing to generate results with because most people never really get it. Never really quite sure what's going on. <laughs> yeah, what would Give me you time bit. Well, I'll play it for you. Let me see what the audio is like. <laughs> Attention shoppers. I'm going to ask all people not paying for things to leave. You hear this? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? He's doing bits with, with wait, that's wait, that's who just who just made an announcement there? That was like the host. Why That's are these Will. people telling me? Who, we, you act like I'm like you, that I sit around all day and look for, for different platforms where there's nonsense and meaninglessness. I'm not. I don't know what lol cow live is. Just like Tommy goes, you know destiny. Everyone knows destiny. No, I don't. I don't need to lie about that. Hey, I'm not constantly lying up here like the majority of folks 
uh, who are constantly lying up here to be Hank about it. So uh, the only reason I know of Lauren De Laguna is because she's like come into my reality for months and years. So like everyone else, they come into my reality and awareness and then we have various interactions. I don't know what Lol Cow Live is. And I'm not so sure that I'm supposed to know. Why does it matter? Who are they? What do they do? What does it amount to? Where does it go? Yeah, I think Grace. Just like when I that. fucking freaked out, apparently, they tell me, on Zach Hubbard. I thought everything went great. I was just talking the truth of what I experienced. I went crazy, loose cannon, and freaked out on him, is the narrative. I didn't know him. When at the end I said, I know who that is, you don't know who that is? I meant spiritually. They told me later he was some guy that I was supposed to know and suck up to and work with. I didn't care. I don't care then. I don't care now. Doesn't matter to me. Goes nowhere. I'm I'm one of those. Right? Like I said, I've talked myself out of more shit than folks have tried to talk themselves into. Up front or on the back end. So I'm cool with that dynamic. I think that's what makes you in this life as a man. You know? We address what is. A man is judged by his principles and his vision, not by what he wants and doesn't want, what he likes and doesn't like. So I don't know about Zach Hubbard. Still don't know about him other than what I've experienced with him. And that goes for everybody else. Didn't watch him before. Don't watch him now. And they have little, if nothing, to offer someone like me the way I live and what the fuck I do. You can take that to the bank uh, or you can take that to your therapist. Pay extra to work out the feelings around it. I don't know what to tell anybody. I've shown it all before I told it. Go ahead. Do the fucking bit, bro. I like croutons. Come on. Everyone likes croutons. It's pretty right. much just dried bread. Everyone loves bread. Is the audio all right on that? It's dried bread with spices even. The audio's yeah. on, bro. Go send it. Oh, hold on. I got a comment on some. Rob Cleveland asked me yesterday, then Jennifer showed me, she goes, I've never gotten one fucking live notification or any channel notification for you. She goes, I've gotten them for all the rest of these tards and I'm not even subscribed to them. I've never gotten yours. Yesterday, she got a notification. I went into my email. I'll bring it up if you want to look at it. They demonetized the Paul on Slave channel after a month and a half of me taking all videos down and no content being up there. Gotchas again. I play a long game, dumb slaves. I told you to keep playing, and I'm going to sue you long term. I could bring it whenever I want. Because you still didn't strike the channel all the way, because I took all the content down. I saw what you were going to do, because you've been doing it from the beginning, and you were doubling down on it. So I just took all the content out of there to show what you all do. And you, you, you guys walked right into it to show yourselves. I lost 200 subscribers in a month with no content. Nobody's leaving 200 at a time over a month, choosing to unsubscribe. That's bullshit. That's why I can never get over 22,000 after a certain point because you guys take equal, if not more amount of people that come and you make me stay where I am or negative. And then you don't give any notifications out to the 22,000 who are subscribed, right? So then I got you on going into my private videos and copyright striking private videos that aren't for public display, trying to get the channel taken down. Right. So then I had to write letters on that. Now I got you guys as of yesterday after a month and a half of no content saying we just after two years decided that you're not fit for monetization because you're that fucking petty and grimy. Right. And you think you affected me. I ducked you guys and juked you guys a year and a half ago. I've done better with all my private interactions than I was fucking with you guys anyway. I cut you out. You didn't cut me out. Take that $60, $90 a month. I wipe my ass with that at this point give a fuck about that my integrity my credibility the truth and what i'm gonna have to do when we go on lockdown again is more fucking important than your nonsense middlemanning for content so go ahead take the fucking monetization now i'm gonna open pawn slave channel again when all the strikes are down and i'm gonna really go in on you because now you got no reasons to fuck with that channel even more because i'm not fit for monetization so am i fit to speak am i fit to present am i fit to create content for that audience that you won't give fucking notifications to who got to hunt me down at all. If not, then I become obscured to them. Got it. Got how the game works. And I got you all in dereliction of duty and I got you all in corruption outright. And at some point you're going to get me a big bag again off of what's true and what's right. Thank you.
I'm going to sue YouTube and Google if you keep playing with me. You keep interfering with my content, my livelihood, my reputation, my character, and what the fuck I create and produce. You can't do it. So you're going to have to come with it. Keep playing with me. I'm the right one to give you what the fuck you need. You should know that by now. See, the more I keep giving these speeches every six months, the more I keep reminding myself that when my shit kind of settles down and I'm where I need to be, I'm going to get back to some paperwork, which I don't like to do, and I'm going to force your hand. And then I'm going to be known for the next thing that I go viral for, which is suing Google and YouTube and you bitch-ass motherfuckers doing something the rest won't do because I'm going to have to learn the legal process more, like I've said. And you're going to have to then come uh, with a big bag for compensation for the, all the fucking games you and your constituency, your co-conspirators, because I'm going to have Vice News brought in and I'm going to have a host of other folks who are big platforms with big names who went bankrupt because they're corrupt. I'm going to have their credibility called into question and I'm going to have them question in that venue on why they thought it was appropriate to characterize me as a terrorist and a threat to other people when there's no history of that. You're the corrupt, frauding scum. You're the charlatans who spin spurious webs of narratives to try to defame people or character assassinate them. So we're going to get it all on record at some point when you force me to, because that's usually what has to happen. I'm not motivated by money and power as much as the rest of you scum. I'm motivated by what's true and what's right and keeping you to fuck off my back when necessary. So keep pushing me. I'm going to push back at some point. And we're going to go to a venue and they're going to drop the paperwork on the table and look around you and say, why did you do that with this one? You had so many others you could do whatever you wanted to with. You knew who this one was. Why did you force this into this venue? And you're going to force an administrator to make a ruling they don't want to in my favor because you're going to have not a leg to stand on. And I'm going to subpoena a dozen other content creators at least who have the same fucking story and history I do, who got the same unfair, inequitous treatment that led to the same potential outcomes and results. So you're not getting away with this on my watch. You're not getting away with this on the watch of the people. Don't kid yourselves. You're going to force other people's hands, and the best part about that is I'm holding the aces. You're only claiming to hold them. So force my hand. We're going to ante up. I'm going to put my cards down. You're going to put yours down and we're going to see where that goes. I'm a cosmic gambler and I'm sick of you scum. And I love watching you twist in the wind when we have to put up or shut up. And I love it even better when we put our cards down and it's shown who's got what and who's been bluffing. I love that game. See, Brian O'Shea plays that at casino. It don't get my dick hard. It don't get me uppity. It's boring. Right? I like to play for high stakes. I like to play all in. Right? That's when I wake up. That's what gets me fired up and excited for some odd reason. That's why they say I'm a bit twisted. Yeah, man. And sometimes you say, like, uh, oh, the donations didn't come in heavy this month. And I kind of like that sometimes. It gets me hungry and inspired. inspired. And uh, I noticed that with myself, too. Like, sometimes it's like when well, I'm just like broke and I gotta make it happen, then I'm like hungry and inspired, dude. I do make I make it happen. It's like, I tried to explain to these guys yesterday with Grace Thorpe. She said I was lying until she then turned around and played a song all about her pussy. It ain't nothing for a goofy broad to get online and get a few thousand or a few hundred thousand subscribers. I could do that with a girl like that. That ain't nothing. Right? What they come for, what they stay for, that's a different story. What it turns into, what it results into for the individual, that's a different story. What are the potential liabilities of that process? That's a different story. So that's, that's no measure of accomplishment for me for a goofy, somewhat attractive broad to come online and get thousands of beta simps with no options in their life to watch, wait, and celebrate and semi-hate. Because really deep in their like, you know, sort of desperation is this bitterness and resentment for the women that they know they could never have. So don't think I don't see that oozing as well. Right? It's a very deadly mix. So, uh, you know, again, that don't impress me. You got to show and, and tell more than that uh, to impress someone like me who has different level of principles and value systems and judgment standards. So you looked at the email and it was... That, that, that you got a stroke. 
So you got a strike or what was the email? We've determined you're not fit for monetization on the first channel. Call enslaved because you are not adhering to proper policy and procedure. But again, you, they just showed their hand that that's all they've been doing for the last year and a half is trying to fuck with me and whatever benefits, privileges, or value that they see I create or receive. You know that. Problem is, they're a year late. They're a year, year and a half late. I already juked them and spun out of it and moved my situation over and cut out the middleman. They didn't affect me. So I can't hustle a hustler. Hmm. And I'm not a hustler in a negative sense. I'm a hustler in the sense that I keep it moving. I don't need to lie, cheat, and steal. I got an understanding and a rap, and I got an energy, and I keep it moving. I mind my business to stay in my fucking lane, and I know it's best for me. I know it's not. So they want to hustle from a deceptive perspective. You can't hustle somebody who's already been there, fucked it up, knows the game, and righted themselves. All you're going to do is show your hand with someone like me. That's it. Did uh oh, did this mess oh did you respond to the email? Did you No. I think it's laughable. But you're not gonna hit up support and fucking be like No, I don't want the monetization. Right. I've been waiting for them to show their hand. I could have demonetized, bro. I came over to... You just said this right. Yeah. You just don't understand not that like I don't even have to strategize and think in order to outplay these people at the game of life and chess. I don't have to. It's intuitive and instinctual before I ever have to strategize. I already moved my shit over and I already hung the bait out for them. And I already took all the videos down so that they would keep fucking with me to show they got a hard on for me. They're inequitous. They're dishonorable. It's not about the content and the policy. They walked right into all my traps again. Every one of these dumb demonic scum who thinks they're so clever and strategic walks right into one of my traps every single time and proclaims they've won. Uh, I already reconciled that they were going to throw that channel out at some point in order to completely transition my, my energies and attention. Right? I've already accepted. You're going to ragdoll that channel, and I'm going to make you sure you put it on record so everyone can see it. And I'm going to have the background file, so when we bring it to court, you're going to have to resurrect that channel, and you're going to have to pay me for everything in between. Dude, they fucked up. I already reconciled it. I was already getting no traction on that channel because they won't send notifications. I moved my shit, continue with, with, with around about the same after the fact viewers, took a hit, because I also started covering other morons on here who are insane and going six to eight hours at a time. So I lost a third of the viewership after the fact, at least, whatever. There's still a core group of supporters. I still get to do what I love to do that I'm good at, and I still grow bit by bit, day by day. And now I have a second record to create here of what they're up to. And I'll do the same process again if I have to. Because this is different content over here. It's Paul Enslaved over here. Here, it's the Unslaved One. This is Proper Instruction Motivates People. I didn't create this channel to go around policies and guidelines. I created this channel in order to create new content and insulate myself from their corruption and fraud. They did that. I didn't do that. They also completely limited my liability in a jurisdiction of commercial capacity. I now have zero income and revenue on record. Anything I do now is in the private. And it's all based on gift status, so it's untaxable. You can suck my dick in public. You did absolutely nothing to affect me. You guys dug your own grave. You showed yourself for who and what you are, and you're a year late. And all you did was better me and my situation and provide more credit and credibility for who and what I am. And that the fact that I'm a threat without being violent or doing anything wrong, quite the opposite. The only way you got to be a threat in this life, the best way to make yourself a threat is to be authentic, accountable, and do what's true and what's right and not take any favors from motherfuckers you don't respect. That's the quickest way to make yourself an enemy. So I'm, ha I'm happy with that. I'm totally cool with that. Their shit, the way everyone else got it, is not meant for me. That's a testament to who and what I am. That's not a demeaning of who and what I am. That's not a source of chaos and confusion. That's a source of inspiration for me. I didn't sell out like the rest of the slaves. I didn't take a check to shut the fuck up about certain things. I do what the fuck I say on the ground, which makes me 
a source of inspiration and motivation for others to do and be better. See, they don't mind if you sit up here and talk that shit and bring Polly on and talk legal awful. They get real uppity when you start living it and inspiring others to do the same. That's when you become a threat to their system. So they'll let you talk all day, as long as people are listening and not doing nothing different. You start talking and people start listening and more importantly, start doing something different. You become the head of a movement in their eyes. Okay. So then they want to shut you down and interfere with everything and mischaracterize and character assassinate. That is the role of the shaitan in this realm. I ain't mad about it. We came to play. We didn't come to fuck around. They got the right one with me. You want someone who's naturally a fucking player? I ain't talking about with women and the rest of it. I'm talking about in life and with what is. You got the right one with me. Uh, you want me to continue playing the damage shit? Yeah, go ahead. Get back to it. It's a new audio check. Let's see what you get. Fuck. Fuck up, man. You hear that? What's up? Y'all like croutons? I don't know. That joke's about eating that. It's all good. Seriously, how about this? Uh, you want it to long nipples? <laughs> just the croutons. We'll just stick to the ass and croutons. Leave the nipples long. <laughs> Got more questions? How about Simpsons or Smiths? What you like better? Crack, crack the answers neither, you fuckers. It's too expensive over there. If you're not getting clear and shit, you gotta go to Wayne or something. Working this shit out. Poor fuck, dude. Stupid ass no, why is this kid still here? And I say kid because he acts like a kid and he's twice my age. Why are you still here, bro? And if you're going to still be here, why do you keep telling me and others what you agree and don't agree with? I don't give a fuck and I don't think that anyone else does either. No one asked you for what the fuck you believe or what you agree with or don't agree with, but you're all too willing to tell everyone constantly. No one cares. We'll find something to do. It's pretty bad. Uh, pretty bad stuff, huh? Yeah, I don't know where you were going with that. I mean, it was funny because it's really awkward and uncomfortable, but you're like, hey, you like anyone like croutons? <laughs> and it goes nowhere. <laughs> and you go, how about long nipples? And people are like, what? <laughs> this is a comedian? <laughs> Ah, I left my fucking cards in a jacket that I left at this, uh, I think this dude's gay, this lawyer. He said, call me anytime, even if it's not for work, just fucking chat. Tell me about his son who's a heroin addict. Use this fucking, uh. That's why you do this, isn't it? To, to watch semi-professional, apparently accomplished people in the corporate world come and watch you and act like you're in a position of power. And then suck up to you. You get in the room with people you never would be in the room with for anything else who somehow are so much more broken than you that they come to you uh, for some kind of inspiration and motivation. This is some kind of bizarre power, power dynamic between everyone. They're so pathetic and desperate. They just want to be in the room with someone called a comedian. And you're so power hungry and desperate. You want lawyers to suck up to you and genuflect to you while having no talent or ability or skill to actually have that be a legitimate reality. This is so very they, strange what you're all up to. They, uh, that guy I met, that guy did task grab and shit for us, assembling furniture, but he was, oh, he said, uh, cause I was, I was installing a new bidet on his toilet, right? Part of the job. <laughs> his joke was I didn't sock him in the face but when I was leaving he goes he goes yeah you should feel good you helped an old man out with anal pleasure that's what that was his joke oh yeah see this is the bed. thing now this is a whole I thought you were saying one of the people you meet in the audience this is how other dynamic you're running around meeting men <laughs> grown men on task rabbit who are not really there to have you do the job they say they are there's another job they have for you that you might be more fit for 
Yeah, this one guy hires me, and uh, the only thing in the description says, "Power." You blew that me. old man, didn't you? You you fucked that old man. Why would he say to you on the way out, "You helped an old man with with anal pleasure today"? He fucked you, or you fucked him? Just out with it already. Obvious. You got this look on your face like you did something wrong that you're guilty about. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying you feel that way. Right. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I uh, black out into an alternate personality or something. So you're starting your own app, Ass Rabbit, <laughs> where where you just kind of run around the city like a little rabbit and get fucked by old men for compensation. Ass Rabbit, Brian O'Shea, dirty so jobs. Was, yeah, and that's the guy that was like, <laughs> yeah, hit, call me. I can add that to my dirty job segment, Brian O'Shea's Ass Rabbit uh, circuit. Yeah, so he says the life of a disenchanted comedian on on the come up. Okay, he says I want to come to one of your shows. You found out I do. I'm sure he does. Come to one of your shows. He Call wants you to put on a show for him. Yeah, his son's a heroin addict. Great. I wonder why. Yeah, my dad's trying to fuck failed comedians on Ass Rabbit. I'm gonna go on heroin. Right. The guy's like 75, 75 years old. He's like. Man, looking back, wish I just spent more money and had more fun or something. Like, total materialistic thing, even later on in life. No, you're not getting it. He's trying to, bro. He's running game on you. He's he's pimping on you indirectly. He's trying to turn you out. He's saying, man, wish I had more fun and spent more money. He's trying to say, if you just blow me right now, I'll pay you. Are you really this fucking stupid? This is what I'm saying. You say you grow up in Chicago. I'm from New York. You're supposed to see these moves and get it way before you're in a trunk tied up somewhere. The, the proper answer to him giving an, just a non sequitur anecdote like, wish I would have had more fun and spent more money, huh, Bri? Are you looking for trouble? That's the adequate response to that, what he just said. You're analyzing him like he's coming clean with you about all of his you know, unreconciled desires in life. No, he's hinting at things constantly with you and you're missing the move because you're fucking, you're a little stew nod. Yeah. I'm like the, I'm like you with the girl on the bed who took her shirt off. Just don't know what the fuck's going on. You know what I mean? Remember that when the girl, no, was that's not the same. So now you're saying you're with the gay man and you just feel so unattractive. You don't think that you can fuck him because he doesn't really want you. That's not the same dynamic. We each miss sickness. Yeah, I was overweight and felt ugly in the face and had no money and felt like nobody would ever want to fuck me. And turns out you don't need any of that to fuck women. I didn't know that. You know that because you've never had anything redeemable and women are still blowing you and fucking you somehow. I don't know how. But again, it's because I realized you don't need a lot of these things that we think we need to get with women where did where did we start with that i got off on another i get distracted with you it's the lawyer trying to i'm missing signals it's the people in the background too i hear constant like oh, chattering and announcements yeah fuck, dude. this laptop's fully charged i guess i could go in the car with it i think i'll do that i'm gonna transition yeah, I'm not interested again what you think, Tarek. Go start a channel and do the hate Pauly conference like they all do. Don't care what you think about me telling a woman who's chain smoking cigarettes and saying she loves cock to wash her pussy and clean her room. Not interested what you fucking think about that. You're Mr. Simp Trick. I'm not. You're Mr. Captain Save a Ho. I'm Mr. Captain Check a Ho. That's the difference. So please know your role and function. Go start a channel. Simp, S-I-M-P. Standard instruction motivates persons. Right? And you can simp all day and you can get your fucking bullshit energy and understanding or lack thereof out of my face constantly. I'm not you. I don't live the way you do, nor would I want to, nor do I believe your way brings you any better results than mine. All right, I'm going to transition. That's why Grace Thorpe told me she loved me and will respect me infinitely more than she respects a simp trick like you. 
like 300 of her audience that she mocks and ridicules every day who still pay her $2 at a time. You still can't figure out how shit works, huh? I'm going to transition to the Taurus at some point here. Pa, you cannot say nothing bad to any woman ever. Pa, women are divine creature. Do not criticize. Pa, pa stop it, pa. Go away. Can you imagine? This is why guys like this are, I am boxer, pa. I am very tough, strong man, and I am boxer. You'd have to be a boxer because you'd have got punched in your fucking face a dozen times already in your life if you didn't fucking learn how to box and somehow figure out how to defend yourself and fight. Because someone like you is so fucking overbearing and annoying uh, and codependent and weak that it's only a matter of time if you got yourself around certain people that they just turn around and backslap you and go, I'm tired of looking at you. I'm tired of hearing you go off with your life. So you'd have to be a boxer to fucking live the rest of the way you live. Brian O'Shea, get back here. I didn't tell you you could leave yet. What man respects these men? I don't care how much you could beat people up. What man respects a man who simp tricks on every fucking woman they meet just to feel like they, they, they made their mama proud? Give me a break. Even the women down there don't respect you. They think you're a fucking weak ass bitch and a clown. And you think you're doing something by white knighting for everyone who's got a vagina. You don't understand equity. You don't understand honorability and truth. You get caught up in the manifestation and the illusions. What was he even trying to say in that comment? Paul, you cannot say anything bad about the women. <laughs> Mr. Romanticist doesn't understand when he comes to a guy who literally does content and practices stoicism on some level that he's going to have resistance. I'm not a romantic as much as I proclaim or practice, more importantly, stoicism, which involves detachment. It's why you people characterize me as an e egotistical narcissist because my feelers don't run my life all day, every day. You're a romanticist in your feelers. I'm a stoicist who practices detachment from my feelings in order to direct myself and my life for a beneficial, positive outcome. Take your romanticism somewhere else. Take it to all the women who are not in your life right now. Bring them flowers and a teddy bear while you're at it. Mom will be proud. I didn't have a mama. We've gone over this. Why well, I have no problem being a completely authentic man and not giving a fuck about what anyone thinks, including beta bitches on either side. All right. I want to make my move to the car. So take your move, bro. All right, Can we? All right. you? I want to watch you make this move. Is it possible? Can we join you for the move? I want to see how this goes down. I want to see the formation. Or right, making the move to the car on the ground. Let's see my setup. On the ground. That's what I got to up. There's some bags oh, there. What are the odds that chair doesn't smell? I have a smell coming off. Of some people over there. What are the odds everyone in there is not looking at you and waiting for you to leave or wondering when you're going to hold up the place? Dude, I always, dude, when my car rolls up, they immediately think they're getting robbed. Like to a gas station anywhere, dude. They're just like, oh. What are the odds if you go in that bathroom, like I said yesterday, and stay for anything more than 10 minutes, they're not going to start checking that doorknob to see if you OD'd in there? You see, the thing with this place is, though, it's in a nice area, so they don't have to deal with homeless all the time. So I get car blanched to do whatever I want. Hey, did you see Matrix Cot? Did everybody down there see that, or do I need to run that? New TCC, Matrix Cot. We ran it yesterday at the three-hour mark. 
If you guys down there, guys, guys, we come here every day. I play a broadcaster and many other things online. And I'm asking you, the audience, the most important piece to this puzzle. Did we see Matrix Cot, all you people? Because I saw it, the Royal We, meaning you at this point, my constabulary. Have you audience members down there, did you see the Matrix Cot extravaganza piece? Run it again. They're telling me to run. All I need to do is hear one, see one person down there say, run it again, and I'm going to run it. And it's already happened. So, okay. And then someone else said, oh my God. Okay. I got to do it. I didn't want to do it, people. I didn't want to run this, but at least two people down there said, go ahead with it. So I got to do it. Okay. Got to do what I got to do. Don't be mad at me for the rest of you. I really don't care if you're not into the fucking Talcott saga and the rest. I mean, this has been pure genius here. I don't give a fuck what anybody says about me and what I do. The rest of these folks who do what I do on here or try to do what I do in a horrible way, they've got nothing on me and Gorilla Gems and TCC. We're a fucking powerhouse at this point of independence. We have no funding, right? Barely any funding. We're poor and broke, semi-homeless, very lowly people. But when it comes to creativity and spontaneity and artistic appeal and a co-creational ability, this is the place. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't rather be any other place but here right now. I don't give a fuck about the views. Like I tell you people, views ultimately after you get to a certain point is the value for the valueless, right? Attention is the currency of the truly valueless of our time. All right, let's be clear about that. And then there's a fine line there. You have to have some constituency, some core audience, some verification of an already internal validation. There has to be something substantial there. But beyond a certain point, I'd rather be here doing what I do and seeing the fruits of my labor as bizarre and twisted and quite frankly, mirroring and emblematic of everything that I am as a personality, morbid sense of humor to the point of being self-sabotaging at times. That is what TCC represents. Okay. So we're right where we need to be. We're synced up. Everything is everything. As they used to say. It's all good. Love it. Inspired. I'm motivated. I'm captivated. And I can't wait for the next TCC oftentimes. All right, I'm talking it up too much. We got to get down to it. Trapped in the Matrix with Jack Talcott. Uh, this is this is this is this is the magnum opus. Many have said already, and it's just been released. That is you. Just one touch. That's all it takes. Become part of the Matrix, Jack. That's it. It's over. Have you ever had a dream that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? Oh, oh, hey, it's, oh, it's cold. Why is it so cold? Tank, we're going to need a signal soon. Active relation. APOC, location. Targeting almost there. Jack Talcott, do you want to know what it is? I most certainly do. The Matrix is everywhere. Holy cows. It is all around us. Even now in this very room. Holy cows. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. Holy cows, man. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church. When you pay your taxes, it is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Do you have a point? That you are a slave. Bullshit. Born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. It's nonsense. I don't mean to swear. A prison for your mind. You're such a liar, dude. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one can <laughs> he argues with Morpheus what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. Let's see it. This is your last chance. 
After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Allegedly, allegedly, you claim that. I have seen no evidence. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Fuck it, down the hatch. Follow me. Oh, wow. Hey, praise God. You wanted to know what the Matrix is? I've escaped the Matrix, I assure you. Trinity. Huh? I uh, think the last guy may have thrown up on your fancy chair. Oh, God. It stinks. Try to relax. This will feel a little weird. Ah, you! <laughs> this is the construct what the f it's our loading program whatever you want to call it it's self-defeating we can load anything from clothing okay to equipment all right weapons training simulations anything we need choose what you want from that which is real if you're wanting things that you know it's not realistic it's not within your reach it's not available then you're wasting your time creating your own suffering wanting for things you can't have want that which is real but many people they create what is real in their mind based off what they want But what is real? Is this real? This can't be real. Is it really so hard to believe? What is the point of that question? Where are you going with this? Your clothes are different. The plugs in your arms and head are gone. Your hair has changed. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self you're not see this is the thing you're not seeing beyond what you want this is what i talked about earlier we should be taking what we what is real and figure out what we want what is real how do you define real as long as you know love is real you have the answer when you know that the only thing that is real is god well then that means that god is everything you know and everything you don't know if you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Dude, I'm a figment of God's imagination, nothing more. This is the world that you know. In your world, your world includes you and everything you know. You better believe the world includes you. The world as it was at the end of the 20th century. <laughs> it exists now only as part of a neural interactive simulation that we call the Matrix. What the heck is going on? You've been living in a dream world. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm wondering, does that apply to you? Are you trapped <laughs> in what you think the world is? This is the world as it exists today. Welcome to the desert of the real. We have only bits and pieces of information, but
But what we know for certain is that at some point in the early 21st century, all of mankind was looking for an artificially intelligent guru, a daddy. I, I don't believe that is an accurate representation. To me, okay. the AI aspect of it is very small. It's a tool. The whole idea is to use technology and mechanization to improve the world. Right now, there's a lot of jobs that are going to be replaced. And, and you know, there's this always comes up. What do you do with these people that are that, whose jobs are replaced by mechanization and AI? Well... <laughs> One of the ideas has been that we just harvest their bodies for energy. And in exchange for human life, we marveled in our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. If it is somewhat of an AI-led socialist idea, where the purpose of the, of the economic structure is actually to ensure the best distribution of, of goods and services and energy throughout, throughout the population, if in fact that is accurately defined, is that bad? Because I'm not proposing that people give away their rights to machines. A singular consciousness that spawned an entire race of machines. Technology is used for data. The people make the choices. But the distinction is, it's not just these asshat authorities. It's actually going to be oversight. We don't even know whose oversight brought us here. Us or them. But we know that it was us who scorched the sky. You see, Jack, thanks to your dumbass energy policies, the machines were dependent on solar power, and it was believed that they would be unable to survive without an energy source as abundant as the sun. I was stretching and feeling the sunshine on my body again today. Oh, that feeling. The feeling of the warmthness of the sun, knowing that my body and my skin is actually receiving nourishment. That there's a connection between me and the sun and that fresh, clean uh, uh, winter air. It's February. It's early March here. Lost track. Throughout human history, we have been dependent on machines to survive. Fate, it seems, is not without a sense of irony. The human body generates more bioelectricity than a 120 volt battery and over 25,000 BTUs of body heat. It's fast. Combined with a form of Talcati infusion, the machines had found all the energy they'd ever need. We're so, so divinely created. How we are generated, it's, it's magical. It is divine creation. There are fields, Jack, endless fields where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. I mean, so what? I mean, if your intention is to make for a better world and you spend your time and energy directed towards that. Oh, and if you can enjoy yourself along the way, enjoy what you're doing, man, that's the whole point of life. For the longest time, I wouldn't believe it. Then I saw the fields with my own eyes. <laughs> I witnessed the culling of those who offered disagreements so that they could be liquefied and fed intravenously to the living. Facing the pure and horrifying precision of this dystopian nightmare that was said to have originated somewhere in Spokane, Washington, I realized the obviousness of the truth. What is the Matrix, Jack? Control. I want to correct the Matrix. I want to bring it to order. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world. Okay. I was allowed to say four fucking words. What I am offering <laughs> is incredibly, incredibly simple. Let me help you out, Jack. <laughs> Built to maintain control. In order to change a human being into this. Why do you think that fucking helps? I didn't say it would be easy. Then chill out and recognize that as a man, you can have a conversation and a dialogue like having questions and answers. I just said it would be the truth. You've actually followed through with nothing. You're clearly, clearly in need of some love.
many people are. What the hell? Oh, jeez. Holy cows, man. Oh, my God. I don't think we're in Spokane anymore. was telling the truth whoa oh uh hey there brother choose peace please holy fucking shit brother i'm going to be as forthcoming as I can be. What I'm offering, Smith, is that we need your help. I know. You, you, chaos, people like chaos. I don't want chaos. I'm trying to offer sincerely, Smith, you offer me nothing but Smith, you're a fucking asshole. Fascinating. Matrix caught reloaded. Man, it's just the two of us on panel. I'm all fucking head in this screen, dude. What does that mean? Like it's my head takes up the whole fucking screen. I'm big fat head. This is better though. Whatever you just did. All right, I'll throw the link. If anyone wants to come on up, we're gonna transition. Uh, no, don't reach for your hormones. Um, we're going to go to break in slave news. Okay, and we got a grim hustle for you. And we got a... Uh, do we get to the silver and gold? Does anybody care about bettering their life or hedging their bets or securing value long term or pretty much just, you know, whatever I want to talk about and, you know, slave cot and the rest of these deviants online? While many of you apparently either have no cash or you hold tons of cash have little to no assets uh, or long-term worth or value that is accruing do we even dare to cover the financial aspects macro and micro uh, or are we like overreaching there well asking you shall get the answer forget about all that check <laughs> Halcott is here ladies and gentlemen that takes precedence as we know hey, how are you sir i am feeling truly blessed blessed and honored um i i watched the uh the caught flicks with you just now that was pretty damn good oh yeah that's the, the some have said already the magnum opus that is michelangelo's sistine chapel right there there's just so many little things he throws in there just <laughs> real talent now, how do you feel about the fact that you even argued with morpheus and told him <laughs> and smith that they offer you little to nothing uh, and had to literally go to the killing fields where folks were liquefied for imagined disagreements and fed intravenously to other NPC bots. What are your thoughts on, on that dynamic? Well, he kept me to my character, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's great. Like if we could just if we could just accept that we're all characters in life and that we're all on a journey to becoming. We can just free up all of the resistance and division and just celebrate what is while also accepting what is not and working toward that, the reconciliation of that, right? It's kind of got to be a little bit of this and that is what I've noticed in my experience. What you're saying is what I'm, it's the experiment I'm playing with myself somewhat. Um, total different mindset than the past the idea is take life as it as it comes the the old adage what is it amor fati 
what however you say it seize the day love love the fate there's a lot of wisdom to all that stuff <laughs> yeah so i've been noticing on your side you've been kind of scaling it back on time which might be you know a, a predictable or or even you know more functional or beneficial for you modality i meant to show up there but i just been kind of like doing what i do and just letting you do your thing right but i'm gonna head over there at some point but um yeah regardless of whether people like me or not you know it's not hold me up tear others down it's like for you to do what you do you have to have the least amount of interruptions uh, and detractions and distractions unless you want to call in that moment of chaos gossip entertainment and i know that you kind of lean more the other way right you're open to that but you, you seem yeah. to from what i remember you telling me kind of lean the other way so you know don't yeah. uh open a circus unless you presume to entertain clowns right kind of the idea about it <laughs> that's well said that's the lesson i've been learning <laughs> um and also when you bring a clown into the kingdom the kingdom becomes a circus <laughs> it does Hey, I've been meaning to to swing by, and something happened <coughs> yesterday. Time got away. I didn't make it, and I did. I intended to swing by earlier too. I had you going in the background for a while while I was getting my stuff done. Um, life is. So, amazing. what's on your mind and heart today? Like, what's what's you know recently or today on your mind and heart? What do you think the topic is going to lean toward as far as what you want to address? your broadcast today what i what i call it um it's focus on good that was you know that was my idea steady consistent and unwavering the idea of what you were talking about earlier too practice of stoicism trying to be more uh committed and devoted with intentional practice i think that that's what i want where I want it to go. It's what I'm practicing myself, honestly. Yeah, I uh, think stoicism can give way to a bit of romanticism. I don't think the inverse happens the same way. I think if you start off with a base of romanticism, it detracts from the stoicism and what that can bring to your life. So again, if a man practices this stoic idea in some sense, right, adherence to self-knowledge and, and self-progression and self-understanding, through that process, you will probably have more options and opportunity of mates to co-create with, right? Then you're going to find yourself in a different set of circumstances where you may have the options, but not necessarily the opportunity because the potential is not readily uh, apprehended, right? Is where I find myself a lot of times at this point. I go from in-cell to uh, jail cell, I guess, <laughs> because the reality is, is a man who's proud of his high intelligence is like a condemned man who's proud of his large jail cell. I ain't proud, but I can apprehend that people have told me and it seems to be uh, when you look out and experience it, most folks, uh, I happen to be one of the more intelligent ones. I know that's shocking. It's going to take you back a little bit, but you know, again, that's not a testimony to how intelligent I am. I think that's more of an indictment on how foolish the generalized public either always has been or has become through the trauma-based mind control degeneration program, all too willing to be funded by said participants. I, uh, I agree with you. It's a, it's a little bit of both though, probably likely it's a little bit of both. It's it's, you've got some gifts and the, the others have more obstacles and, and hurdles. And I don't think it's so much, you said, you said a word, it, it might be yeah, hard. Who's had more know. obstacles and hurdles than me? <laughs> I'm I'm referring to the current mental and emotional. Well, yeah, those are self-generated. Those were my <laughs> obstacles as well, right? Physical obstacles I had many of seemingly. What I come to find out is the mental emotional ones were the stumbling blocks, right? So, uh yeah, again, we we all of us, despite the competition on who's had it better, who's had it worse, all have the same thing in common. Our thoughts, emotions, actions, and inactions are the bane of our own individual existence, predominantly. The pain and suffering is not coming from out there most of the time. Right. 
<laughs> hey, swinging back to what what you said though. Um, I don't Talk think it, no, no, I'm shutting that down. <laughs> um, I'll fucking yeah. I'll bring it right up right now. I'll bring that <laughs> banner right up. Let's get it fucking moving and grooving. Let's get it popping. No. Um, hey, what you said though about the the distinction of intelligence. It's not so much that it's uh, it's hard to believe. It's it's a uh, might be a tough pill to swallow because um, people have formed opinions, people have judged and come up with condemnation, and they don't want to recognize the good. Yeah, I think Brian and I we got some similar looks together too. He's I mean, you know where I stand on that dynamic with you, Jack. I think you reg regularly come from a perspective of others don't want to see the good in you. I think that this online experience has been a testimony to quite the opposite dynamic. You've had I many folks so willing to see only the good in you that they, like you, have ignored the bad or the negative or the detraction or demeaning from what <laughs> could be uh, based on what is, right? Somewhat. It's pretty much the inverse experience you've had with all your coworkers and your family. So you've indirectly got what you needed, whether you were aware of it or not. Because all of us here who may not find you as competent at times, I think you're, it's not even the right description. I think you're way overqualified and competent and you're inactive, right? So like me, I was way competent and overqualified. I was supremely inactive. So I could not generate what was meant for me because I was on the couch all day. You get what I'm saying? Nothing happens on the couch. So that's why I see, I go, I am Talcott. Talcott is me. It's just a one degree separation in perspective and application. It's, it's the exact same experience though. And many of the same responses and reactions. They're predictable. We're all oneself. It's so obvious when you see it. You know, so this experience for you online, what I think the benefit of it was is you got from these people what you've been asking for so much with the people in your life that they apparently cannot give you. Now that you have it, do you think it's to your own benefit? Would you want the people in your life to be that way? Or did they do exactly what they felt they needed to do that may be of your benefit if you let it be? Because they're trying to indicate some place where they believe you're not meeting life and reality on life and reality's terms. And that's a detriment to you and potentially them. Did they have to handle it the way they did? Maybe not, because a lot of us on here haven't. We do listen to you. We do care for you. We do show up every day with a clean slate. We don't forget the past, but we forgive, right? And we can't forget it because the past is oftentimes an indicator of future results when there is an unmet understanding or reapplication. We know that. If we don't learn the lessons of history, we're bound to repeat them. Look around us. It's line for line, individually and collectively. I, I agree. And what you're saying, this is kind of what I've been... Well, I've, what you're describing, Paul, has kind of happened. I have, in a way, received what I wanted. But this is what a, a life lesson I'm learning in this. Life gives us what we want and what we seek. It just may not be the specific details, right? And that's what I am learning. Is yeah, the thing works through everybody to manifest for you what it is you desire. And then you have to realize when you get it that what you wanted was, was askew, like we all do many times, right? Be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. So we could talk about how I'm doing a cult. If I have certain results and I have a certain, you know, space of, of, of creation in my life that works for me and others, and that's maybe not so much as it could be with you as I see it, then that's a detriment to you, right? To have folks who only see the highest good in you and ignore the rest. That'll leave you fucked up like them. Wanting your ego padded, right? We have to call it as it is. The good, bad, the ugly. That's how we find true care and true love. Is true is the first part of those things. Oftentimes, what's true is not what the fuck we like or want to hear. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> and that's what I've been learning. You're right, Paul. Uh, whether people are in denial one way or the other, denial is not good. Right. The people that only want to see the good, although 
I know there are some like that. I trust there are. They don't really interact too much. <laughs> well, the best part about those people is they'll constantly see the good in all the people they like. As soon as they don't like Paulie Boy, they see all his bad negative qualities and overlook the good. So it's just, it's it's a, it's a it's an opposing dynamic of a same coin perspective, right? It's like it's when you're out of balance, you're out of balance. Don't tell me I'm out of balance because I'm hypercritical and critiquing. While on the other side, you're hypersensitive and over willing to overlook the negative grounding aspects of life with toxic positivity. You know, if you're going to play this game with me, I'm going to hold up the mirror and show you the equal and opposite response, reaction, and detriment. The one thing they forget is I come on here to play that position. They keep forgetting that. I come on here to play a position. They unwillingly play a position by showing what they're aware of and not aware of. Gotcha. If you think that I sit at the table with anybody at this time and do what I do on here, I don't. I sit quietly, I eat, and I go on with my life. If somebody asks, I answer. If not, I'm just with me and living life. Those who talk don't know. Those who know don't talk. That presents quite a conundrum with someone who does a broadcast. Doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, this is also coming from a man who had thousands of characters of text to explain yeah. how life works. Figure it out. Yeah. I have seen people do what you said, Paul. They get triggered, and then all of a sudden they're blind to the goodness, right? I've seen them do it with you. I've seen them do it with me. And maybe, maybe we all have that tendency to different degrees. Because I know I was guilty of that with my ex-wife for years. I I had a lot of hate and resentment. I couldn't find the good in her when really, you know, she was probably more mature in breaking up our relationship. So All right, but folks claim that about me. But the reality of what's shown yeah. is, I very rarely am hypercritical and critiquing without providing the opposing dynamic. And if nothing else, just to mitigate the. Uh, propensity for conflict because I'm aware of social dynamics and how you have to give a compliment in order to be critical because the average slave is hypersensitive. So I try to be authentically complimentary and point out where I see potential and where people could do better. I've done it with pathetic warrior. I've done it with you. I've done it with slow state. I've pointed out where I think you have strengths and where I'd like to use you in quotes, not the way you all want to use me. I mean to do a fucking good broadcast and do a good life. <laughs> So again, I don't sit there and be only critical and, and critiquing and only see the negative and fail to see the good. Quite the opposite. Oftentimes I saw all the good in motherfuckers. They neglected in themselves, wanting me to see it and call it out where they missed it and focusing on the negative interaction with me when I was critical. Because again, I see the potential. I see the positive aspects and character personality traits. Then I see the rest of the constant dysfunction, division, and inability to commune on higher and higher levels of consciousness and awareness of self and others. That is the descriptor of all of humanity and human uh, history, by the way, in case we're wondering. Mm -hmm. It's why we talk about the stories of 300 Spartans and the rest, because you're lucky if you can get 300 motherfuckers in a room who can all see the same vision and work with the same purpose toward the same goals and results and do it almost effortlessly. The rest of them are a bunch of fucking slaves and they're never going to be anything and that's just the way history's been wrote time and time again. And I don't think we're breaking any ground here with what's been shown here. I do believe we are part of a, a time where we're going to break the patterns. I see the patterns being broken. It may not be real clear and visible what we're seeing, seeing around, but I mean, directly in these streams and, and panels, we may not see it. As much as it is there, but well, the opportunities there, the potentials there, the energies there. Do they see it? Can they feel it? If they can, what do they do with it? And we see the results time and time again. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, my mind is thinking. We're all on our own different paths. I'd like to believe that people will will come to terms and wake up, but 
Holy cows, man. I don't know. Where I'm at, though, where I'm at is focus, being present, um, accepting life for what it brings, and recognizing that whatever it brings is just, it's another step. It's another variable to, to include or consider. <laughs> well, I appreciate the folks down there. Apparently, I wasn't watching. Uh, they were asking for some information for uh, I guess contribution. Hmm. So I appreciate some folks uh, clarifying what that is down there. I thought that I had it on the bottom of the screen, but I must have missed something. <laughs> it's it's um, illegible somehow. I can't read it. Maybe she's got a small screen. Who knows, Jack? Who knows? Your thoughts, Brian O'Shea? You seem a bit ponderous over there. Yeah. Just looking at the chat and uh, <clears throat> gonna hit Jack with uh, you don't have to. Do oh, this I like anymore. this. I gotta stop you. Got, I did it to you again. Can you That's hold right. that thought? Because we got Joe Rogan down there. It's a little more important than you, even though I've called him Ho Rogan, <laughs> right? I called him Ho Rogan, but he's down there now. So I'm gonna use some kind of polite ethic, polite company, right? I'm gonna try it out. I'm not good at it, but um. Paul and Jack, how would you define success? I think that's a great question, and I think potentially will um, illuminate aspects of our subconscious conscious mind for the viewers to make a determination on what is proper and correct and true for them, whether we're on to that or not. It's a great question. Go ahead, Jack. Yeah, go ahead. Define success. Well, where my mind goes with that, success is an achievement. Success can, o therefore, it can only be achieved if we have actual goals and clarity. Um, success and failure, they're both based upon our objective. So I would say success is the achievement of goals, the fulfillment of desires, and the freedom the freedom to grow in both of those. It's kind of a vague I, answer, but sorry. Well, I get what you're saying. I think that most things, there's a subjective and objective component to the analysis. And what I mean by that is what Jack just said is true. And um, there's an old cliche, right? And I'm going to trigger now because when you're a truth or guy <clears throat> and you don't come into this for money or coupons for value, but they start showing up, you start to realize certain things about life it seems right so they used to say if you're good at what you do don't do it for free i don't charge with anything i do but if i'm good at what i do chances are i won't have to do it for free for long so again success from the subjective side is you do what you're good at and or what you love to do till you get good at it um to where you can serve self and others equally care for yourself and care for others and provide value for yourself and for others so I don't think there's anybody in any field who doesn't do what they do long enough to not see value come through. If they did, they wouldn't be classified as successful. You know, most of the successful painters, musicians, you know, uh, storytellers, whoever, whatever it is, whatever field you're in, at some point they get offered value or value shows up because they're good at what they do. They love what they do and they wouldn't rather do anything else all day, every day. And it's hard to keep a good man down so to speak and you can argue that's what makes a good man he's not out lying and cheating and trying to take shortcuts and get to what someone else got their way he's going to do it his way or the way and he's going to get to something when everyone else told him there was no option and no outcome for him right so someone like that that's a, an anomaly that's the variable that's someone who will always be successful in anything they do it's just a matter of putting the time in between and doing the work and showing up. I like I like how you brought out some objective definitions for success too. Doing what you doing what you like, what you're good at, and getting a return from the world. On your investment, right? You gotta argue yeah. that your time, energy, and tension is an investment. Yep. The greatest investment. You can't get it back. Amen. So even a monk's going to tell you, if I'm going to put my time, energy, and tension into you, which is my greatest value, I want to see a return on my investment. You better be one of the best fucking monastery dwellers around here and, 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 and artists when it comes to life, right? Understanding the art of living. 
So I don't care what venue and where, because again, don't get me wrong when I say that value only shows up as fiat coupons. That's not what the fuck I'm saying. You have to see a return of investment. It's the same way, like I say, if I show up here for a year and a half and I got a dozen people who say, Paulie, you wouldn't believe it. I showed up at court and got dismissals. No, I would believe it. So much so I went and did it before you did. I was the one talking and showing it before you activated. So I not only would believe in you, I believed in myself enough to do that. And I want to see a return on my motherfucking investment. And I ain't wrong for that. That's equity. So you don't want to bring me fucking fiat coupons? You better bring me a story about how you rose to the occasion to be a fucking man and got amazing, miraculous blessings and grace and godly results, godlike results. Okay? Because it's within you just like it's within me because we're all one self. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a goal. With, with the idea of success, though, the thought came to me, there's a lot of very miserable people who have object who've achieved objective levels of success right the successful businessmen or whatever they're just miserable but prosperous that's not the success i want that's where i like what you said though about the drive the spirit doing what you jo enjoy and what others find value in yeah, think about a relationship between a man and a woman. I don't give a fuck what a woman brings to my table, how she reacts, responds. I just want to see a return on my investment. That don't necessarily look like money and pussy. That looks like a person flowering and flourishing into who and what they were meant to be before they started fucking with me. So there's no timeline on that. That's the point of commitment. You might have to, to sit with a woman for years before she finally sees the vision and can work toward it and get out of her own way. Right. But when that time comes, that's a return on the investment. She's going to go ahead and promote me and market me to all her friends and everybody else. How I'm the shit. You want me to be triggering and talking in just plain street language? And it's not because I say I'm that or I want to be that. It's because the universe and the truth and the facts and the results deemed it to be that way. Check the record. <laughs> so there ain't nothing wrong. Want to see a return on your investment and seeing value in a whole bunch of different ways knowing your worth and your value and replicating that in the world because it starts within you as within so without can't give away what you don't have that's the truth not to take over but to be polite brian what are your thoughts <laughs> <laughs> my bad i was just blue bass's comment i mean comments Jack, you don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> Did you see that bit? That was a bit yesterday. He came up and just kept telling everyone, you don't have to do this anymore. It never oh, went anywhere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that one's thick, and that one's going to be around for a while. You don't have to do this anymore. Yeah, he thought it was very profound, but it didn't translate as much as he did hope. And now it's a meme. Now he's the meme. I had to explain to him, I don't have to do this anymore. I choose to do this. Kind of confused him. <laughs> he thought I was like him, subject to all of my impulses and compulsions. <laughs> no, I'm here because I choose to do this, despite what I show at times. Amen. You don't have to do it anymore. Some people need that reminder. Sincerely, some people need that simple, obvious reminder. Hey, you actually don't need to melt down anymore. You don't need to whatever. I melt up. <laughs> All right. I don't think I've ever melted down here. I melt up. <laughs> I don't know. I've broken down a whole bunch. <laughs> I've, I've fallen apart many times. I'm going to thank Celia for her contribution real quick. Uh, five pieces of four ply. Thank you, Miss Celia. She says for... Uh, cot, uh, matrix cot. <laughs> he was into that. Hey, Paul, you just brought up melt, so I gotta. Okay, if all the <laughs> mountains in the world, Paul, were melted giant brick red buildings, red brick buildings, what do you make of that? Like, what if that was the case? Is it worth contemplating? Do you make it? Is it no. just like the Mandal effect? It's like it's just. I, I rarely contemplate on things that I have no effect on and can't control. That is the art of the foolish. 
The foolish have their own arts, right? Contemplating, arguing, and debating a whole bunch of things they can't affect or control. It takes up a lot of their time, and they seem to enjoy it, even when they're not. But, I mean, if you if you recognize something that could be happening, like you said, the Mandala effect. You said you noticed a couple of them that may be true. How can you effect. affect it or control it? I'll ask you again to bring me back to base principles. How can no, you affect it or control it? I don't think understanding needs to have effect and control tied to it. Like you, you can get a perspective from it. Like, Oh, this is kind of how the world works. Like the mandala. Okay. Thing. I'll accept oh, that. If you, want to be, if you, it's not even want to, if the universe brings you to a perspective where you become aware of certain things that allows you to broaden your awareness and perspective of how things work. Great. If this broadens your perspective so much that it paralyzes you in wonder and contemplation of what you can affect or control, then it's a detriment. So if it can bring the faithless to a place of faith by showing them something bigger going on here, to quote Mr. Talcott, I'm all for it. That's all I do all day, every day, is make connections that apparently others can't see or aren't real or shouldn't be connected, if you ask the authorities. So I'm all about showing the picture, the frame, the border, and the wall that it's on. If it brings folks to a place of faith and order to a higher calling, not if it's going to cause them to obviously descend and degenerate into paralyzed wonder of things that they cannot control and affect, right? It's like you can only contemplate on the mandala for so long before you become a spoke in the wheel again because you're, you're inactive and unconscious and unaware. Because like, you just made the comment to melt up. And uh, if all the mountains are all around the world are melted brick buildings and the heaven on earth could be coming like in the cycle of time, like I ask you another contemplation thing. Maybe you could say this is fucking retarded to contemplate, but the Indians, they have the, the cycle of time, the wheel of time. They say we're in the Kali Yuga and there could be a sharp transition from the worst period to a golden age, the heaven on earth period. Do you, do you You're hoping like that, really for that, aren't you? I'm hoping You're for desperately it. hoping for that. That's well, what the sentiment is. You're hoping that a golden age is here, right around the corner. I say no, hope is as hollow as fear. So I don't hope for it, and I don't fear for the dark age. I look around, and I observe what is, and I report. And the report ain't that hopeful. I don't, I don't think it's hope, dude. I think it's a so feeling. Before you get the golden age, you got to go through extreme dark age. And I'd say that's more likely right around the corner than that golden age you're hoping for. All well, things are tending case. toward that probability here right now. I don't know where you folks have been. You're in slavery yeah, well, and genocide on that. a worldwide scale now more than ever. When's the, when's the golden age coming before the, the, the dark age? Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. We're... So you would be saying we're in the Kali Yuga, the Iron Age, the worst of it. And it feels like... No, I think it gets a lot worse. You think this is the worst of it? You sitting on YouTube with me talking about what you feel? You ain't seen nothing well, yet. I'm not saying this is the you worst. You must I'm not, not study saying, history. I'm not saying this exact moment. I'm saying we're in the Kali Yuga. We might be in the beginning of the Kali Yuga, the beginning of the worst of it. And as we transition even farther to worse and worse... It feels like we're about, it's about to get as bad as it could ever get, probably in the somewhat near future. I don't know, five years, one year, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is. That's a relatively near future that we can see the worst of the worst. And then there could be a sharp transition into the best of the best, which I don't know if I understand. I don't know if you, if it's worth contemplating what you think about that, but that is the idea of the Vedic Indian, like glorious, brilliant, fucking ancient wisdom that they that is there that is that, that's what the, that's what their ideas are in india in hinduism right so you were saying i'm hoping you were saying i'm hoping for something but i'm saying no there's a feeling that that's what's happening Right. There's an intuition that we're in a wheel within a wheel here and that you it's got to get dark before it gets light. So that's much like the day. We see every day replicated as it getting dark before it gets light. So it's probably a macro and micro replication. I don't see this as the darkest before the dawn yet. I think we got a ways to go. 
Okay, you gotta see you a few to, you billion were, people killed, turned out into the streets, have everything stripped from them, plagues, uh, you know, biological events, storms, uh, grid shutdowns. You got a ways to go here. All right. So if we if there's a golden, a silver, a bronze, and an iron age, which age would you determine that we're in right now? I, I, I'm not too sure how I would, how I would, uh, I guess, I guess iron, I guess the iron age is the worst iron rust, doesn't it? Yeah. Which is the worst, which is, and it's also the, the, would be the least expensive metal, the most base metal, the most, right. The, va the least valued, right. And the most susceptible to oxidation and rust, I believe one of the only few metals yeah, that rust. We're in the road. worst of the worst age, which was my point, which was what you shared. Okay. Said. So you made a great point. Does that work? Well, then, dude, I just don't have to fight for my logical point to be made, dude. It's like I had. I'm a just saying I see a lot of folks that. doing little to nothing to outlive an iron age while telling me what they feel about it. Feel I about it or objectively. Un <laughs> dude, a feeling, a feeling. Is, you're you telling say, me you're about to go into the darkest times ever, and I'm asking you what you're doing to create and prepare for that. I have my own answers and things to show, and then there's everyone else talking about what they feel with a golden age. You have to go through iron and bronze and silver before you get to gold. So when I pre I pre start presuming that when you hop right to golden age, and is that coming, that you're hoping for it. That's all I said. So if I was wrong in that presumption, you can just correct me on that. Well, no, no, no. You brought up a brilliant point because I've I've contemplated this. Maybe it was a waste of time to contemplate these things, but that that's another fucking thing. Is it, does it go from? I don't uh, think the majority of folks here are really sentence. processing what's going on and actualizing and realizing it, and then responding to the life sentence. on life's term. Let me finish my sentence. The. There's a there's a debate whether it goes whether it's a harsh transition from the iron to golden or is there a gradual? Does it go from iron back to bronze, back to silver, and then gold? Is that that you seem to think that that's the more logical approach? Most because things the, have levels on the way up and the way down. A ladder does, the escalator does, the elevator does, heaven and hell does. Has a purgatory in between with various levels. So, yeah. I think that there's levels to everything, consciousness and awareness. I think there's levels to success, you know, levels to love and care. Right. Hey, can so I jump in here? Of not the sharp, which, yeah, I'm a gradualist. Sharp. I think things gradually get better or worse based on the but, participants, their consciousness and awareness application and results. Yeah, but there's a but the mainstream Hindu thought is that there's a harsh thing. So yeah, that's uh, there's, there's things to contemplate there. But that that like you're saying though that that would be the logical thing. But with the Mandela effect or melted things like that doesn't seem logical or it doesn't seem like like there's something different. Like maybe it could. All you have to do is just contemplate on one's own life and each day. Look around you on panel. Some people's experience is gradually getting better toward a golden age. Some folks are gradually degenerating toward an iron age. They're rusting and oxidizing and become unused material. So this is present in a dynamic right in front of our eyes individually. Why would it not be there collectively? The collective is a makeup of the individualists. The society gradually got successful and prosperous and gradually has descended into decay more and more each day, just like the individuals participating in the endeavor. Hello? Self is self on the highest and lowest level. We are the universe. The universe is us. As above, so below, as within, so without. You don't have to look out there to understand out there. If you look out there, you will misunderstand out there. When you understand in here, everything out there becomes clear. The stars. You could look out there and do astrological things. You're doing it again. No, I get you. I, 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 um, I understand it. It's like, I don't know if it's a paradox or what. No, but it's. Uh, what are you going to learn by looking at the stars that you can't learn observing yourself and other selves? 
I think it's mutual. I think it's a symbiotic. It's it's not exclusive. It's not one or They're the other. Correlative. It's you can correlate these things, but at what point does correlation become mutual masturbation? We get it. We're in something and a part of it. Some of us get it. And then we live from that space. You keep looking and reporting on what's already known and, and acted upon. Hey. I used to tell, sorry, Jack, I used to tell guys in the program when I got to situations similar to this, and I suspect they were similar to this, I would tell them to pull their eyeballs out, turn them around, focus them inward, and just leave them like that for a while. Just yeah, I mean, I do, I do think there's a lot of value in that because we do intellectualize things, and it's like, so much in life is like when Paul was saying, like you experience it, like you could tell someone how to do something, but it's not really until you, you could tell someone how to work on a car. You could read books on it but until you put your fuck, get your hands all dirty and start doing the mechanical work. The understanding will be there. So it's like, I guess I do, I have spent a lot of time heady shit trying to be all into It's like the guy, what do they call it? The guy, the underground man. He's got all this intellectual. It's shit real in simple, man. The more you stay heady and in your head, the less you are in your heart. That means the less convicted you are and the less active you're going to be. A motherfucker who lives from a heart space and is motivated, inspired from that space, I don't have time, energy, and attention to sit around and be heady. That's for the pseudo-intellectuals who want to seem clever and smart and act like they know something and debate over shit they can't prove, which is the art of the fool. I'm going to write a book, the opposite of Donald Trump, the art of the fool. That'd be a good book. <laughs> hey, I kind of lean a little bit more with what Brian is offering, though. That um, the the <laughs> question and the idea of the change. I do have <laughs> hope and belief that um, a golden age is here. Because you're right, though. I was I was listening to your words, and I and I don't have disagreement with anything you said, Paul. But if we get out of the if we get out of the physical form into the more spiritual aspect, it's less linear. And the spirit, you know, the spirit and the, the spirit brings miracles. Miracles are spontaneous. You're talking about potential outcomes. Yes. I'm talking yes. about what is and what has been shown. I don't deny the potential outcome because of what is and has been shown. Yeah. If I did, I wouldn't be and do what I do. I just live that. I don't pontificate about it. Life is interesting. And what the future brings to us, who knows, man. But um, what matters is... Do you that presume that people can't look, see, and then know? Like, do you presume I can't look at most people and most things, look, see, project, and know where it's going to go? We can that assume, not possible? We can assume and, and we can, you know, based on our experience and discernment. So like everyone that gets into crypto and makes a whole bunch of money every fucking cycle, they couldn't just look at what the rest thought was chaos and establish a trend and view the charts and then project where it would go and capitalize off of an understanding the rest can't seem to attain. You don't think that's possible? Sure. People, it's... We all have that capacity, the ability, and we have different perspectives on what we are able to discern and predict. Do you have any reason to believe that from the beginning of time that somehow spontaneously going to change by a mechanism that you can't elucidate, that human beings are not rather predictable, suggestible, easily manipulatable, and enslaved? I'm saying we are, but there's, there's a lot of evidence like that 100th monkey effect and... You know, there's possible. There's a lot of evidence that on these panels, I've been made an enemy out of for other folks to avoid doing what the fuck I do and what they know they need to do. That trend probably doesn't begin and end on these panels. It probably begins and ends in those people and in life. And there's been few and far between who've been a uh, uh, exception to that rule rather than the rule. So that tells you all you need to know right there of where we're going, where everyone's at now. I'm sorry, what exactly is this 100 monkey thing? When you teach 99 bastones, the 100th bastone seemingly immediately knows how to use stone tools. 
So if I taught oh, 99 oh, touchdown oh, monkeys how to, you know, let's say not be a slave, the hundredth one is born knowing automatically how to not be a slave. Yes, I, I know. Now I I'm know like the first about. monkey effect. I'm the reverse. <laughs> 99 slave monkeys came before me who wouldn't do what they needed to do. I'm the first. So I have to conclude that that didn't come from them. It may have came through them, but not from them. But I didn't have that experience either. I think that that comes from somewhere else. I agree. I actually, sorry if you don't mind. I actually came up to respond to uh, Brian about what he was saying about this. You were mentioning this circle, this Indian thing about whatever. I have this sense in my heart that everything that's happening right now has already happened at some point not not the exact thing like not me you or whatever but i'm talking about the way things are today like in the 40s the the communists under stalin had to put up signs after the holodomor that it's not okay to eat your children right and so they had to, <laughs> you know they put these signs up all around the town i just that's put that up on my panel that's great yeah. lou you finally yeah. brought something here. My next it's background not, for tomorrow is going to be please don't eat your children. It's uh, not it's okay. The or the it's, not okay. Yeah. it's not okay to eat your children. They right. literally put those signs up because people, uh, they killed off all the farmers. No one knew how to grow, any, grow anything. And so they were starving to death. But, you uh, realize now, that is the archetype of the god Saturn, right? Shatan, the god right. that eats its own children. Another right. coincidence, I guess. Yeah. And now we're, I don't know, in my humble opinion, we're, we're at the, the most comfortable place in that wheel, right? And it, it's a wheel that just keeps repeating as far as I can tell. I could be totally off, but it seems that it just keeps repeating. It's like that. Basically what case. you're saying is we got a long way to go until Ben yeah. Thorpe comes on with a grace sandwich. Uh, we're not going to see a golden age anytime soon. But uh, hey, hey, that might be any day now. I mean, judging by what they've got going on over there, might be rather short time. Ben Thorpe will come on with Grace, you know, uh, being turned over a spitfire with an apple in her mouth. And then we'll know a golden age is pretty much right around the corner. I'm going to make a prediction, by the way, talking about the Thorpes. I'm going to do it right now so no one can say I didn't say it. She's going to end up working with you sooner than you or anybody here thinks. Well, because I'm the best online metaversal stepdaddy ever, and her daddy's got some issues lately. So, you know, what better transfer of authentic power uh, than a willing shift toward what is true and what's right or just beneficial for the audience? Again, this doesn't have to always be based in principles and values and whatever else when you co-create with me. I don't have to live with you. I'm not liable for you or responsible for you. We can come on here, co-create together, get to some good content and leave it right there. So she seemed able to do that. If she's able to do that, then me and her are going to be each other's best friend and best ally, regardless of whether we agree or not. Through that process, you're going to see magic happen like it always does. Yeah, and she's a smart fucking cookie. I'll tell you right now. She's a smart She's cookie. got potential, man. I know yeah, when I see him, right? And I always reach out to folks who I see potential with, and then they got to make sense of it and do something with it and presume that I'm not trying to use them and abuse them, which most people got trust issues. I mean, raise your hand if you ain't got trust issues and maybe for some good reasons. There's been a lot of liars in our past. There's been a lot of misleaders and misdirectors. There's been a lot of users and abusers, and we may have became them at some point because we were so used to being around them and being raised by them. I'm going to step out, brother. Brothers. Hey, before you go, Jack, you. if I come up to your panel, are you going to let me up? Probably not. Why? Thank you. Was it my <laughs> message? Was it my message, Jack? No, it's your personality. Oh, oh yeah. Was yeah. I, I would have said the same thing. We're bonding. Okay, here. my personality sucks, but how about my message? Would that be Fuck, I love when Jack Talcott is, like, radically authentic. It just lights up my soul. <laughs> I love it. All right, respect. We'll we'll see what the future brings. Peace. Any thoughts on the matrix? Oh, he's gone. He ran. All right, relax. Yeah, he's gone. You'll have to go call his people. Get in touch with his people and schedule an interview. Uh, Rachel Hancock, which is a great name. Okay, I love that name. Uh, 
love and blessings to you, Paul. Thank you, Rachel Hancock. That's very nice of you. If you don't want me using your name in the future, please give me that notification so that I don't dox you or whatever the fuck they call it on here. Because I know people are afraid to be known for like gifting the unslaved one because he's a loose cannon and a liability and potential terrorist, according to Vice News um, and various other affiliates, right? These are very credible people. Very credible people. Very credible. Okay. <clears throat> your thoughts? Lewis, Brian, penile fluffer, as you're so affectionately known nowadays. Uh, you know, I just wanted to ask him his thoughts on the Matrix cut, you know, and, and I really wanted to. He said he saw it. He loved it. Where were you, bro? Try to keep up. Okay. I didn't hear him say he loved it. So I might have missed I know. that part. You were too busy looking around and fiddling with whatever was in your generalized area. A roofer's cock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was too busy reaching for the roofer's cock along with my mother. Uh, I didn't hear what he was, I didn't hear what he was saying. But yeah, I kind of agree with what... <laughs> He's going to gloss over that. I love when Peanut Power just glosses over it. Whatever the fuck we're doing and saying, you just act like you didn't even hear it. Were you holding Go ahead, just continue. I like that. I like when you do that. Can you hold their I, balls? I, what's that now? Did you hold their balls? Please don't insult him, okay? Me and Brian can do that. You can't. You get insulted here. You don't do the insulting. You still haven't figured out that dynamic. This guy's a year and a half. He doesn't realize he's not here to insult people. He's here to be insulted. He did that. Uh, well, he they know he's that character. Oh, he knows I'm not oh, vegan God. right now. Uh, like I have been oh, before. Uh, haven't been for a while now, but... um. Yeah, he, he knows he can't get on me about that anymore, so he has to resort Being to Being a vegan? I'm not getting I'm saying I'm not anything. that. I'm not that right now. I haven't been for, like, several months, so. Uh, I didn't know that, and I don't give a fuck what you're virgin? <laughs> you finally God. lose it or what? Not yet. Not yet. I'm getting there. All right, I we'll feel work it. on it. I can feel it. I know. Yeah, I can feel I it. know the struggle, all right? Yeah. You know, I don't give a fuck what you eat, man. I just want you to do something with your life because I love you, kid. Well, I was you just learning a lot fucking roofing earlier, so that was interesting. Oh, I, 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 I confirmed that it's extremely it. fucking difficult as I suspected. Is and, there a uh, reason definitely... both of you tards are talking at the same time? Tard Fest 2024 is uh, not for I like can't... months out now. What's going on with that? I can't listen to what he's saying. It's bullshit. Please don't talk at the same time. And if you both can listen while you talk, you can hear the other ones talking. Yeah, Just fucking terrible, right? Look at that timing. Look at that fucking synchronistic timing. I'm always synced up, dude. It's crazy. You pin his comment. I put that fucking background on. It's incredible. Hey, be very gentle. Please don't hurt him. We had a case where we had an African-American guy who was a fan of mine. Great fan. Great Amazing guy. man. Amazing now, man. What's going on with him? You know what I'm... Oh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? <laughs> that never gets you know old. What I'm talking about? Okay. So we have an African-American... That was Donald Trump during a campaign never gets rally. Old, man. I'm taking that with me wherever I go. The my African-American bit. Never get enough of that. All right. You indulge me. What were you guys mumbling over each... I got to get to breaking news, actually. I can't do any more of this played out done with the the rabble you know, the back and forth your thoughts brian o'shea you always have something i'm just reading comments because i'm so fucking concerned with what people think all right let's get into it paul what's up with my puppy dog eyes dude how do i fix this uh puppy dog eyes situation mm. grow your balls, well, balls. yeah See, I was gonna, I was gonna segue into it. I mean, you haven't a little uh, yeah, bit more gracefully. Yeah, we haven't you're gonna need to grow your balls, pills. You're gonna have to really start to believe in yourself and who and what you are and what you're doing and your results. Um, you're you gonna really have to see the Shut the fuck talking. up, you skinny vermin! There it is. There goes the puppy dog look right out the room. See, and I do that oftentimes because it needed to be done. You know, we're not here to cupcake and politic and all the rest of it. And I don't give a fuck how women see me. Oh, he's not loving and caring, right? Show me your beta males who won't even lift a finger to do and be what they're meant to be 
for you or for themselves. Tell me about how I don't love and care about myself or others. You must be kidding because I talk loud because I don't play games and entertain nonsense. So, you know, again, there is no benefit to being a nice person. There's way more benefit benefit to being authentic, accountable, response able. Uh, and of course, when not engaged in controversy, uh, peaceful. Right. So I'm not a person at this time who sits around and cycles and spins and has all these emotions. I'm pretty neutral. You know, if not, I err on the side of being like, you know, liking myself in life at this point. So yeah, I, it like it, does, it doesn't require me to put on some kind of affect where I pretend to be nice, kind, and polite because I'm not that, right? It's like because I am who I need to be and becoming that more and more nice, polite, and kind doesn't matter as much as authentic and accountable. Accountable means to me and the truth first and foremost, not to somebody else's emotional state. I'm not accountable, nor am I response able for that, especially when I'm honest and open and authentic about who and what I am and how I live. After that, it becomes a choice. Do you want to live with me or like me, or do you want to go your own way? That's the opposite of narcissistic. There's no deception and manipulation about it. That's actualization and realization is what that is. Go your own way. See, when you start caring more about yourself and what you're going to do and be than you care about what other people think and feel about you, that's when you start to rise and succeed and generate results. Please show me and tell me something different if you got the answer. Why do I have this thought that like, oh, you go to jail, right, Paul? You you get murked or something. You get assassinated. They fucking they show up at your house and fucking. And then I'm like, then I'm like, all right, now it's time. Fuck this shit. We lost fucking Paul. Fuck this bullshit. I feel like something would be turned on in me where I would just be like, fuck. I don't know though. I, don't know I think you're delusional. I think if I was taken away and killed, it would immediately be a source of you to get more inactive and depressed and say, well, if he couldn't do it, I definitely can't do it because you hold me in such high regard, apparently. So there's probably two sides to that coin. If you're not motivated by me in life, I doubt you're going to be motivated by me in death. You're probably going to be demotivated because it's already a representation of me dead and gone and pretty much what I'm doing to be incomplete. In a sense, that would make you a death worshiper as well, because you'd rather venerate me and honor me in death than do it right here when I'm fucking living and we can look eye to eye and have an understanding and a mutual level of respect. That doesn't make any sense. Honor the living by living a certain way. Don't honor the dead by choosing to wake up and start living. All right, but let's let's flip that, though, and let's do a meditation to be in living and to, to bring energy and life. So like, okay, I'm sitting here right now, a stray bullet from a drive-by blows my fucking head off, right? They start searching my pockets. They find an ID. Eventually they contact my family. They fly my body to Chicago. There's a funeral there. And they're like, yeah, he was a fucking lost, fucking addicted. That's going to be their narrative, right? Yeah. Lost, addicted guy, sad story. Fucking that's the people, that's what people are going to say. And then you got kind of know me oh yeah we lost those shade to some random violence fucking crazy but like when you start going down this road of, of thinking about everything that happens after your death you start real realizing like why do i have all this fear why do i give a fuck what people think you know what the fuck am i doing what is what is the fear of death anyways like what what does it matter like if that's how it plays out afterwards like you, right. you is, that something you, is that something you typically know about yourself that you tend to take pain and bad instances and transmute that and transcend that? Probably not. So what do you think is going to be the mechanism that suddenly allows you to live like that when you got a choice to live like that now and you don't? You let all the bad and negative and scary shit just like penile power hold you back. I could feel it coming off you. 
and you want to talk about me being dead and not being here no more and you waking up and me being gone, that's all of a sudden going to motivate you? I doubt it. You're probably going to well, be I rather depressed death, and dejected. My death. The bullet went in my head. I'm meditating on I my death. I already live like that, bro. You just watched a whole bunch of people think that I came online to talk about synchronicity with my uncle's death because I needed condolences. I didn't come here in loss and lack of faith. I gained something. I transmute and transcend the pain and the suffering regularly, and I try to make it work for me and the motherfucking audience. I already live like that. My question is, do you? So you go, you go ahead and do it, Paul. You do the death meditation. A stray bullet just went through your head. What's the process of what, what happens next? I don't know. Because I'm going to my next experience. I'm not worried about it. I already live like that. I'm probably going to live like that in the afterlife. So go ahead. Tell us what happens. Tell us what, tell us what, tell us. Tell us what happens. Why, what, in what sense? What you think happens, what you think, the bullet just went through your head. Okay. I think a whole bunch of people get the game back in its proper perspective in that instant. And they start to see themselves and me and life in a completely different way. And they start to become a bit more thankful and grateful, as you said, potentially for certain things. And to reconcile that they wasted our time, energy, attention together. So you're right. There is a potential there if you perceive like I perceive that you would have that experience. Does that mean the majority of folks who come here are going to have that experience? Do they have that history and reputation? No. They're liable to laugh and giggle at me and say, see, that motherfucker got exactly what I wanted him to get, and that puts me in a better position to do my grift. No, It's about okay, the yeah. wielder of the perspective. No, yeah, but just do it with me, if you may. If you, I thought like, I just did I thought no, I just gave you both sides of the simulation or, or at least two, two sides of a dynamic. I guess you did. Yeah. How do you see but it, I mean, Brian? You die. You, 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 your, your father's going to, your father's going to fly your body back to New York. And at that funeral, what type of shit are they going to say? Your family. Hey, bro, I already told you, they could do whatever they want at that point. I, I already told him to, you, you, you want to live the art of the fool collect my body and start doing all the things with it you didn't do while I was living. Really cement your reputation as the fools and neglectful idiots that you are. When I die, you need to just leave me there and move on. Why you would collect my bones and do ritual and tradition with them, I'd be looking down at you like the biggest fools ever. You want me to be Hank about it? It would just be another afterlife testimony to how ritualistic and foolish these slaves are. And they'll be sitting over me saying a whole bunch of shit in a way they never did while I was alive. And I'm going to laugh at them double time and then ask whatever that force is to bring them more judgment and suffering. Because I think it's pathetic what, and embarrassing. What are the types what of things they're going to say at your funeral? What are, the, what are they going to say? He was a great man, an amazing speaker, intelligent, artistic, creative, all the things they won't tell me. Now, cool. without trying to use me on the back end, thinking they're going to pump up my ego. <laughs> the same things they did with my buddy when he crashed his fucking car and everybody was hating on him and shitting on him, getting to something his own way. And as soon as he crashed the car, they were all whining and crying. All the people were talking shit the day before, gossiping mm -hmm. at school. They were all in his fucking house. Oh, he was so attractive. He was so, he went his own way. He was so rugged. And yeah, you know, he's make the best decisions, but he was a real one, a unique one. Give me a break. You were just running your fucking mouth and talking shit and lying the day before. It's you're really only there because you're guilty now. You're not there because it's about that being. You're there to cope with what the fuck you did and didn't do. You ain't fooling nobody. Yeah, your father's That's why motherfuckers like me don't go to gravestones and headstones because we hash it out now while we're alive. I got nothing to say when you're out of here. We already did the accountability and authenticity. That time's over when you're out. Yeah, that, specifically your father would say that. Oh, he was very smart. He wouldn't get into any of the addictions. Yeah, he'd bullshit himself and everybody else and embarrass himself again. And then the record would show something completely different about what the fuck went on here. And all the people like Salty Siren and the other folks who've been here from the beginning would, would do the same kind of reaction I would, knowing how pathetic and embarrassing it looks. They'd, they'd be the first ones to go to light up a fucking joint and go, remember the time you came on Paulie's broadcast and made it all about you and monopolized and detracted from him and character assassinated him and lied? 
because you felt like a bitch because you are a bitch. Remember when you did that? They're going to do the Chris Farley, uh, Paul McCartney bit on Saturday Night Live. Remember when? Remember when? And they're not going to like that. And they're going to say, why are you doing this at our funeral? Because you're a fake ass, embarrassing motherfucker and you don't keep it real and you're not accountable till it's too late. And we don't respect people like that, nor should you. Say. Show me or tell me something different and I'll get with it. Why do you care, Brian? What they say about you and your gun. It's it's a meditation on death because death is so hidden in Western culture. It's so like swept under the rug, something you don't think about. But it's interesting if you actually think about it and go down the road. You could uh, you could acquire something from it. Like to me, it was enlivening. It was uh, invigorating to contemplate Please what, death. Rob? Please what? Please. What am I hearing? It's not really a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> what am I hearing? That's Daddy's Blue Funk. Uh huh. I'm listening to everything, just wondering where I get a fucking word in edgeways, to be honest. And drinking today, Blue Funk? <laughs> oh, man, this is why Brian and he jumped panel more, okay? We got Officer O'Shea here, all right? No, no, no it's my time on panel. I'm fucking pineal, bitch boy. Fucking need to change something. I, I shouldn't be here then, dude. I'm just fucking nothing, dude. Fuck. What? I've got some uh, chili what? potatoes. I'm really shut the really fuck hot. up, blue funk, you fucking British bitch. <laughs> Sweat my ass off. <laughs> You've been drinking today, blue funk, or what? What's the deal? Mm -mm. Just smoking as usual. Why don't you tell us all what your godfather already seems? To know? Why don't you tell your godfather what everyone else already seems to know? <laughs> You're still drinking your own piss. Yes, big old how it, glass how this morning. Taste? Oh. How does it taste? Does it taste good? Fucking not that like bad. Success. I've had a better diet. Surprisingly, not it, much yeah. taste. Surprisingly, not much taste in it. You drunken fucking British, fucking melted brick teeth. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> I'm detecting the odor of piss, officer. <laughs> Officer, you've been drinking tonight? <laughs> Piz, I mean. I'm detecting an odor. I'm going to have to give you a field sobriety test. I don't think there is a I'm test for that. Throw, can you, can you blow and get tested for Piz? Is there a Piz breath test? I don't think that exists. Be like, I could oh, tell by the smell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk in the other direction. <laughs> What are you um, mumbling about down there, you miscreant? Put your camera on so we can see your fucking... He is, needy and, he is needy and attention-driven. That's why that woman left him, and he's still fucking obsessing over. You saw when he came in, he had to come on camera and do this. Anytime I see a man who, in the middle of us talking, comes on camera and does this, I go, oh, that's why the woman left him. Uh, she didn't leave me. We're still no, together. She did. She did. Mm -hmm. no, dude, don't... You're not. Oh my God! He's gonna embarrass us even more. After all we went through last time of you crying and pining away for this woman and saying I really loved her, she was amazing. Now you're gonna come back here and remix like Dr. Dre. And there's still, and, more, there's still more you could learn. You don't. You, you didn't. You don't know everything about it, and you probably okay. never will. All right. You know what? I'm gonna leave it right there because I'm not gonna do another 30 minutes on getting you to show how you're lying to yourself and everyone else. I just did like probably two and a half hours. That's all I do here now. I can't even keep track. Okay. We were here. You remember. We I talked to you already, right? I talked to you. We were here. They were yes. there. Everything was just like this. And you were saying, the woman's gone. I really loved her. She was so beautiful. Uh, and I was like, dude. Stop focusing on this woman. Stop pining away for her. She's probably riding someone else's dick. And now you're here today to say that, that never happened. Sense. You guys were never apart. You're together. Please don't do this to me in the audience. 
It's complicated. I'm, I'm not going in. Oh, I don't want to It's go complicated, it. it's right? We're not on Facebook where people are unaware. I know myself, and it's I know you on some right. level. It's complicated means she left your ass. No, you, I appreciate that's your what that's code for. You didn't know it, and people on Facebook didn't know it. But when a man it's says it's complicated, it means she left your ass. No, I appreciate your advice, but you're not always okay. You're not always right about everything. So. I didn't say that. Sorry. I'm just decoding here. I, I'm a decoder. You ever seen Christmas Story, the decoder ring? I have my own decoder ring, and I know on there it says it's complicated. When a man says that, means she either left your ass or is on the way out. She'll pick one. No, it's not neither. Actually. I bet you her shit says single. Your shit says it's complicated. Her shit, her shit says single and ready to mingle. Mm. I'd bet anything on it. No. Okay. What you don't she sound tell, too what, convincing. I, I've, I've been watch, I can tell you for a fact. I've been watching her online. And what, what she tells people Did online you just say you're not, stalk, you, So you admitted you're stalking the woman who's no longer not, with you. Because if she was doing something me. online and was with what you, you'd have first time access. Online is not how she really feels inside. Okay? Oh. So, so you've been stalking her online, and what she's been revealing to the world is not what she really feels. You know better. You got it in backward. What she's telling you is a lie. What she's saying to the world on social media is the truth. No. See, yeah. I didn't want to be the one to do one this for you, loves. slugger. I'm, I'm trying to help you out. Sorry. I her what shit on public says single, ready to mingle, and she's got her pussy spread open on, on, on IG. And you're yeah. over there with nobody in a dark room and your shit on IG says it's complicated because she left your ass. I'm talking to loads of women, but you know what? They, they're all sexy and beautiful and young and pretty and everything, but I don't want any of them. They're all just, I don't, they don't mean anything to me because I don't feel anything about them. But She's this girl, your pusher. She's your pusher, this, man. A woman I've known. Uh, you know, for a year and over a year. She's your safe space. Like, she's my everything. She's my everything. What's that song, Brian O'Shea? My first. Sorry to sound like a hopeless my last, romantic, but My everything. Just me. And she's better than Jesus. He talks about her like some motherfuckers talk about Jesus. She's got that Jesus. Jesus is my everything. It's my light. It's my savior. You don't even need Jesus. He's got this goofy bitch from Ukraine. I think I think it's normal for people to in love. No, it ain't. 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 Does this sound and feel normal to you? Not to me. Regular. This sound like some kind of dysfunction and obsession and fixation, some kind of fetish. You like getting beat up and whipped, huh? Chained up, put a ball in your mouth, shit shoved up your ass. I know you're into that shit. No, you love it. Come on, keep I'm it real, pretty, bro. I'm actually pretty vanilla. That's why, well, no, you, you, it's in you, right? It's, I, I know the hoe in every person when I see it. And I know that's what this Ukrainian woman was attracted to. You. She wanted to tie you up, beat you, whip you and put shit up your ass. And, you know, she couldn't really broach the subject and you wouldn't broach it. So she did it metaphorically, metaphysically. She you bent you up. You couldn't took be your soul. From the truth. I listen. The power is a motherfucker in this realm. You need to understand energy exchange, power, inherent hierarchical power and value structures, and energetic dynamics is real. And if you think most motherfuckers ain't looking for power subconsciously in themselves, in their life, in their relationships, you better think again. That's why they call them power couples. So someone's got to fuck and someone's got to get fucked. <laughs> Physically, metaphorically, metaphysically, in a sense, it's going to happen. So we could be that as well. But why can't it be equal is my question. Why can't we have you ain't equal? a bitch. Hey, I know you want to be one, but you ain't one. I don't want to believe you're one. So why you would want to equalize on an unequal dynamic? A man is not equal to a woman. A man is superior to a woman in some senses. On the highest level, mm. we're oneself. On the lowest level, a woman can't be a woman without a man. But doesn't that, I think that hurts, that must hurt, hurt her ego though. Right. Because she, she wants to be. Right. And rather than you check her ego, you destroyed yours in order to fit in with her. This is the modern day man. Instead of I'll check a goofy that. bitch's out of control ego and lack of understanding, you cracked your ego open in order to be loved. How did it work out for you? 
Sorry, don't take advice from me. Not that I'm giving it. I'm an egotistical narcissist. I happen to think it's self-care and self-worth, self-value, self-direction, self-knowledge, and success. But I'm told it's egotistical and narcissistic. So you wanted to love. So you broke your ego down for her to not even be able to check hers. And she's off with her shit intact, doing and being who and what she is while you're broken up about it, picking up the pieces. So keep letting women convince you about how a man's supposed to be and live and write books on how to. She's getting, she's getting really, really bad karma. She locked herself out of a flat the other day. She had a massive. Um, That's just because her. she's doing evil shit, whether she knows it or not. That's got nothing to do with how she feels. Nothing is worried about you as you are about her. She don't know what happened to you this week. You know everything that's happened to her because you're watching her and stalking her. She's avoiding looking and watching at you. You're in her wake at this point. You still don't understand the dynamic. I wouldn't call it stalking. I'm just, I'm just taking a healthy interest in what she does because I. It's I'm not, not a like, healthy interest. Not You're like, not a healthy that, person. It's clear to me by the way you present. It's not dysfunctional like and unhealthy. It's dysfunctional and unhealthy, and it's not going to get a woman to respect you more. She's going to respect you less. Don't you understand? Most of you inauthentic corporate males, your best help and efforts lead to you getting less of what you want and even less of what you need. I'm not so a corporate keep clutching, keep, keep grasping, us, keep watching, keep waiting, keep celebrating and semi-hating and Please. see where the fuck it gets you with this bitch or in life. I'm not a corporate male, whatever that means. All right, I, let I me break it to you, bro. She I just texted me like 20 minutes ago. Right. I don't, I wasn't bro, she raised just texted me 20 minutes ago. It's right there. I didn't want to tell you. She, we're, we're dating now. Me and that woman, that Ukrainian woman that you were with, I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> I didn't think I, I didn't have the heart to tell you. I didn't want to, you know, fuck you up anymore. But she's texting yeah. me. I got naked okay. pictures. The whole thing. It's not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. Yeah. Try to help out. So, Timmy, please go ahead. Do something help? with this. It's really Why, pretty. You don't, you don't work. You don't work. There? <laughs> Believe it or not, she still she still wants me. So clearly, <laughs> we can <talk> clearly. <laughs> Fucking police. Come on, police. bro. Why do you guys put me through this? Why the do you guys gotta make me the heel constantly? It it's not Can't I it's just not come here and be a loving peaceful good person? Anymore. You guys always have to, to make me the heel indirectly. Not our fucking choice. Hey, the police, you don't have a social police. security number. No, I don't have a social security number. A social security was created <laughs> and a person was assigned to it, and I was told that I was that person. Turns out someone was lying. Do you see that blue funk? Can we uh, change the subject, please? So I really didn't want to talk to you? about my Emperor my Palpatine. That's oh, it. It's like know. Dark Talcott. I got to come here and pray, play Emperor Palpatine regularly and be the fucking heel and, and be the nothing bearer of bad news. But, there's nothing I can do but move on, and I can't move on. So How do you move on from someone who hasn't do. left you? You started this conversation off telling me you're still together. So how are you going to move on from being still together because it's complicated? You don't even know who and what you are, where you are in this situation or in life. That's that's evidenced by your language. I'm pretty sure I do. I know exactly pretty sure you don't. Most people who I find who don't know where they are and what they're doing in life always tell me they're pretty sure they do know. The results don't speak to that, nor does their language. I'm um, just trying to help out. If I'm not helping, I'm don't talk okay, to me. I'm not I'm not going to admit to being a complete fucking loser or failure because I'm not. Of course not. Achieved, Nobody in their pride and ego ever wants to admit to being a complete failure or loser. That's why they never become a complete successful winner. In order to win, one must first learn how to lose. You no, rack a discipline. I've lost many times. Do I have to show you the fucking Bruce Lee video from 40 fucking years ago where he told the clown like you, in order to learn how to win, you first must learn how to gracefully lose and accept that you're a loser. Then you can become who and what you need to be. See, the emotional okay. content that you hold about it is what's in your way, right? You have to direct that emotional content, not ignore it and not misdirect it. Okay. Blue Funk, do you see this hole? What hole? On my, no, it's uh, not on the panel. It's a family broadcast, man. Is that yeah, Cynthia's vagina? I told you not to do this. He goes, I'm going to do a bet. Hello. I'm going to go it's to Cynthia's house and open her vagina <laughs> on panel. Uh, and I said, you can't do that. And he fucking did it anyway. God, it's hey, disgusting hello. and crap and grotesque. And it's cavernous. Hey. It's echoing. 
Oh my where God! It, where did, where is there it a leave? Chilean miner down there in Cynthia's China. vagina? Where does it leave? God, from? it's vast and cavernous and dark and, and, and deep and dead. <laughs> Sir, please, why are you babbling over me doing the fucking bit? It's obviously not Cynthia's. Well, not so obviously. It could be Cynthia's yeah. vagina, but probably yeah. not. And you're you're mumbling over me. Do you understand that your woman probably watches this broadcast and she's dying for you to shut up? So I can continue doing what I do. That's why she's not there. It's complicated. It's not complicated not for me, for you. Not it's rather easy for me at this point. Mm -hmm. My microphone's not so good. I should invest in a it's better not microphone. The microphone. It's the personality, like Mr. Talcott said. It's not the equipment today. It's the personality. <laughs> it's the, I'm sorry, brothers. <laughs> it's I don't know what happened. Operator error. Do you, have, do you have a laundry list of successful relationships? Sir? Yes. <laughs> no, this guy. Well, yeah. I was I was being flippant. <laughs> the answer to me is also no. Dude, I'm 48 years old. I've had loads of relationships. I mean, let me guess. Oh, you if they, if they, were, all, if you they were all successful, they wouldn't have ended, and you, I'd still be in them. But that's, that's, that's not true. Point, that's not true. Bam! I got him. I got him, and that's why I was flipping about my situation. I don't have to stay with these broads in order to have at this point four successful relationships because I've gotten better and done better after them. So they were successful for me, apparently, right? And apparently they were successful before and during on some level for the people in them on the other side. Because I'm sure these are women who have reported here and will report they got something out of their experience with me more than the rest of the beta males even. You said it. That, that's the magic word, experience, Paul. Right, but I'm, you I'm come into relationships wanting to get, keep, and have. That don't exist. I come into relationships I've, I've understanding I'm there to meet. Hello, hello, hello. I, hello. I come into relationships understanding I'm there to reflect self and complete within self. I'm that, not there to complete through a Ukrainian woman. Who's not interested in me? Get it? <laughs> That's stoicism. You want to live romanticism. That's why we meet resistance. You're not allowed to be a romantic when you're a stoic. Uh, sir, I told you before I gave you the leeway because I'm, I'm an equitable man and I try not to make too many objective claims beyond my own good and my own credibility. I believe mm -hmm. stoicism can lead to romanticism, not the other way around. Romanticism Dang. without stoicism leads to egocentrism, which leads to a breakup inside and out. Okay. You get me? I'm learning every day. When you love yourself and you love your life, it makes it that much easier to love everything and everyone in it. If you don't have the prerequisite, you're fucked. I don't care how much you feel for this woman. Mm -hmm. She's the source of your happiness and completion. That's no. an addiction. No. There's addiction. Are I you mumbling like over me? I'm going to throw you out of here. Can I ask you what drugs, alcohol, I or medications you're not dog. on? I'm trying to get a word in edgewise. It's fucking you're not here to get a word in edgewise to make points about a life not worth living. You guys are confused of what I'm doing here. It's very egotistical and narcissistic. Get with the program. You don't want to hear other people's points of view. Go to slow states and slave cots to get a word in edgewise and talk with other losers about how it's complicated. Not interested in you shutting me up for you to do the blue funk broadcast. Even your name indicates where you're at in life. You have a blue funk. Yeah, well, it won't last forever. It won't last forever, but I'm not in it. So why would you shut me thing. up in my mode and energy so you can p project blue funk into the room? Go listen to, go listen to BB King That's and why. blue funk yourself right out of your blue funk about your goofy bitch Lucille, which is also the guitar. I'm not interested. Okay. I'm not here to play romantic games with you and your goofy bitch. I'm here to talk truth, self-knowledge, and self-development. That is the absence of your emotional attachment style and your goofy bitch. That means if you don't want that, don't be here. And don't tell me about it because I already know the story. I've lived it. Emperor Paul Patine speaks again. Heal me up, Johnny. I'm going to bow down as we speak. Is that, is I don't that need you to bow down. I need you to stand down. the fuck up for the first time in your life. Projector of inferiority superiority complex you're the one blue funked out on your knees sucking this woman's clit metaversally 
and she's not even interested in you. So get the fuck up off your knees is what I'm telling you. I didn't ask you to kneel to me. I asked you to kneel to the truth. That doesn't require my presence. I've always been a truth seeker, so I always will be. Yeah, truth seekers oftentimes never seem to find in this realm, it seems. A lot of you truth seekers never seem to find because all along the truth has been in you and right in front of your face and you're too arrogant and ignorant to accept it. So keep seeking. Let me know what you find. I will do. Yeah, definitely. I'll take it on the chin. There's no pride and ego here, sir. You don't have to feel raised up or put down. Mm -hmm. You just have to accept what is and work with it. If what I'm saying is not what it is for you, do not entertain me and my rap here. That's my best <laughs> advice for you. That's the first piece of advice I gave you the whole time. I feel humbled in your presence. I, I'm not going to presume to know what you need to feel and not feel. This isn't about me as a personality presence. This is an energy and a perspective and an understanding. You're humbled before that. That doesn't require me as a facilitator. You can access that on your own. Sure. So as long as we're clear about that, because I'm not doing a cult here, this is not about aggrandizing my position and status. This is not about genuflection and false appeal, right? To, no, to an no, illusion. Show, I'm here bro. for a limited amount of time, like my uncle, no, and I'm no, out of here with your body. This understanding, this spirit, this energy, this perspective has been here from the beginning of time and will be here when I'm gone. And it's accessible to you and everyone else, I believe. More importantly, I've been shown that to be the case. I'm not special, unique, and different. So whatever's are, humbling bro. in me or about me is also in you and around you and working with you. Get in touch <laughs> with that more and more. Do you think everyone can be like you, Paul? It's not about like me. Everyone can really? live like me if they see value in it. That's a big if. You'd have to okay. see value in the way that I am or the way I live to want to live like me. If you think that the way that I live now is the way that I lived at one point, I did it my way until I became aware of the way on some level. And I went with that and it's been great to me ever since. You just have to conceive of what is the way for you at this time in your life. If I can make you aware of that or remind you of that, I'm all for it. If I am not that person for you, then so be it. I don't have to change lives. I don't have to life coach. I don't have to guru non-guru. If the position is there and available and I'm chosen by the people or individuals as the one and I have what they need, well, then I will give freely, take it and run with it. If not, it doesn't have to be anything more than, than me just talking. So you have to know all of this for you. You have to uh, see something as a parent that needs to change. And you have to believe for some odd reason that I may have a perspective that you could look at uh, and then take to the next level. Those are a lot of moving parts and levels and a lot of ifs and subjectivity there. Yeah. A lot of strong possibilities as well and a lot of hope. A change. I could just take you back to, to, to base principles, right? It's simple common sense stuff that we overcomplicate. Is any woman out there going to be truly for a long lasting time attracted to a man who's not focused on himself, his life, his success, and creating and being something? Let's go back to the beginning of time. Every great man and inventor and builder of society was not focused on a goofy bitch's feelings. They were focused on creating, doing, and being something while they were here that change themselves in the world. That is greatness. So you want to give me the rap like these people do? Like, Hank, all oh, the supermodels are attracted to greatness. Maybe yeah, they are, maybe they aren't. I think I've got a theory, though. That, um, some He's got the, a theory. Uh, I'm not interested in your theories. Theories mean it it's might, unproven. I just spoke something value. that's... Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Please, Theorize for um, us. I've got a theory that some of the probably some of the greatest men who ever lived... I can't give any solid examples, but I could research and find out. Um, didn't weren't particularly good at relationships because they just didn't invest any time into finding out what what women wanted or what made them happy. And because you believe some goofy bitch's emotional appeal that a man came here to make a woman happy, there's your first mistake. 
Man can't make a woman happy beyond what she can make for herself. That's an illusion. So for all the goofy bitches... Happy, right? No, they can't. Hmm. Shocking, I know. No, they can't. No, they can't. If a woman can make a man happy, then a man wouldn't need self-knowledge, self-development, and success, and fulfillment, and actualization, and realization. There's plenty of men with plenty of women who ain't happy. You act like happiness also is this constant state of beingness. Happiness is yeah, when you yeah. sit back. Happiness is when you sit back at the end of the day and you know you're doing and being something beyond the rest. You're, you're authentic to yourself. You're actualizing and realizing you're fulfilled. So you have freedom to be happy. If you ain't living that way, you're rarely, if ever, going to touch happiness. You're talking euphoria. Mm -hmm. That's know, another like quality it. of addiction. Okay. Probably the best one. Probably the most elusive, probably the most detrimental and deleterious, probably the most demeaning and detracting and distracting and disempowering from a man's true purpose and path here. So it feels the best, but it's the worst thing for you. A lot like heroin. How would <laughs> I know? Oh, that's right. Um, I was on heroin as well, so I wouldn't call that euphoria. I don't know. I come, I, it obviously felt good, but I'd, I'd say it was more like going under. The feeling, I, the feeling is like stinking. Yeah, the thing is, Whereas, is that you get shitty heroin. Like another weed. thing that, another thing you did horribly because you live overseas where all the heroin right. is shit, um, and you probably don't know the right people and you don't know the right way to move, so you're probably doing some crap that wasn't what it was supposed to be. So Maybe. when you do good heroin, not that I'm advocating for folks to now, because they'll say, Paulie's telling the young ones to go do heroin when and how great it is. is. When you do good idea. heroin, mm -hmm. uh, it's dopamine rush and euphoria. It's warm blankie season all over your body. It's complete bliss and absence of care for the next right thing you need to do. It's exactly why everyone who's a loser, failure, lazy piece of trash likes to use it. Like me, it's an emotional. It's an emotional painkiller, right? Right. The opiate yeah. of the masses, like religion, right? Dope it's religion, so love with women. The problem with you people is not when you have it. The problem is when you don't have it. That's when the sickness shows itself. Everything's great if you have an unlimited supply of heroin and love from a woman. When you ain't got it, if you can't do and be who and what the fuck you need to be, and you're dope sick. You got a problem, not a solution. Big problem. Either have love or you are love and you share that or you're not. And if you seek that in someone or something else, you're going to lose yourself and have the opposite of love. You're going to have self-hate and self-destruction. Been there. I've been there. I'm going the other way now. Been rebuilding my life from many problems mental illness drug addiction all kinds of shit family abuse neglect so i'm doing my best i used to only smoke weed now didn't do any other drugs you guys like croutons mm -hmm. i like croutons nice and soup you guys in the long nipples or what What's the? I'm taking the like temperature you, on the crowd here, you guys. What are you into? You like you guys, what's the wrong nipple? Sorry. Like over yeah, four yeah. inches. Nah, well, long know. nipples. I like nipples yeah. about you know, six to eight inches long and a little girthy. No, that's so dick. Like on we a asked woman. about nipple. Yeah. Well, that was the whole joke. You... <laughs> I got it. <laughs> mm. I was I was running with it a little bit. It's creative license. No, so I'm gonna fly here. Average, I think average is good. Not too big, not too small. Where's this going, gentlemen? I use the word gentleman rather loosely, of course. Hey, Blue Funk, can you ding your head off the wall real quick? Hmm? Your head a shake. Right. Give your head a shake. Like Just it. bash it against the wall a couple work, times. King. <laughs> I'm gonna take a pad and bang yourself in the head with it real quick. You got one of those like, cast iron hands. Why don't you Not tell him to go back on heroin? <laughs> really round this broadcast out. 
I've got know? some pillows. I've got really some pillows. Really make it so a I place where, where the so chat, hit my Jack, head, yeah, head on the right. Roof. Okay. Where is this going? Let's be real about it. Let's get real for the first time in the last 45 minutes about where this is really going right now. I have no idea where to take it from here, but right. Up, up, up might be a good Funk, let me direction. let me tell you what you ought to do. You ought to record mm -hmm. what Paul just said and listen to it every day for the next 30 days. I challenge you to do what what I just told you. He gave you the game. Listen to him, apply it. And come back in 30 days and you will have change because you have expressed yourself in a different manner. Okay. Sounds like good advice. That probably wouldn't be a bad idea. That we all will do. Like I'm here to learn. Not to be insulted or, or to be demeaned. Fuck's sake. Well, sometimes insult so there you go. He's talcotted. I'm here to learn in the way I choose. And we always know how well that goes. It means right. I'll only accept information that feels good to me and I'll neglect everything else. That's what got you into this problem. So you're not uh -huh. here to learn. You're here to defend I'm, your nonsense. That's I'm a good evident. listener. I'm a good listener. I'm, you're a horrible read, listener. That's why that I Ukrainian read, woman left. I read a lot of books as well, so I can kind of... Not sure how that applies. Pretty quick. When, are to, when are you supposed to be heading out for your uh, trip? The trip. You're a horrible listener because while I was giving you a whole bunch of good game and characterization of self as self, you were trying to get a word in edgewise. True story. What do you think I wasn't listening to that I needed to? Tell I'm me what you've it. tell me what you've remembered here today about self, if anything. Because mm -hmm. I can't teach you anything. I can remind you of some things that I've been reminded of about me through the process of life. The were you reminded of anything here today? Guess. Can I guess? Um, my, You're guessing. Myself. Oh, let's guess because you weren't listening. So now you got to go to guessing, right? The same way if I was a teacher because you said you're here to learn. So I must be. See why I don't play your games? You're here to learn. I'm the teacher. I just spoke for however long. And when I asked you what you learned, you said, I'm going to guess. That's when I leave as the teacher because you really didn't want to learn. You're at the point of guessing because you said you were a good listener, but you didn't show that. Maybe I should be taking notes then because I can't remember every single word there you, you said. Yes. There you, you, do say, you do say I don't a lot. Know. It depends on if you take me, you, all life, right. or what I'm saying seriously at all. If you're just here to learn, but I'm just talking. And also, you don't want to be offended. And also, and there's a list of other caveats, right? I'm sure. Hmm. So, um, can I can I summarize? So, self self-love and my own path and my own goals to success are much more important than my um relationships or how how i how much i try and make the the, the woman of my life happy in so many ways is that right well yeah we're on to something there i didn't necessarily say much more important i said pretty much you need one to have the other it would seem to me as a man I How is that. a man going to sustain a relationship with a woman if she doesn't respect him, who and what he is, what he does, and what he stands for, and how he lives? Mm -hmm. it works his attachment ways, style, right? his it communication works. style, the whole deal. Right? It works both so, ways, right? They say, if she, can't, if she can't show me a higher level of living, then I don't have to show her either. Then we're, then right. we're kind of equal. You no, that yourself, doesn't work dude. that way. Oh. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way because you're a man. At the risk of sounding a bit egotistical, you're not here to be led by women. Do you think that from the beginning of time that men were here to be led by women? No, not necessarily. No. Where have women led anywhere from the beginning of time? Where are they pioneers? Where are they ultimately successful? What have they come up with with some understanding or idea that hasn't been put down by a man first in some sense? You got this is why I go to pimping when in life in the rules of pimping lowest street level game You could argue unsavory unethical do women lead men This is this is the antithesis of creation in the way it's meant to be Why do you want to overwrite creation? Do you think you're doing some virtue signal by doing that? I mean if you could show me results where women are leading themselves and each other and men to some promised land I'll wait but I'll contend the majority of men aren't doing that. The women definitely aren't doing that because they're following the men who are inauthentic corporate males and trying to compete with them and be like them. There's oh, yeah. few leaders in this life in all venues. 
How about and they're usually one, men. One example, um, can I try one? Um, how about Mad Madonna? Is she not a leader of women? Are we really going to have this conversation right now? Madonna, a leader of women to what? Hell and Babylon? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think she's very cool. I think her music rocks. Like you a virgin would. touch for the very first time. You would. <laughs> you would with that look in your eye think Madonna's pretty cool. That sums the whole thing up right there. You have a bizarre look in your eye and, and you would try to even for three seconds tell me that Madonna... Uh, is a leader and she's pretty cool for women. Why and she's she? pretty much a completely demonic entity by all presentments and all results. Well, that's Holly, but that's probably Hollywood's influence. Right. And you idolize own. all the people given to you to idolize who are the antithesis of the creator and creation. You're a child of the lie. You're demonic. So when well, you no, understand no, no. that you lack discernment and awareness of self and the creational dynamics and forces here, you'll easily recognize why you've been so misled so often in your life. Mm, possibly, but I'd, I'd say it was more more demonic to follow someone like, I don't know, um, Marilyn Manson than Madonna. She's much more wholesome, I think. Okay. In her image. Okay. In her music. But am I wrong? I don't know. Are you? Don't think so. Do you even look into anything you say, or are you just here, just talking? No, I'm. I'm making some good points. You think Marilyn Manson's more wholesome and more, more respectable yes. than Madonna? Did I say in that? Music, in the music sphere. Really? Where do we? Where did we, equal, okay, Rob probably. Cleveland might be right here? He might have figured. I thought this guy's just insane and unreconciled. Cleveland seems to think he's purposely trolling. Well, Do you have a horrible relationship with your father? Why is Me. it so dark and dim where you're at, dude? Can you turn a fucking yeah. light on? I can turn the light on if you want. It's, I just prefer it. I just prefer it. This is the leader of women. <laughs> this is the wholesome leader of women. This is Mother Teresa. Oh, Mother Teresa. Mother Mary, God. Who was also apparently a trafficker, but we won't get into the Mother Teresa thing. There she is, I'm leader of women. Ugh, there she usual. is. And she's got a she's got a very uh, interesting look in her eye. See that look? That's the look of a, a woman leader. That look too. That the look of a woman leader. See that one? That's the nighttime look. The dead That's eyes, the, the cold same. eyes, the completely. That barely monarch. looks like the same person. Yeah, I know. That's the leader of women right there. The one with a whole face full of cosmetic surgery who hates herself. Leader of women. She didn't use she didn't used to be so bad women. when she was like 30. Yeah, right. I know. I don't know what Let's forget to about her. what she's turning more and more into as days go on. Let's go back to when she was 30 to substantiate her point. Because I didn't just mm. talk about gradualism, right? Hmm. Hmm. There's leader of women. 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 Either that or can you fill in the blank. You're making you're trying to make the point that it's because she's a woman that she can't be a leader or because Precisely she's you got it. You finally got it. Fucked up. Took a while, but yeah. I know. Fucked up. I'm a narcissistic, egotistical, chauvinistic and, piece of shit. Yeah, I, that's yeah. what I said. Precisely because she's a woman, she's evil. That's what I said. Because I'm John Durka now. You got it. That's a bit extreme. It's extreme because you're, you're either retarded or you're trolling. I thought you were a good you're listener. You're creepy you look like fucking, Johnny Depp dude. as the character Edward Scissorhands. That's never a good look for a woman <laughs> to have to come upon. Like not even Johnny Depp as you twisted like, uh, and bizarre as he looks, but playing Edward Scissorhands. No, oh, thanks. He looks like Tommy's creepy uncle. You look like you do math, dude. I definitely don't do math. Face back on there. You piece of shit. Look at you. You're fucking... What is wrong, what's wrong with your face? Dude? He like, does look skinny. like Tommy a little bit. What do you what, do? do? What's you wrong with my face? Cocaine? 
You no, it's not his face. You're being insulting. You're being in. Stop it. You're being insulting and you're objectifying. It's the windows to the soul that are concerning. It's not the face or the facial structure. He has a striking look to him. You know, he could it's very camera. well be. It's I'm not the used camera. To looking the camera. I'm that, looking that, myself. That, that same look that Slow State has. That same look that Tommy has. You just I'm the camera. I'm looking myself. I'm realizing the camera's up there. It's a broken, then, twisted. I look at the camera. Then bizarre look. And it's exactly what you exemplify. Right. It's not a coincidence to me. Okay. So I'm saying Imagine there's some kind of so hello. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the personal comments. So I'm, I'm it's not, not about, about that. You. There's some kind of a soul issue that I suspect going on with a lot of these folks. They're suffering in their soul. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, if I can just answer the uh, the per the other personal question about my dad, um, no, I don't. I didn't have a particularly good relationship with my father. He wasn't a particularly strong, uh, inspiring kind of character. I mean, he, he looked after us, he loved us, but he, you know, he started drinking and he never really stopped. And um, I don't really respect drinkers, so no. Yeah, I, I, I to, just asked you because because I, I've I noticed to go that my own way. a common thing. In life. I just noticed it's a common thing. Um, what yeah. type of amphetamine? Because, uh, I, mean, you like I wish I did. I wish I, I wish I had had a fucking amazing, strong, brilliant father, but I didn't. So there you go. Yeah, but that's that's not your fault, though, you know? Like, no. I love my father, but he's... Is he's it possible weak. that on some yeah. metaphysical or conceptual level, that's what you're doing here? Why I've done the bit non beta being the best online daddy? Because three quarters of the people who come here have issues with their father and <laughs> with the masculine identity and what it calls out of us and what's necessary and how we meet and our you, obligations. And you feel, that blank, you feel that gap, Paul? Some, I don't know. I don't know. I'm speaking about concepts. I'm asking questions and then I'm speaking about firsthand experience of how I've applied to what it is I become aware of. I can't tell you objectively what I'm doing or not doing ultimately for the individual. I could tell you what I'm doing with myself and what I'm perceiving and my experience, which I do. I cannot claim it to be objectively my role here to help people complete within themselves and their past divisions. I believe the information can, I can potentially facilitate that and have in various ways to various degrees. But, uh, you know, am I the fucking gap in that? The end all be all, the alpha and omega? Hardly, I suspect. You know, I've just done more of the work and the application and can talk from more firsthand experience, it would seem, on some dynamics that seem to work and get results. And again, then you have to make a subjective determination. And to me, saying Madonna is a cool person and a leader of women is far from a subjective determination that I would resonate with. So we're okay, on well, completely different wavelengths of consciousness and awareness. I can accept I'm, I'm wrong about that, but I, it, I've never met her, so I don't really, I don't really know the woman that well. But from what I've seen of what you know, I like her music. I like a lot of her music. Is that? Isn't that enough? That might just indicate that you're gay. I mean, if you really want to get down to it, I don't think I've ever met a man who said that they really love Madonna's music who wasn't gay. I mean, whatever that's, you know, wherever that conversation goes is another conversation mm -hmm. for another time. But if you think I sit around listening to Madonna's music and think it's just great, I don't. That just might be a subjective perspective. It might be relative. So, I mm -hmm. mean, you know, Again, I'm not demeaning homosexuality necessarily. I'm just pointing to a dynamic. You now have a man who I'm saying presents as weak and broken, who tells me their father was weak and broken, who identifies with weak and broken women who are alpha wannabes, but actually betas because they rebuke the truth and strong masculine men because they want to be the dominators and leaders of the house, much like your mother wound up in the position of. So you're emulating and replicating on like three to five different levels, a macro and a micro dynamics, psychologically and sociologically. There's probably a lot to look at there and understand. Sure. And I'm well, sure so there's I'm a sexuality component to it as well. Potentially. There usually is. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not making any objective statements per se. I'm not making any condemnations or judgments. I'm just contending that the more we uncover the subconscious material in who and what we are, look at it 
and, and try to understand it and maybe accept it and work with it, the more we start to find or create a, a more actualized self, if that makes sense. Sure. And, and part of that is understanding how we are similar and how we can be different than our parents and the, 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 the example that we were shown as children. Right. You know. It's it's really just coming to your understanding of how we became the person that we're looking at. What has shaped us, formed us? What do we get too much of, too little of? And how has it caused us to become the character that we are? And I believe through self-observation and application through understanding, one can sort of rearrange their perspective um, and change their consciousness and become a new person, if you will kind of like a born again idea right this is a religious spiritual experience but i don't contend that it's based on jeebus christ and just believing on him you know there may be some examples and some stories and understandings that apply to us that we can take in and walk with and understand and experience but yeah i don't believe that the answer is out there i think it's in here right for yeah. each of us and then all yeah, of us over then yeah <laughs> I agree. Totally agree. How we find our answers is, is different for everybody, isn't it? I mean, we're not all the, we don't all, we're not all built the same. We don't all grow the same, but we can learn from each other. Definitely. We keep an open mind, right? Does gravity right, affect gonna... you? Mm -hmm. yeah, principles affect us all the same. The, the truth affects us all the same. I guess the objective truth, if you can find it, but everyone kind of does have their own, their own lives, their own truth, don't they? According to their own. Yeah, God, God designed man experience. to be man, woman to be woman. Man is a mountain. Woman is the weather. It's just, that's just how it is. That's our natures. Right. Mm -hmm. So just a principle. Yeah. Yeah. Timmy, but we're all kind of different and unique and special. And we all kind of have our own ideas and ways and, you know, Maybe what some people will get it on their own time, their own way, and you know, some people. Yeah. Won't. yeah. You think there's only one way to be then? I don't know. I mean, when you look at the animals, there is. When you look at the beehive, there is. When you look at every other motherfucking place in creation, that is the dynamic. But somehow, with a human being who has an ego and its own sense of self, no, it's exception to the rule. Don't you know? We're all unique and individual and special. Guess it's easier if you we were just lions in the jungle, right? Because we right. wouldn't have the freedom to be so clever to op overcomplicate what is obvious in life. Mm -hmm. Why not just look at what the lion does? As the the male lion, what does he do? Manages his territory, fucking survives, brings fucking meat to the tribe. Yeah, the kids annoy him. He's like, "Get off me! I, I gotta sleep." Okay. Do you see how much time does he spend pampering his woman? Are you okay today? Did you get bit by mm. a fly? Let me go, you know, let me just go. Ah, fuck this the, this perimeter. And the ironically, perimeter. And ironically, and ironically, it's probably precisely because the male lion lives and acts like that, that the woman at some points throughout the year demands sex from him. So much so it tires out the male lion from my understanding. <laughs> It's right. all there if you look at it. It's how you want to choose to interpret it and to accept it. Laws of the jungle. Mm. You want to go tell God? <laughs> like, I'm not. You're going to say you're not an animal. You're, that doesn't apply to you. You're an elevated being. And <laughs> no, no, no. I'm oh, okay. Of course, I'm an animal, but I'm. I've learned a lot, you know, on this journey. Forty-eight. I'm. You know. I've, I've seen a lot of things. I've talked to a lot of different people. I've learned a lot of different. It's amazing um, how great, someone great down there who I guarantee uh, alternative lifestyles, and I'm still, I'm still trying to find my, my niche. I got it. I got it. Could you find it somewhere else, please? I think I'm done here. Utopia. If you're still looking and finding, and you didn't get it here, or you don't think it's here, could you go look for it and find it somewhere else, and then report back to me if you're willing? If not, I don't even need the report to be honest. <laughs> This is not okay. a place for seeking and looking and finding. That's slave cots while his house goes from under him. That's slow state while he can't hang drywall and his bitch is miserable. That's not here. We're not seekers, lost souls, and finders here. 
We're, uh, we're looking at the truth. We're observing it and we're trying to understand it so we can be it and get the results. Well, I can get with that. Can you? I'd like to. I'd like it for you. Awesome. Let's try and get that together then. So for the idiot down there who thinks he's smarter than a lion, I guarantee he doesn't do what the lion does, smart and clever or not, because he's probably a coward. And it's precisely why his females in life don't demand sex from him at some point throughout the year, so much so it tires him out. He's probably someone who tries to demand sex from women who are reluctant to give it. Mm. <laughs> No. So tell me all about how you are so much smarter than the lion, but so much less actualized and realized. You're so clever. I'm just talking. I mean, I'm not you. About I'm talking about death. him down there. Him down right, there. Right, right. There's a chat box yeah. open down there. See that? Yeah. He thinks he's oh, yeah. smarter and more clever than the lions, but can't be like the lions or get their results. And he has opposable thumbs. Lost generation. I've never heard of that one. Nothing about him. I, I got a happy ten, ten. I got a happy ten month old son, and my wife every day is like, "Yo, let's let's get more. Come on, let's do this." And I spend 80 percent of my time working, not wow. at the house, not pampering her. I mean, I do pamper her in that twenty percent of time. I treat her good. Mm -hmm. I give her all my time and attention in those moments, and and we spend time together. But. Uh, uh, other it's than not your priority. She's not your priority. Your priority is your growth, your development, your success as hers should be. Then you share yeah. the rest. I'm hearing that. Yeah, the, the fruits, she benefits from the, fr the fruits. Uh, right. The more, the well, less uh, you prioritize a goofy bitch, the more they wind up benefiting. They need to know their role and their position. Right. That's why you don't need a needy codependent woman who requires you, your time, energy, attention for her success and validation, which is the majority of modern day women. If you haven't noticed, yeah, that's why they make horrible mothers because they're too busy worrying about their time, their energy, their attention. That's again, they, they, they're, they're trying to be like the men so when they wind up having children, they want to go out to the club. They want to live the life. They want to do what they think the little boys are supposed to do that they saw on TV in Desperate Housewives. So they make okay. horrible mothers trying Maybe. to be like a man. My girl's not my girl's not like that though. She is a she's a really good mother and she doesn't go out to clubs. She she's very homely. Very very loyal and faithful actually. She's not typical. That's why I, love I don't so know much. why you're describing a woman based on uh, like, again, you don't understand when you say what you say, it's like, you may as well not even speak because I can't trust your perspective. You've already shown me in various ways that I believe from my perspective, you have a skewed perspective on what's happening, what's going on, how it happened and where it's going. And you've been duplicitous in your report of what's going on, right? So I have no reason to believe your description of a woman is accurate. I have more reason to believe if I meet this broad, I'm going to find out exactly why you're all in the situation you're in. It's going to become clear to me like that. Mm. You might well do, but I, I can. Well, I, give you I my, would bet she's not loyal. I bet she's not faithful because you don't even know what those words mean. I bet you think it has to do with what everyone else's genitals are doing and not doing. Well, no, this is why I talk about the difference between loyal to people, places, and things, or loyal to the soil and the cause. How loyal is she if she's gone right now? She's not gone. She's not fully engaged in the process of becoming in life with you. That's obvious. The, the situation, basically, that's just for you to understand that, that for everyone to understand that the situation that we we had a little fight. Okay, we had a little bust up. In December, the police, she called the police. I got arrested. Now I've got bail conditions. I, I cannot speak to her on social media. I can't text her. I can't walk up a street, anything, because they're worried that I might hurt her again. You don't get no, it, bro. I'm not you don't get her. it, bro. 
Do you think Jennifer would A, call the police on me, B, take out fucking notices on me, C, if the state of ordered something, D, follow what they said? She'd be sucking my dick right now with the camera off telling the state of to go fuck themselves if she was really into me. She'd move heaven and earth to fuck with me. Your bitch is not into you. All signs point to the opposite. She's got protection orders on you and hasn't contacted you and doesn't want to be contacted by you. Mr. Daddy's Blue Funk Talcott. It's the same dynamic. Have you not watched long enough with Mr. Talcott how you men all exemplify the same fucking dynamics? So you're not telling the truth again. You think you okay, know the situation. Bro. You don't. Okay, bro. Okay. Dude, you're she wasting my time, energy, and she attention. Did contact me yesterday. You don't have any answers. Like, it's really, obvious. You oh, believe God. you do. I'm not interested. It's just, it's ripping me apart inside not, not i know it's either. ripping you apart and you're defending it and justifying it and wasting our time energy attention rather than you processing it coping with it moving on and doing and being better and generating better results i'm i'm really trying to move on believe me trying is what happens when you fail to do how do you think I should move on? Do you think I should go with other women? Stop Again, lying to yourself and everyone else. You can start there. Start focusing her. your time. Don't, if you ask me another fucking question and I go to answer it and you talk over me, you're out. I'm getting a headache having to try to fix you and your life. And I don't need to do it. You obviously want me to do it or help you with it, but you won't cop to it. So just figure out which way you want to go with this. Either Paulie might have some answers. You're going to ask me a question and get an answer, process it and try to cope with it, or you're not going to speak to me and you're going to go off and do your own whatever for the rest of the day. I don't need an interaction with you. It's not helping me. It doesn't benefit any of us. You're obviously lying to yourself and everyone else on many levels. If you won't accept that and get in line with the truth, this is not going to go anywhere. Okay. But when you... When I hear you say it, an untrue statement that just isn't true to me, I've got to, I can't let there you. There is no true to you and true it. to me. There's truth and then what you want it to be and don't want it to be. Get it? Mm. The, the grass isn't green because you accept that it is or deny that it isn't. Sure. Well, and love isn't real, I suppose, as well. Uh, love is real if you really love yourself in your life, which you don't. So your well, love with her was not real because she's not there. You have protective orders and she's not interested in contacting you. You're interested in contacting her. So is it real if it doesn't go both ways? She's not allowed to contact me anyway. Bullshit. Women who are real. Women who are women who are real women will do anything at some point. That's what all romantic. You're a romanticist, and I have to tell you about your cult. Romeo and Juliet died together. You forgot she that will, story. She will find so a way. So tell me all about beta male. How your beta bitch who doesn't respect you respects the word of the court more than you and your word and your real love together so much so she's willing to give up your real fake ass love to really follow what the state of says that ain't a real bitch that ain't real love and it's really going nowhere okay if we have to move out of the country if we have to move to different countries just she to get ain't away going from nowhere hey, when's the last time you spoke to her when's the last time you spoke to her well the last time i saw her was uh, December. There you go. What, 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 it's March. Mm -hmm. We're going in April. Mm -hmm. And you really believe that this woman's sitting around pining away for you, hoping you're going to move to another country together after she took out a protective order against you? I think you're deluded. She didn't do, she didn't do She's that. She's probably that already dating police. someone else, if I had a bet. That was the police that did that. You're following her. her, though, so you would know. Even though you were told to stay away from her, you've been following her and stalking her. So you would know. I'm not stalking. I've been observing her. It's not stalking. Does she observe you? Observe me. Yes, she does. Oh, okay. So she just Listen, like walks by and goes like this. Can't can't no, contact I'm, you. Can't no, see you. Online. I did a live. I live right. the other day. Yeah, where he's insulated from you and can leave at any time. I had to ban her, but 
I, you know, she definitely listened to what I, what I had to say. Okay. Hey, I, I really like have faith in this. I think you're on a path here. <laughs> I think I this is going to be great. It, you guys are meant for each other. Twin flames. I'm totally hopeful for the future. Okay. Is that what you wanted to hear? Yes. That's okay. Better. There you go. That's it. Thank All you. the broken hoes want to hear it. They don't want to see it. They want to be lied to. The truth offends them. So I'll take my easy way out. I'm totally hopeful and faithful. You haven't seen her in almost six months. She's made no efforts to contact you. You Three believe months. it's because they said she's not allowed. It's really because she's not into you anymore and probably moving on. If every woman down there told you what I said was true, you probably still wouldn't believe it. So I'm going to let you figure it out and find the truth for yourself your way. Because you may have some Thanks. answers. I don't. I will anyway. I, I will find the truth. I okay. Without you. So Okay. Uh, I'm, I appreciate your fucking. You Has know, she your written you a letter? Did she send you anything? Not yet. Not yet. Well, maybe another six months, right? Because one thing we know about romantics, right? These romantic women and men is, you know, they'll abide by like what the court says and not make any effort to contact their partner and not even write a letter or like have the UPS man drop off a cupcake that says, I love you, baby, or whatever else bullshit you all like to fetishize and obsess about. So I'm totally like. You know, I'm totally confident about this. I was she wrong. Could write, she could write a letter. Yeah, any day now. I hope she kind does. Kind of like when the woman said to me, hey, I'll be back, Polly boy. I'm just leaving. I got to get my head together. And six months later, no contact. Something done, like that, right? And then I found out she that. had a child with someone. <laughs> we've never, we've never written was a letters busy to beaver. each other. As I have with other girlfriends. Um, this is what's so ironic. Men are infinitely more romantic than women. That's why we need boundaries and to prioritize ourselves. We're the ones who go on drugs again and kill ourselves or sit there for years feeling something over a goofy bitch who's already riding someone else's dick. No proof of that. It's not working for you. No proof of that. I got it. I got it. She's probably the type to sit home for six months at a time and get no attention and not have any options. Right, no, and not explore her options. She's totally she's that type of that. But, right, they're usually that way. Yeah, women are totally not driven by attention nowadays. They totally just sit around for six months not trying to be validated or get attention. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Right, I'm sure. She's totally not fucking Rob Cleveland's cousin right now. Don't think that. I don't want no, you to get upset. Think, she's no, definitely not fucking Rob about. Cleveland's cousin's cock, taking it deep into her throat and saying, Daddy, I love you. Totally not. She's sitting at home pining away for you like you are for her. Just wishing that her dream boat would dock again after the protective order is re uh, released, right? After it's lifted. I think we'd love to, to be able to try again and, and try a happy relationship, yes. Right. 100%. You seem like a really happy guy and motivated and, and successful in many ways. Competent and capable, discerning. So I wouldn't see why she wouldn't uh, be like overjoyed to return and get back to that process. Are you still being sarcastic? It's possible. I've been known to do that here. <laughs> you got to figure out when I'm doing what, how, when, why. That's the tough part. What's troubling and puzzling people is the nature of my game. I'm very Luciferian here. Paul Palpatine, Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine. See the hood? Oh, the hood going. It's black. Right, it's cool. evil. He said the same thing about Rob Cleveland's cousin. It's black. It's evil. They gave me that rap one day. Talk. He wears a lot of black. He's got to be Luciferian. He's evil. These are also folks who neglect that the cosmos is black. That the womb is black. Is. These are all the love, light, feminine people who forget conveniently that the womb is black, the cosmos, the mother, the great mother is black. Fascinating. I'm not a nihilist. Okay. Tell me I'm more things you're not. You know what? We didn't do this bit I'm yet. Go over the list. Of, no, I'm, I'm telling you, go over the list of things you're not. I didn't think of that. Not I'm a nihilist. Not. Go on. I'm not I'm not particularly violent. Never have been. I've always been right. a quite peaceful, um, almost like pacifist. I'm not a total well, pacifist. I believe that. I will be. I will. I believe that. Go on. Defend myself if I have to. I got gotcha. you. I said I believe you. You're a pacifist, submissive person. I totally agree. Go on. <laughs> what else are you not? Because I'm very violent here. Can't you tell? I'm constantly doing harm. There's bloodshed everywhere. I'm as violent as they come online. 
You're mentally you know? violent. I'm violent. I'm not passive here. Right? I'm not a passive. You're not passive, passive. but you're, you're you are aggressive. Oh, I'm active. I'm far that's from passive. passive. I'm completely that's active your, and activated. That's your personality. I've 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 seen that over and over, and that scares me. All right, back little, to the top but, ten things that you're oh, not. Yeah. I like this. I like this. This is a good bit. Okay. I'm not. I'm. What else am I not? I'm not a pedophile. Never okay, that's always good. That Number three on the top ten list of things he's not. Not a mm -hmm. pedophile, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not. I'm not negative. I, it's really hard to think about things I can't be because I'm just. I'm always. Would you I'm say you're someone who sees the highest around. good in everyone and everything? Yeah. Yeah, there's your to. problem. I knew it. I got you and Talcott on the exact same problem, and that's why you're exactly the same way and have the exact same set of circumstances. I knew I'd get I'm to not, the bottom of it. I tricked you there. I'm not, I know, asked I'm you to not, go over the list idealist. of things you're not in order to antithetically find out who and what you were. It's an inverse right. logic, thing, right? It's like okay. almost deductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. So by you telling me what you're not, we found out what you are, a Talcott. I already said that an hour ago. I'm pretty good at this game. I've watched him a few times. I don't think I don't really see the comparison. I, I don't. Uh, you I just told me his tagline. I see the highest common. love and light and good in everyone. That's the rallying cry of a fool, a dupe, a gullible, naive person who regularly is their own undoing. That's it. Case closed. Do you, do you I don't not know think what to prescribe you for this, but I, I that's the diagnosis. We got it. We got everything we need here. Think, Did you get that, Timmy? Did we get everything? We, we got it. Okay. Yeah. He's, do you not believe yeah, we either. should? see the try and see the best in people rather than the worst absolutely not absolutely not no that's a gateway to suffering seeing only the best in people and ignoring the rest that's no, exactly no, what ignoring. got you into hello it's mm. exactly what got you into this goofy relationship with this broad you saw all the great shit and ignored the red flags that's the bane of all monogamy and modern day marriage and relationships you honeymoon phased yourself right out of existence. Great job. Well, I thought we were going somewhere. I mean, no, we're having a really it's good not time. real. Is this real? No, it's not. She was looking at it, is, but me it's and not making me great, healthy meals. Is that is that God bad? damn it, Paul? Oh my God, fuck. Rob Cleveland was right. This guy's beyond trolley. He's insane. He's talcotted out. <laughs> just wasted. I mean, did I really waste it? I made some great points. It applies to all of us, but let's ignore that. Wait, are we ignoring that? No, we're seeing the highest good in everything. Right. I only do that when it comes to me. Okay. Let's be real. So, right. For instruction, me then, never system. mind about me mm -hmm. and what you think my psychology is like and everything, but instruction. What what do what do you think I should Stop do? Stop being a bitch. Pra practically. Start there. Right there. Did you hear that? Did you get that? I'm an intel yeah, guy. I had a guy here before, U.S. Army, intel guy. He had no intelligence. That was the irony of it. Intel is short for intelligence, and he had none of yeah. that. I said, sure, how could you be in the intel field and not have any intelligence? Said, I didn't get an answer. Is, what you just said is don't be a All right, I'm going to start with number one. My intel don't that I've gathered, bitch. stop being a bitch. That's where you can yeah. start. Proper yeah. instruction motivates people. Stop acting, no, thinking, mean. feeling, and living like a bitch. But that doesn't make it. That doesn't make sense. Uh, that's the thing. How much more simpler could I make it? Really? I was never, I've never muddled myself on being a bitch, whatever that that's means. That's what a bitch says. That's what a me. white girl from Spokane says. I see the highest good in everyone. When she touches down at JFK airport, she's going to get raped, robbed, set up, tricked out of position, pimped and hoed on, cut the games. That's what the average voter says. I see the highest good in my candidate. And that's how they get tricked into slavery and genocide. You're acting and talking and behaving like a goofy bitch. Even women don't do that. Well, it's hard. I think it's hard to see much good in politicians, to be honest. I don't vote oh, for any of that. So we're going to see the highest either. good in the Ukrainian whore, but not in Joe <laughs> Biden. How dare you? <laughs> It's not you a piece of whore. This is why I don't like you people. I How only you, see the highest good in Joe Biden and Billy you know, and the rest of them. Because I'm tired of well you complaining about who you put whore. in. Shut up. Bullshit. Tired of you. Tired of you. Done. I'm whore. over. It's like talking to a broken, goofy bitch. And that's why I don't deal with them. I don't fuck them. 
I don't deal with them. I don't want them around me. Care how hot they are, what they think they have to offer. It's a drain on me and my existence. Thanks. Well, I'm sorry about that. I don't want to have to constantly explain to a goofy bitch why not to see the highest good in everyone and ignore the truth. It's raining and frustrating. And it's insulting to everyone's intelligence. Like you can't figure out what the fuck I'm saying. You don't want to know. That's the bottom line with most slaves and cowards. You don't want to know. Can I just answer my, somebody in the chat? Uh, no, you can't answer someone in the chat. Because you can't even use, answer me properly. Why would you take fluoride. something you can't do with me and extend it outward? Take the show on the road. I don't use fluoride toothpaste. Um, I know it's dangerous. So That's please. perfect. It doesn't. Another thing he doesn't do on the list of things he's not. He's not a user of fluoride toothpaste. That's right. Are you going to put not it. a man on that list anytime? We're getting low down the list. I asked you for things you're not. Not a man no. completely. Is that no, going to be on the list? Man. Of course not. Because you only see the highest not. good in yourself and everyone else. Yeah, that's the, op that's the optimizing way. That's, that's the way well, it should be. Well, that was your father's list, number one. You already said it. Not a man. Does the apple fall far from the tree, usually? Yeah, I didn't learn, I didn't learn that from him. I learned that from right. other men. You learned how to think and live and act like a bitch from a goofy bitch. It's called your mama. That's why I got little to none of it in me, because I didn't have one. Okay. See? Most of you men have absentee fathers or fathers who are corporate males, and you had your mama bring you up into a man. That's why you think, feel, see, and act like one. So Raised by a bitch. You weren't loved the way you should have been. Not interested in you getting into an analysis of how much love I needed that I didn't have. I'm also not interested in going into a victimhood state of beingness. I have everything and am everything I need at this time. What's the sense of talking about a past I ain't living? Sure. But that's interesting. But but that 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 says a lot, doesn't it? Because I I I was lucky enough to to get all the love and and cuddles and and support yeah, that how'd that turn out? How'd it turn yeah out? you had the well, benefit of exactly. having a tyrannical father and devouring mother that completely I rebelled twisted I you re and i right. fucking rebelled okay. when i was 17 and i got into drugs and sex and all right just because you had no man and you're struggling to find your that i wasn't going to be like them right but it's it's kind of uh it's kind of interesting how things turn out, isn't it? It's such a great start to, I don't know what. You think that a man typically from the beginning of time said to another man, you didn't get enough cuddles as a young one, as a lad. You think that if I'm sorry, maybe this is Americana. Do you think if we went back to John Wayne, no matter how loving and caring and compassionate he was with women and children, do you ever think you would hear him say, you didn't get enough cuddles to another man at the saloon? I don't think so. So maybe you got a little bit too much cuddles, so much so it's created a wall and insulation around you to where you can't see and feel reality. See, I got so little cuddles, I was forced into reality and the truth way too young. I'm doing a pain speech now. I was raised in the dark, molded riot. Daddy's blue frog. By the time I saw the love and light and cuddles, it was only blinding to me. I am necessary evil for you. We're obviously very different people, but... I had to grow up too fast. You haven't grown up yet, sir. Sir. Sir, I had to grow up too fast. You haven't grown up yet. I'm still growing. I know. I know. Cuddles. Kill him, Jimmy. After I cuddle him. <laughs> Do you want to cuddle, Paul? I know. That's what this is all leading to. Really, you don't even okay. want that bitch back. You want a big, strong, large, tough, masculine, powerful oh man. <laughs> rugged to just really cuddle you and love on you the way your daddy didn't. You seek the love of a man here with me, don't you, son? <laughs> Kind of, I know it would kind of be nice, yeah. I yeah. know it would. You'd like that.
Yeah, come on yep. close to daddy. Get up on daddy's lap. I'm going to cuddle you a little bit, all right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good boy. Come get some love and cuddles. Your metaverse oh. daddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I have to funny. kill you. You understand that, right? When a man cuddles <laughs> another man like this, that's what happens directly after. That's what your mama never told you. Someone's got to die now. Sorry, it has to be you. I have obligations. You understand. You're going to murder me? Well, metaversally, of course. Okay. I think a beheading is in order. <laughs> I can't have you as a living witness and testament to the cuddling that we just did. So now I'm going to... I'm not going to do it because I'm watched consistently, but I'm going to ask Timmy to take you out back and perform the necessary ritual i'm not embarrassed you gotta get in the car I'm going for a ride that felt good timmy i gotta tell you as it oftentimes does the little cuddle session right before the killing it does feel good right but it's important that we you know stay in alignment stay balanced o'shea would be proud thoughts uh, where to begin. Uh, I mean, uh, I gotta tell you, this is a lot like how my prison time goes. As Snafu Snaps has alluded to, many others. Mm -hmm. Starts off with a general conversation. Sometimes I have to, you know, get a bit animated. Sometimes, usually, the other person starts crying. Uh, and then I hold them and I cuddle them. And then, shortly after, they cease to exist. Hmm. A fascinating process. Yeah. Some would he, say he I got delivered the them from their suffering. He got the cuddles he was looking for, though. Right. He got everything he needed shortly before the beheading. I gave him, some might say, what he never would have gotten anywhere else with anyone else, not even his own father. So if he True. could die a complete man, fulfilled, we've all done our duty, I suspect. It's a thankless job. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, well, like they say, if you're good at what you do, never do it for free. Thank you, Ian Clark, for your gifting because you're extended friends and family. It's about 80 short of a therapist hourly rate. Thank you. Uh, right. And at least 200 short of an executioner's hourly rate. So I'm very underpaid here. I'm not paid at all. Right? But, you know, I'm a humble man. I live within my means. It's just merely off of gifts from extended friends and family, of course. And I do my due diligence and perform my obliged duties best of my ability so important it's important to know the art of living equally as much as the art of dying equally as much as the art of killing some might say Timmy once told me that. Timmy speaking Robert. of killing and uh, strong women this uh this guy was talking about women leaders uh one woman leader I super like is a. Uh, from from Vietnamese history, actually, they're called the Trung sisters, and uh, they were wives, and they were they were just solid wives. And then their husbands were killed in battle, and they were real pissed off about that. And then they inspired the armies and went and destroyed the enemy and took over like a small part of China for for three years. That's that to me. That's 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 a woman, you know. Got some power and some feisty in her, you know. It's loyal. Yeah, well, they have to have an equal, uh, complementary, non-opposing dynamic to draw inspiration and empowerment from, and that's where I think we're lacking on the male side. Right? Yeah. You're not going to inspire women to be like that if you're not a man in kind. I think that's the generalized theme here. One Wait, so don't just the other. Yeah, so don't just cuddle them and, and kiss them and just, no. like, give them cupcakes all day. No. 
They never cheat on you with the guy who buys them shit and cuddles with them. The guy who acts like Wait, me. I don't want to break your heart. Flowers no. every day and, and then like call them and be like, are you okay? And and then just be her. Well, I mean, it's conditional. It's conditional, right? It's like, you know, you 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 want a woman to either fashion herself or to help her fashion herself as a competent, capable, successful person in all venues. So it should not require too much of any of your input. If it is, it's pretty straightforward. Hey, you got something that I want or need in the sense of understanding. Could you give me a perspective? You should be able to look at that and process it, work with it, and get their own results. So I think there's a lead, guide, protect, uh, in a sense, obligation. Uh, but that doesn't begin and end where a woman's emotional wants and needs are. Oftentimes, that can be deceptive. I mean, you can argue it back the other way. Man, I don't think that there's any mutual exclusion. I think that these are, are, are generalized dynamics that this understanding can work for both sides or against both sides. Wait, so I mean, in a similar fashion, a woman shouldn't need to constantly contact a man and figure out if he's okay, if he needs anything, if she can. I mean, you might argue that is more of her place in a sense man is doing and being something her place is to facilitate and support that movement yeah. right to care for that for that man and, and his movement right but as far as the the emotional codependency and validation or invalidation i don't think that that's healthy and beneficial behavior right it's called self-esteem for a reason yeah you got to hit break and slave news to satisfy the doc and then i'm out of here timmy all right brother at least tomorrow. Let's do it. U.S. fight off Houthi drone attack in the Red Sea. They're still at it, huh? I haven't checked in on <clears throat> proliferating this World War III scenario. I'm excited. Yeah, a large yeah. scale attack. By hey, look at this guy. This guy looks incredible. Right He's got down that down look in his eyes. I bet he brings his woman teddy bears and flowers right before he kills her and rapes her. Only with nine tell. Well, Erica, those rebels continue to go after Wait, ships. nine. <laughs> warnings from the Biden administration. <laughs> and on Saturday, U.S. warships shot down at least 28 different drones in just a matter of four hours. So those drones were launched by Houthi rebels, an Iranian-backed militant group. I'm a sixth rebel. By U.S. and coalition forces. It's important to note that just days before this well, incident, we shot down the all the drones that came up on missile channel. <laughs> at a commercial carrier, killing three sailors. The rebels have been targeting shipping in the Red Sea since the war between Israel and Hamas began and as a way to put pressure on Israel and allies to stop the war in Gaza. Military officials just back from the region told Congress Iran is not second guessing their support. Iran is undeterred in support to the Houthis. They're undeterred in their support to um, Hezbollah, their support to Hamas. It's pretty expensive. Each missile fired in the Navy, by the Navy, I should say, in this attack costs more than $2 million, while the drones cost a few thousand dollars. President Biden's new budget request seeks $850 billion for defense spending. Yeah, loot so it all. Central Command Office loot it all, no burn it down. Vessels or commercial ships were damaged in the attack. And meanwhile, U.S. military planes dropped more than 27,000 meals and 26,000 bottles of water over Gaza <laughs> just this weekend alone. In studio, Talia Cunningham, Fox 31. I tell you, thank you. Fuck, man, that's so great. Anyways, tonight, the family. Fucking breaking news is always so like inspiring. All right, it's that time, Timmy. I'm gonna go eat something, and I'm gonna give you guys some bonus content. This nice. is where thirty of the viewers went. Okay, thirty of the viewers went here. Thirty more went to Pathetic Warrior. I suspect that's why we're a little light tonight. So. I want to give you a peek into what's really going on on the metaverse, where the real action and value and power is. It's not with me. I'm deceptive, manipulative, abusive, cult-like, narcissistic, and egotistical, as we know. We've been informed. Are responsible to an extent? This, well? yes. this is a council yes. right now. Yes. <clears throat> but here's the question that Jack was saying, and I, I would agree with Jack on that, too. Is, is that the see the vision guy? Let's just take Joel Steen, for example. Great speaker, great looks like a great person, uh, dresses very well, speaks very well, and uh, speaks about God and Jesus all the time. And people believe them as one of the best, I guess, churches in, in, in the nation. Now, do you think 
because he's been exposed that just my opinion that he's fake do you think he's using any witchcraft any magic any things like that to actually get knowledge or to be a part of the entity that actually gives him that knowledge so he can be good at it and if that's the case then who's getting fooled if somebody has that advantage and others don't joe Osteen does not speak for jesus he speaks for guy. joe Osteen. Mm -hmm. he is not a minister of jesus mm -hmm. i look at uh, people's fruits of the spirit carrot and yes, he does look well-dressed, well put together, well money. But when you see all of the um, the controversies that go around his church that have always been surrounded by his church, I have to look at the fruit of what you're producing. So you're that right. has always been a red flag to me. Well, maybe someday he will be a minister, but today mm -hmm. he is not yet. But what's the, what I'm saying, he is claiming he's a minister and he has such a huge followers. Yeah. And his church is always packed. So people actually believe him. What I'm saying is. Yeah, the person with the most money is the most godly. Is there, it's not, there. I don't think it's the most money either. I think it's more spiritual, more witchcraft, more uh, spells and stuff like that that people are getting yeah. into to get that um, knowledge. All that bell stuff and all that that is just childish silly toy that's all that he's stuff. talking about you know I, I heard him say you know is there some kind of background witchcraft magic thing if there is it's a toy it's a child it doesn't no there's what makes you so certain Wes? <laughs> yeah. what makes you so certain well, the magic thing is right in front of you right now. It's TV. Well, that's your that's your narrowed definition. You've provided an example, but it's not limited to just that. I mean, Marilyn Manson told you God is in the TV. But <laughs> what I wanted to explain, I, I just wanted to get this out here because it's necessary for the conversation. It's to add context. The Bible says to give 10 percent of your greatest fruits. Mm -hmm. Not 10% of your money to your church. That's not what it says. It's it's your fruits. So it goes back you to what's been anonymously without putting your name on. What did you ask? Look, look, in about seven years, I'm going to be in Megiddo with 144,000 children. Where Holy are you going to be? This guy's still on this? Wherever uh, God wants me to be? Right. Yes, good okay. question. Yeah, God is speaking me. You might actually beat Talcott in the delusion meter. Oh. So I have failed Jesus. I have done magic. I have oh, done wizardry, sorcery, and witchcraft. Mm -hmm. I have failed you every time I did. Every time I watched too much TV, I did magic. I failed you. Every time I smoke a cigarette, that's a drug, without a doctor's prescription, I failed you. And every time but I would... If, if I would try to sell a prayer or sell my words from Jesus, I would be doing Vision. wizardry and I would fail you. And if I were sluggish with the Holy Spirit, I'd fail you. That's witchcraft. So Jesus showed me what I am to him when I am like that. I okay. failed Jesus doing magic, wizardry, sorcery, and witchcraft. And he showed me I'm like a circle of gold and silver that is rusted and it's made only for cutting it's not made for any other thing and it's but that? I think it's and it's spinning by itself without any machine making it spin and that spinning in the vision jesus showed me means i fail you doing magic wizardry sorcery and witchcraft and when i fail you i fail jesus and he is god Wesley, okay. you're 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 you're. I I don't I don't know how to say this without offending you. So yeah, I, I'm, I agree. I'm, you need you need to understand that there is a difference between Jesus and God. That's all that I do want to say. There is a difference. Okay, and I got another question for Wesley. You keep saying that it's 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 witchcraft or whatever. If a doctor didn't prescribe it. Uh, to it's, my sorcery. it's sorcery. Okay. If I so, use a drug, 
without a doctor's prescription. I, I got a question for you. That's what I'm asking you. Most doctors are pushing. That's my knowledge, my opinion. Nothing. We're not giving any advice on anything in terms of medical. My opinion on that is most doctors will push what they're told to push. They're all in on it. What are you talking about? Most of them are. Well, Same thing with pharmacy. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't want to speak from imagination and fables. Well, then uh, just speak facts. The symbol well, for pharmacia is on the bathroom and statue. That's facts. That's facts. It's on the statue. Are you a doctor? No, I'm not a doctor. Uh, the the doctor is the 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 pharmacia is Satan's dick, dude. It's on, it's on the statue, man. That Wesley sell a drug more than other drugs for his business. Is is that what's happening to you, Terry? Well, maybe I missed the question, but. I know you were asking Tark. What I, I want to know to you, since you take the the definition requires a prescription by a doctor, what qualifies a doctor besides the state? Yeah. Look, I don't. You, I don't want to serrate the circles on the circle saw that are spinning around. But these kinds of uh, in depth things are really just. Like serrations on those circle saws in the vision. Well, Wesley, the reason I'm bringing it up is because I think you're saying things that don't uh -huh. make sense. Well, I'm not saying if the doctor tells you, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm saying, you know, if you've got diabetes and the doctor prescribes for you insulin, don't stop taking it. But if you're using, okay, but Wesley, that's the ways of the world, and what you're suggesting is that God's definitions definition of wizardry apparently is reliant upon a state authorizing uh, a title of doctor onto another and i'm suggesting wesley actually you know what this is probably just a side side thing from what you were getting at we don't even have to continue it sure. well i like so i find it using drugs without a doctor's prescription Okay, but then if you're going to hold on to that, define a doctor. I agree with Jack, 100%. And a tablet while you're at it. And the pharmacists. They're all in on it. Don't think they're not. <laughs> yeah, you got it, Wesley. Wesley, has anybody <laughs> understood the vision? You've been telling it for a year now. That you have your 144,000 now? I know. What's well, up with that, too? Yeah, you're stuck on it. Well, we it's in the Bible. The um, Wesley, and to bring it back, I found it interesting that you brought up all the times that you fell, Jesus. And I think as humans, we tend to automatically go to the negative. But we can also, even now in this moment, we are pleasing him and speaking about him and in talking about him and in encouraging one another. So I just wanted to bring balance back that it is easy to name all the times, but it also needs to be ready to, to say all the times I've pleased him. Jack, I don't, 12 tribes times 12,144,000 1, first fruits. But the way that the Bible describes it is these are pure individuals that have not participated in intimate activity, if you will. And they also are from the East. It's very, very necessary to know the way that the words are used as well as what the words mean. And I'm not picking on you, Wes. I'm, I want you to know that. I care about you, dude. You know what I'm saying? I want you to know that. I'm not here to offend you or to argue or anything. I just want you to know that. All right? Because things can be interpreted several different ways. Life. <laughs> Life is, well, it is an interpretation, is it not? I want Goblin to be my neighbor and be my homie that I <laughs> hang out with. It's going to be okay. That'd be interesting. <laughs> That'd be interesting. But Jack, Jack, that was my kind of point. Like, you know, do you blame the host more or the audience? Just take, for example, and I'm not picking on Wesley again, I'm just saying my opinion. I believe his discernment is not is as good as he thinks it is. And that's not in any way I'm disrespecting you, Wesley. Oh. And if that's the case, 
a lot of people may have the same thought process. Doesn't that also put the audience under the host and the host is more responsible for the language they use? I'm going to be in Megiddo with 144,000 children in about seven years. Whoa. Where are I, you going to be on that day? I thought we uh, just whatever covered God this. wants me to be. Yeah. Whoever God wants us to be. We're, see, we're here in the moment. Jack talks what's about your, that. Be in the what's moment. What's your point? Wesley, what's your yeah, fucking uh, point? Yeah, yeah, Timmy, good question. What's the point here? I just asked your question. Where are you going to be? We don't know well, where we're going to be. I'm yeah. curious how you claim to know the future. And is that seven date, seven years from today, seven years from yesterday, seven years from, from when? Just what? a rhetorical question. Okay. okay. But it's, it's based with a presumption as well. Um, Wes, and you know what, Wesley, I like you. You are an interesting character. You really <laughs> are. I, I admire you. You've, you've your strength, confidence. You've been willing to share some stuff that you got to admit. Some of the stuff you've shared is a little out there, right? And um, but you've at least kindly, consistently, you're here sharing your faith, and I can respect that, Wesley. In, uh, indeed. What's in your notebooks on your bookshelf, Wesley? <laughs> there is something interesting to notice, Jack. Skin of copper and hair of wool. God. Okay. Meaning a fair to darker complected individual. If this man's claim, claiming to be with 144,000 people, it's 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 worth noticing. Mm. But does 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 anybody follow you today, Wesley? No. Today you are first, and I am last. I am definitely not you. first. <laughs> those that are first will be last, and those that are last will be first. Is what he's saying based today. On, he based is on last. what? The based Bible. Scripture. He based that off of scripture. What about his life? His actual ninety years on on this realm. Does he have something? Wesley, to you're offer? ninety. You're not ninety, Wesley. Did Timmy exaggerate? Whatever. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, Timmy. I mean, I mean, Rod. You know who Roger Bannister is? The guy who was the first one to run the four minute mile. Did he? Do you think he sat around going in seven years? I'm gonna run the four minute mile. Where are you gonna be? He just fucking trained and then <laughs> did it. And then other people after him was like, "Oh shit, that's possible. I can also run a four minute mile." Now, now high school kids run four minute mile. If you had like 80 years on Earth, Wesley, what did you accomplish already? What results did you get? And who's following you based on that? Or are you just completely delusional? Both. Is Possible. So Wesley is him training. I don't have the answer for your question right in the split second. Sorry. Something has led him to believe this, and that's what I'm interested in. And regardless, and and <laughs> and regardless, if he is running a four minute mile, he's training for whatever he's preparing for in seven years, and part of that training is talking about it and spreading it. So regardless of if you think it came from a delusional book, it is obviously a book that he studied very hard and he takes very serious and that can't be discredited from him. Was you know, about time. Uh, gosh. Hmm, 21 years ago, 20 or 21 years ago. I was uh, really bad off. I was smoking crack in an alley and homeless in the city of Chicago. And it was really bad. You know, and I'd go to a fancy restaurant. I'd stand outside the window and draw a cartoon, a caricature of a group of people at a table in the window. And they, I'd catch their interest and they, I'd show them the drawing and they go, wow, yeah, that's funny. How much you want for it? And then I'd make 20 bucks and then I'd run you know, seven blocks away and buy my crack cocaine. And then I'd hide somewhere in an alley and then I'd smoke the devil's dick. And, and then I'd get blow my mind. Just for, it felt great, but it was destroyed. 
And one night, I walked out of the alley, and I leaned a, at a bus stop. And there's an old man, I mean old. And he's sitting there eating uh, leftovers in a, in a to-go plate. And I looked at him. And I said, you're Noah, huh? And he looked at me. And then I reached in my pocket where I had a plum. And I took the plum out of my pocket. And I stretched forth my hand. And he picked the plum up out of my hand and he ate. And he never said a word. And I walked away. A week passed. And I'm at this fancy restaurant on State Street in Chicago. And it's 3 a.m. And all the revelers are getting their omelets to fill their drunken bellies. And I'm drawing the drawings in the window. You know, it's cold outside. And I go sit on the curb. There's that old man again. And I mean, he looked. Old, like hundreds of years old, but his skin looked really healthy, and he was wearing burgundy pants. And in the back of the pant leg was like a slice, like a, a number seven or something like that. The back of his burgundy pants on his left leg. And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he said, "You're anointed." And then he got up and walked away. And that was Noah, the man who built the boat that Jesus told him to build. And everyone outside the boat was partying and saying, you're crazy. You're building a boat. You're insane. Are you on your meds, Noah? You know, and he built, you know, and it took him a long time to build that big square park. A long time. They had to. They had to, 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 to mine stones and break it into to, 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 to powder and then build fires enough to make the metal, to make the tools, to make the nails, to make the axe, to make the saw. To, you know, they had to build the tools out of nothing. And then they had to thaw all those trees and then they had to coat them with that, 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 that black gook. Wesley? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you know, where was, where was, where's the point? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you so did, so is this when you stop doing crack? Right. Oh, I've never touched that stuff in 12, 13 years. Well, okay. when you when when he said you're anointed, how did your life did your life change at that moment? Did anything change? And and what made you think he was Noah? Like, what in your spirit brought the Noah to you? That's, um, you know, that's a mystery to me, too. I just knew. Okay. No doubt about it. Well, when you were anointed, did, did you feel something? Did no, something no, change? There was no feeling. Oh. There was no elation to it. Nothing at all. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Jack, so Jack, my, point you is this. my point is it. this. There's a wheel in the middle of the wheel, the color of barrel. And it's going to make a fire enfolding in itself. And it's going to happen in Chicago. No, it's an ophanim and it's an angel. And when that happens, you're going to that's hell begins that day, and you all are going to lose everything you have for it not was. telling the vision that Jesus told you that. Well, you've said that's God my bless you. hey Wesley, that's I appreciate you, you're but you're gonna lose it all because you won't tell the vision of the vision. Well, you're you you have come to that conclusion, and um, unfortunately, he's correct. 
Hmm. But he he is correct on if you Am don't. Am I gonna have to go over there and break it to these people that this guy's care? basically just wizard with a full head of gray hair? Done it. That's my. He's question more likely to be him. sick or dead in the next seven years saying, than with 144,000 people. To Am I gonna have to be the bad guy? And thinking that we haven't done our work, or you you can judge our faith. I'd like to follow up conversation with you at some point. Wes. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm telling you, if you don't tell the vision of the valley, you are going to lose everything you have, and that's all there is to it. You don't okay. get a choice about it. All right, so that is going to happen when seven years when you're when you're with the hundred forty four thousand or Let's what? See. I mean, Jesus it's not today, Christ. right? Jesus it's not today. 21 years ago saying it is time. Okay. So it's been 21 years. The second coming has been a 21 year period of time. But you're convinced that seven more years is where you're going to be. I'm, I, know, I, I know that there's going to be a very bad boom in Chicago. Very mm -hmm. bad boom. I've seen the bad boom. Okay. No one knows the time. I not even know time. when, but I know it's soon. And did right. you say so last year, you, seven years? It was seven years last year? He said that? Well, yeah, this guy's been saying the same thing for a year now. He, you said seven years I, last year. I've been saying no, that. No, again, Cynthia. Wait. Nobody knows I, the I, Nobody I, knows the yeah. hour, the minute, the time, the day. Nobody knows that. Not even the angels in heaven know that. So when people tell me they know, I. But I you I, don't want to blend. You want to mix. Okay. Do what now? What did you say? I'm sorry. Mince onions instead of blend? You want to, You don't want to blend. You want to mix. What are you talking about, dude? I'm lost. <laughs> oh, I'm, he's I'm saying really I don't want to. He's saying I'm not he's trying to blend he's, with he's, him. He's scared I'm, to I'm use the word. Yeah. Why yeah. is he not using the word, man? Egypt, Egypt was judged, Egypt, and, and the solar Egypt, eclipse Egypt. will be on Little Egypt in the exact Egypt. middle. Carroll, Illinois, bro. Egypt. I understand what you're saying. Refusing God when he appears to you and tells you to do something, and you say, no, I'm not going to do it. Well, why you don't do do you do what God tells you to do today? It's not and yesterday and tomorrow. Easy for you all. Sad okay. you all. All right. Thanks for the warning, Wesley. So, um, I. <laughs> <laughs> the voice for the voiceless, Jack. You have done great today. <laughs> I love you guys. I'm sincere. I, I, I've, I've said all. I've said all I need to say. I'll, I'd like to listen Thank to you, you all. Wesley. Before, Thank you. But I will. You know what, Thank Leslie? You, what's in your notebooks in the back there on your shelf? What all do you got? A picture written? of the vision of the back. Beautiful. Wrote. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. The, the, this Wesley is the man that says it's not witchcraft if doctor prescribes it. When 90% of the whole country is on medication that most likely they don't need because of the pharmaceutical is pushing it and doctors. I don't get that. My opinion, again. I actually don't think I mean, I, I guess Wesley may have left. I didn't take him off, but um, I don't Not feel he's being made fun of, but we are trying to understand, and admittedly, I'm not getting a lot of sense. I mean, it's, I'm seeing yeah. confusion. Yeah. No, but, I'm not making fun of him at all, uh, Jack, no. just to make sure everybody understands. I'm just, I was shocked by that answer, and I was just saying it again, because we all know a lot of, you go anywhere to a doctor, they'll give you pretty much a lot of stuff. I had three back surgeries. They gave me so much medication I didn't need. They gave me uh, like Neuron, 3,600 milligram a day Did that I didn't three? need. Three back surgeries, yes. Three back fusions from working out and doing a lot of exercise in my life. Oh my gosh. So when he says doctors and, and, and prescription, man, I mean, I'm not saying some people don't need it, and I'm not saying some doctors are not honest, of course, 
but most of them are pushing what they're, uh, you know, by the state or whatever. Yeah, because he was around when, when like the first like uh, vitamin like was invented, like nineteen fourteen. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Stop it, Jack, Timmy. Is he nineteen I'm or is joking? I'm being Jack. serious. I don't know. I'm just fucking like I'm like half joking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I figured. What, what's up? Do we do we have any verification if diabetes existed two hundred years ago? Mm. That I do not know. Mm. Good question. Figure out what happened today on a different part of the the realm. Hmm? You don't even know what's going on. It's hard. To, oh, it's hard to really know, right? Like what the hell's going on anywhere today? Excuse me. Amen. That is actually yeah. one of the humbling parts I realized about this life. It's hard to know what happened in the past. It's hard to know what is true, and and even today, we're limited by what we can know as far as what's going on in the rest of the world. So because of those uncertainties, that's where I found it helps to have faith, right? Mm. Just to kind of say, well, fuck it. God, it's it's in your hands. Um, I trust you've got it, and I'll figure it out from here. I'll figure my part out. That's but, the best part about life, Jack. Mm. You're speaking facts, man. Learning how, learning what we can, what we can control. And what we cannot control mm. that is well that's individual maturity <laughs> individual mm -hmm. development learning what we can control and what we can't and i think there's something pretty amazing i mean we st started down this way earlier i do think there's a lot of evidence for the world looking worse and i see a lot of evidence that the world is looking better and I keep trying to focus on the better part because that's where I want to grow. Indeed. Okay. Jack, I got a question for you. I, I don't disagree with you, but I kind of do. But, like, you know, let me tell you why. Uh, I seen a video, and it's hard to find these videos, but if you look hard enough, you can, that uh, China is already, like, testing this in their own country where they have everybody on the social uh, score – and they don't need no money, no wallet. They got a chip in them already. And anywhere they go, anywhere they go, if they got to use the bathroom, they have to put their face in, in front of the face recognition thing they have for them even to get toilet paper. And then when they go back home, they have a fence that has wire on it. It closes and they're put in there. They can't get out. Anywhere they go, they have face recognition to get on the bus. It's already been done in China, and they're working on it over there first because it's more of a communist country. So when you say, am I hopeful the world's going to get better? Yes, but it's not looking that way because they're moving that movement to a lot of different countries little by little. They're just doing their testing in certain countries. And that's why sometimes I would have to say we have to wake up on these things. They want to slave us, control us in many ways. What yeah. does wake up look like to you, Tarek? I think that's what I'm not understanding. Hmm. What do we, think what are we people, to do? Yeah. What I'm saying is I don't think a lot of people are not awake and comes don't understand the, the language a little bit or, or what's happening or what's coming. Um, it, it, like you have to understand like at a certain point, these the, the people that are in control, they will slave our daughters, our children, everybody that's that we're going to die and the world's going to go to them. And that's what they're telling you in front of your eyes that we're, nobody's kind of like pushing uh, or disagreeing or going to the city or, you know, going against some of these things. Um, some people are, but some, most people are just going with the flow, going to work every day and living their life and just looking a blind eye. So when you say awake, I mean, don't turn a blind eye. It's coming. What, so either. What are we to do? If it's coming, what are we to do? Jack. There's a lot of things you can do. Matthew 10, 34 through 36. It does say that your enemies will be the ones in your home. Okay. The monsters are not under your bed. They're in your bed. Okay, yep. but this is something that I've been noticing, Jack. All right, I did. I want to say this first of all. There will be a great delusion. We know this. Okay, so I want I want to put that disclaimer out there. 
I am a believer that the that the juice was the mark, okay? But I have been thinking about this. It says that the people that take the mark, they will know it's the mark and they will willingly take it. Okay? Yeah. So a lot of the people that took the juice, they did not know if it was or was not the mark of the beast. So yeah, they I, did. You know why? This, stuck this was the contract. This was the contract that they signed. The I, I understand that. I understand. What, what does that contract say? That's what you. That's what you participated. You signed. And then they said, "This is what's in this," Jack. and then you signed, Cynthia. I did. I, your perspective I don't remember that. that. Hmm. Okay. That's what I'm saying, Th Cynthia. Like for me, you say, "What could you do?" I would not sign anything. Zero yeah, anymore. I don't know and what I, you're talking about. Well, he's talking about the social contract uh, score thing that's um, coming for like a lot no, of things. I'm in talking the, about no. No, he's I mean, I'm talking about, about the specific the shot. Yeah, I'm talking about the specific insert in the box. Oh, yeah, I got that you, the, yeah. the folks yeah. that got shot up. That's what was in there. It, oh. In in this in this thing, you open up the box yeah. and the insert says, "What's there? What are the ingredients in here?" It was just blank. It's ball, barium aluminum. I understand <laughs> that. I'm just saying, I think people knew what was going on. I think a lot of times we we, we kind of baby these these folks. Oh, they didn't know. Oh my god, they're such victims. I'm a humanitarian, bro. No. I'm but, sorry, I is, care about that, everything. What does that mean? They didn't know. Like you can say that about you don't know about when you take your uh shots for school, you don't know when Tarek had back so. surgery, he didn't know what they were doing to him. When I had surgery, they didn't know, you know, so you can't. What, why are you going around and doing stuff like that? If, if you're having know surgery, because I'm trust. trying to live. I'm trying to live. You need to trust. Well, whose no. fault is it that you're not managing the relationships and the trust that you give to people? Whose fault is that? I'm sorry. What was, can you come at that, that question again? Whose fault I'm is it that I don't what? Paul, whose I hope you find it? the Lord, brother. I, I hope you No, find no, no. Lord. Timmy, whose fault is it? Whose because we were talking it? about one thing and somehow you bringing it back to trust and what else was it? Is he saying people didn't know. They didn't know it was the it was some mark or whatever. And I'm I'm making the point that people did know what that was about. And like every day people make these decisions. And so Tara got three back surgeries. You got a bunch of uh, uh, schmacks. Did I say a bunch? All kinds of things. Did I say a bunch or did I say a surgery? Like you, you, I wanted to just make sure I'm you saying, tell I'm the story correctly. Whatever it is, the surgery, these injections, you just blindly trust these people you don't know, and they don't like you and know you and trust you. You don't know them or trust them, and then you just you get like random injections from people you don't know, and then you're just like hoping. I apologize. Yeah, it's it's just for willful ignorance. Well. I'm sorry if I have tumors and they say you have to have the tumors removed. Why are you and, listening to these people? And tell I you that chose they, what you to remove to tumors do. instead of think them away. Um, you presume that cutting out tumors, which can be more fatal and deadly than just leaving them, is the only mode of treatment. Yeah. Uh huh. So it, I'm going to go back to that one phrase that I always say my body, my choice. When you get tumors and y'all choose to share that you're not going to have them removed, I would love to hear y'all's journey. On my journey, I'm going to tell you how I had them what removed. Happened, what happened before that? What happened for the 50 years of, of horrible living before that? You were just going to brush that under the rug and just ignore all that? I'm not, I'm not trying to be an asshole. Just, I'm just no, but, but what accountable. Is, I don't understand how that you're correlating the two. If you could It's a long line of bad choices and lack of accountability and accepting so the truth as it is. Gets, so your obesity problem is a lack of good choices you've made, Paul? Essentially. Like, are going to sit here and say this to everybody? Everybody's Essentially, like, yes. Hey, are you listening? I just said yes. I'm not doing what you do. I'm taking the accountability. Yes. Mm -hmm. See how easy that was? Yeah, Cynthia, Cynthia, I don't I'll take a look at my... I'll take account of it for my surgeries. I also overdid it with working out. I don't think that was my choice. I fucked up there. Yes, it was my choice to overdo it. And then I thought the surgery would help, but it didn't. And the injections and all that were very bad for me. After seven years, I was totally fine. It took some time. I don't need no uh, injections, nothing like that. All this stuff was bad for me. 
Well, again, <laughs> we it, pay for our well, own self destruction, man. We pay for it. I, I we did pay for our own. And I'm good with the choice I made. We pay for it. Yes, we do. You know, the world we were born into, it has conditioned a lot of us to make stupid choices. And so many of us, I did. I, I know how lucky and how blessed I am because. I lived most of my life eating the chemical and the fast food garbage, all this nonsense I bought into the world. So really, by God's grace, I'm not filled with disease and, you know, all sorts of crap. But what it comes down to, though, I don't know. There, There is value in trying to find and identify culpability accountability and responsibility there there's definitely value there however if the purpose is just to assign blame if it's not for identifying the problem overcoming bringing solutions i think that's a habit we can try and break but does anybody change if we don't actually see what we did wrong isn't that insanity to just do the same thing again and again that's that's true we do need (laughs) to be aware you're absolutely right um and part of that is what we're doing here i think we're not always we're not always perfect and we're kind of sloppy about it our communication with each other but i think that is what's happening here we're helping each other out Or we're not. <laughs> I mean, we're all on our own journey. So I don't know how, how I could judge another person's journey because I'm not them. I've not walked in their shoes. And I don't understand how people think they can judge my journey. Does there is no my you? journey and your journey when it comes to cause and effect that relates to all of us. Hey, Dominic, I, mean, I don't understand. Let me tell you people... something, though. You're wrong because there is the individual and there is the mm-hmm. hive, and you are both. There is no. Is that how you describe that. your truth by calling me a dumbass? That's is that your love and light that's side, individual. or is that the Pauline and dark side? Like dumbass. Yeah, We're absolutely. Said, hey, dumbass. You're We're dumbass. all dumbasses sometimes. Well, no, Goblin has the individual. answers. Can't you tell? Who's no as fuck, dude? Can't you tell that he has answers in himself and in his life? You think everyone's the same? You're a fucking... Got it. I know. Everyone's not the same. We totally haven't seen that in the results over the last few years. Everyone's so unique and special and different. You're just not my father. That's the difference. I didn't ask to be your father. I wouldn't want to be. You're a disappointment. Well, Let's be clear. He's not a father right. at all. Right. Oh, so, uh, uh, he's not a father at all. So I don't understand how he can step into a father role. Right. You don't understand a lot of things. That's what the fifth thing you said you don't understand here. I can help clarify for you. Okay. Explain to me how you can step into a father role. When because they, I have to explain to a, a bunch of grown children what cause and effect is and how it relates to their he life. Can't expe- he cannot express he his journey. He he's he not experienced. He's just going to over talk. He's, he's not still a child. He's you being a, a child yeah. doesn't make you a father. You're a child. Yeah. I didn't listen to daddy government and take the jab. You did. If you act like a child, if you talk like a child, if you behave like a child, you are a child. Okay. Does that make you feel better about your bad choices and lack of accountability? I hope it does. That makes me feel no time. Do you feel good? Do you feel good how big you are and doing nothing with it? Does that make you feel good? What does that mean exactly? What should I do with what should I do with how big I am exactly? Should I come over there and live stream with you next? You're right. Show you how you won't keep oh the same God. energy By without way, that liquor in you. Star of the show. That's so a game. I know, uh, you're not a main hey, attraction. And you're please, not a star. Please. You're not a star. He's okay. I action. Uh, yeah, I I'm not. Please, guys. <laughs> I'm. I don't want to turn. I don't want this to deteriorate. Right? Too late. You both I, deteriorated I, personalities I, up here. What do you think it would go? We are who we are, and we get to work with what we've got. So, um, we, we're, the insults and stuff aren't as helpful. That's what I was uh, trying to get at. Two things that aren't helpful, uh, insults and nonsense. We should cut back on both. Ideally. (laughs) Ideally, yeah. 
Well, and that goes back to something you said earlier on on your stream, Paul. The the true paradox that that I'm dealing with, and I assume you're dealing with, right? Um, the true sign of wisdom is silence. So, how do you balance that by trying to share a live stream? <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. Well, the balance would come in a person who spends most of their time in seclusion, isolation, or silence, who then comes on and does a broadcast. I suspect most of the people here don't live like that. Well, I, where have you drawn I that? Disagree. I, I don't I disagree. I disagree as well. That. Yeah, but I didn't it, draw a conclusion. I made a suspicion. That's where you can clarify. Well, your See, suspicion that's is not well, I just clarified it. You're, that's not accurate when it comes to me, and I believe I, Goblin just said it's not accurate. When it comes to him, right? How often do we say something and someone else actually tells us the truth about who and what they are, what they're doing and not doing? I was wondering the same thing about you, Paul. How often do you actually tell the truth about what you're doing and not doing? So very true. The difference is, is I've shown who and what I am and what I do. The rest of you haven't. I would, and I've seen you go live. You you live stream, and I've not seen much else from you. I've not seen community work i've not seen any of that so it's what well, were you looking think? equally as hard for all the things you didn't find as you were for all the things you somehow found it's just that, that may or may not I exist tune into your uh show it's the same thing so i have yet to tune in over this past nine months to see anything different i do hope one day to see something different perhaps you're working on the land you showing people how to so you never saw that the ground no you never saw that you. on the channels well you must have not been looking as hard for that as you oh, do yeah. for everything else. Well, I have yet to see you do that. There's many folks who've been here for a year and a half who who saw that. Well, I've only been here for nine months and I haven't seen it in the last Right. Time. I'm pretty, okay. But again, I'm yeah, sure yeah, if you were looking yeah, on the channel, yeah, it's hard yeah, for yeah, certain yeah. things as you were for other things, you would have found what you were supposedly I looking for. I really don't search well, that hard. That could apply for all of us too. All, it could yeah. apply to you as well, my friend. Um, these are folks who, when you Google search them, nothing comes up. Where would I look and find if I don't live with them on the ground? I'm not Why would you assume if you don't live with us on the ground? I didn't assume or presume. I made you suspicions that can be clarified with online. evidence and oh, facts. Speaking is not that. Up, That's Cynthia, anecdotal. If you type in what's up, Cynthia, you can find my YouTube channel. So please feel free to Google me at any time. Okay. So please. when I search you, what comes up is you have a channel. Okay. Okay. Can we please? I mean, we're all you realize anybody can have a channel, right? Yeah, well, you, you do realize that. You and what comes up, and I was answering everyone. your question. I'm sorry if it didn't match your standards. I was there's only three million questions. results when you Google Paul and Slave, so I don't know. We can go over them. Yeah, I mean, hey guys, you, you actually, said. I do feel like maybe the energy is changing. Maybe it's mm -hmm. time to wrap up. I agree. Okay. I'll catch um, up with you some other time, Jack. Truth tends to do that, Jack. I apologize. I shouldn't have brought it here. No, it's it's not that. It's just um, with the dynamics. We've got past history and different energies, different perceptions. And, um, you know, some people can get along better with others and others just don't really miss some folks get along better with the truth and others tend to avoid it and that's like right you right and right. reject it and kind of get riled up about it that's very true jack that's why he brought grace on there and let her let her promote her videos talking about her vagina for oh, 30 almost, seconds in his uh, uh, please, please. that's the truth right another now. lie huh you have no problem telling lies and being judged that is exact. I'm being respectful and not seeing exactly what happened. So we're, I went on her man, guys, conversation sorry, guys, that is meant to lead to at some point more conversation. Guys, you wouldn't know the art of living, the art of diplomacy, no, the art I of know, anything. I know, I, know, I know the art. So of I promoted me. her I pussy stuff. music on her broadcast oh that I would speak you, on. You know so much about so many people. It's amazing how you yeah. do that, Paul. You've got to. Thank share you for noticing, Cynthia. Day. Oh wait, you were being disingenuous again. So much. About everybody. thank you for noticing. Like, I'll do like I you where I, where I double talk and beat around the bush until solitude I attack directly because I'm bitter and resentful. This is what solitude does, it makes you more in tune with the world, huh? Interesting, right? 
Well, yeah. I mean, in solitude, you are more in tune with the world and, and the, the creation, more importantly, right? The spirit not coming on panels and interacting with tards who don't yet know themselves. Yeah, you're here doing right, it. Right, it oh, makes I'll for great content, conversation, non-versation. Now you get it. But no, it's it's actually it's actually not. Um, it is for me. Have, we could have conversation. You want to go over contributions today? Let's go over yours and no. we'll go over mine. Hey, Paul, Paul, what? please. I'm trying to be polite. I'd like to. Oh, I'm this. trying to be truthful. That might be. A no. So no, I feel like we were having again. a good stream. We were having good conversation. And I don't understand why you came up and erupted that He's, when you could be a part of that. You're, you're a smart man. No, but you Cynthia, lack the ability to listen. Cynthia, Cynthia, part of this, I don't know if I, I feel, and maybe it, I felt like Tarek and you, Cynthia, and maybe even Goblin using this opportunity to take some jabs at Paul. I actually saw Paul show up. He was very quiet. Even when he started participating, he didn't jump right in with the ways that he has been. Okay? Mm -hmm. I agree. And, but, um, I don't think we took shots at him. I'm not going to have a conversation and agree with you because you're Paul enslaved. I'm going to continuously stick to who <laughs> I am and that should be respect. I didn't. <laughs> I know. But I it also said, I didn't take a shot at him either. He said the truth, and I believe sometimes he does speak the truth. But when he said the truth, we're all quiet. I was respectful and quiet the whole time. But he can't explain why he had Grace on there. He just said, oh, I'm doing it for a different reason. And that's not why I promoted her two videos on there that were very naughty. Okay. Um, that's all. I don't. I'm in no position to defend Paul. I also don't want to be in a position to... Uh, I'm trying to escape. I'm trying to escape here. Okay. Let me be honest with yes. that. The situation has okay. turned not pleasant and um, not as pleasant. You guys are great. And I don't know. Um, any last words, though, please? <laughs> I'll go. Jack, thanks for having it's me, a man. Piece, so, uh, it was a pleasure, man. Uh, I'll just, I'll just, my last words, I'll just say, I don't know why sometimes it seems like. Folks are allergic to an objective, masculine, logic, logical opinion about somebody else's actions. Um, and like, we don't have to take it personal. And uh, if we are so much like uh, God, believing in God and, and harmony and all this, like, don't you think that there's some laws of God and principles? So there's some logical harmony what? that a man and woman should be living as. And Can then you give me an example? perhaps a correct living and an incorrect living. Maybe I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Perhaps, you know, and then when, if we see each other down a bad path, making horrible choices and getting horrible results, isn't it mm -hmm. the loving thing to point out and say, Hey, you're going to keep doing that same thing. That's got you those horrible results for the past 49 years. Maybe, maybe you want to do something different. So I like what loving? you're saying. Um, for me, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for anyone else, Timmy. But when people who say the Bible is nothing more than a delusional book, I already know we're not on the same playing field. And I'm not going to take advice from them as I would somebody who believed in the Bible. I'm not saying you're right and I'm wrong or I'm right and you're wrong. I'm just saying our fundamental core basics aren't the same. And okay, so because I get to my understanding from actual reality and actual well, living, see, and the fact I don't that you address it that book. way. The fact that you address it that way lets me know we're not going to ever have that level of respect. You're going to always think that what I believe in isn't at real, but it's real to me. We can't get past this barrier to have conversations to where I would even be receptive to hear anything you had to say to me. So I I'm think a lot about, of this I'm talking is about reality, though, Cynthia. I'm talking but about. But I'm talking about reality too, and I'm talking in, about in your my imagination, your feelings. No, I'm talking about no. my my experience with the Holy Spirit and with the right. God that I have faith in. 
the Holy and Spirit led you to inject yourself with insanity? Like, okay, how the does Holy that The Holy Spirit up? lives and dwells in me and guides my steps. And is that connection between me and God, the one that you think is not real? So it's hard. But when did I say, I don't think God is real? You, the book that I learned from is not real. Okay. It's all in God my head. God only in a book? Okay. Like, God only in that book. I'm talking about Here. the God of the Bible. It's the disparaging comments on the book. Okay. Mm -hmm. And while I I understand both sides of this, and and I think what Cynthia is saying is if you if you're going to have such a low opinion of the book that is valued and really respected and appreciated by others, it's going to make understanding and communication more difficult. So it shows a lack of respect to the others, and I think that's, that's I'm sorry, Jack. And that, that's not to say you're not capable of having great conversations and right. leading others to, to get them to do what you want. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not discrediting you. I'm just saying that the correlation between you and I, we're not even at a, at a the foundation yet. We're on quicksand. That's that's fine. I, all right, because everybody that you uh, talk to and listen to and, and, and trust uh, – all believe in the same book and, and that maps your reality, I guess. So, you know, I happen to think it means totally different things than, than, than what you do and, and that's fine. But I don't see how that relates to when you do objectively, like I'm talking about reality. When you objectively make horrible choices and get horrible results, like I, I'm, I I'm confused. Like, where are the horrible results? Here, let me I don't right. understand that's that. To me, this is where I'm going to have a disagreement with as well, because allegedly, according to the discernment of Paul and others, I've made horrible choices. And, you know, so, Timmy, I've seen that view used against me. Who the fuck are you to judge? Right. That's the question. Oh, your, but your results. You I, I, I'm not judging. It's your results. Are your results amazing? Yes or no? Well, let's look at results. What results are we considering? I don't know, Jack. Results. I don't. I don't. I don't want. Like, I don't want to make you feel bad. And like, do you want me to make a laundry list? Like, come on, man. Like, let's just be well authentic. Be, you know, tell you what. Actually, you know what? Damn I'm not it. trying to be an asshole. I want to. I want to have this conversation, but I do want to shut it down. So, no problem. Uh, next, time, I would man. like I'll to have yes yeah, a conversation in the future about. Um, Write it down, Jack. Well, I'm trying to think of what is our, our disagreement. Determination of results, perhaps, right? Determination yeah, yeah. of results and um, I don't know. Timmy, going back to what you asked, yes, when I am in a hard time or I'm going through something horrible, I only communicate with people who I know believe like me. Who, who are part of my church actually, or my family members, because I know that they're going to give me my community and my tribe, because I know that they're going to speak to me in a way that I understand because we all work out of the same book and they're going to speak to me and they're going to be able to point to me in scriptures. They're going to help me grow there. That's the best community for me. I'm not, saying you i'm the only person that has a community the people that you learn best from are for you and what i have a problem with is you and i'm just putting you and me in this you want to come sure. and attack me on my opinions on my choices that i made and instead of just seeing me as who i am you're judging me on something from three years ago that has nothing to do today yeah. with this conversation but you want to continuously bring it up and that makes me think i can't really have a conversation with you because you're living in the past yeah it's not it's not an attack on you um it's more of just a highlighting i'm just putting a spotlight on the truth on the fact that when you do certain things you get certain results and i'm attempting to correlate that there are principles underlying those things what is the principle in, in this uh, discussion right here is don't desecrate God's temple. Okay, so I, I don't know which fucking Bible verse that is. That's my opinion. I also That's just have my tattoos. Opinion. I've never heard anybody say anything about my tattoos. I've also cut I'm my hair. Guys, peace.
Thank you for having me on, Jack. I know you want to shut this down. Mark. I appreciate you for having me on. Thank you, Timmy and Cynthia. We'll, we'll see you thank all you. later. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Thank, thank you, Jack. Sorry. And thank you, Timmy. It was a good conversation. I know that you and I have always had issues, but it was a great conversation. I, I truly don't think we're ever going to be like, gosh, I like Timmy. No, I, I like just would like you to be authentic I, but and I just think, be truthful. You, 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 you give this gangster authentic. thing, and then you pretend like you're not doing it. Just, just be like actually truthful and authentic. And maybe but we see, can I am being others. authentic. And what happens Man. when I have that gangster yeah. lean with Jack or with Flo or with yeah. Lindsay or with Tarek or with Chuck? It's shifted. because I'm not finished talking. It's because I, I trust I them care. and I've relaxed more around them and I can pull the veil back and I can be my authentic self. When people such as you, such as Paul and others that are constantly attacking me, I'm going to have my guard up with you more and you're going to see a different side of me. It doesn't mean that it's not real. It doesn't mean that it's inauthentic. It just means you're not there yet and you may never be there and that's okay. There's nowhere you're to go okay with you. Them. You're known for nothing. You do nothing. Okay. You have nothing okay. interesting to Jimmy. say. Then that's Jimmy. fine. And I'm okay with you <laughs> feeling that way about me. What you eat don't make me Great. shit. Have Great. a good night, right. Jack. I appreciate Cynthia, you. Thank, thank you, my friend. Jesus. I appreciate All right. you. As well. All right, Jack. Uh, next time, man. Uh, thank Respect. you, Brady. Timmy, thank you for joining. I, I appreciate you. And I, Paul has been patient in the back. If you're still there, thank you for waiting. Um, I'll right just there. sum it up, Jack. Uh, age old cliche. It's easier to fool someone than it is to convince them they've been fooled or are a fool. That is true. That is true. I'd encourage, though, Paul, let's try to see fewer fools. That's not the right way of saying what I wanted to say. Um, it's along the same vein you usually do. Encouraging me to ignore what is obvious and self-evident for what is imagined and desired. Um, not quite. That's beyond not dreaming. Quite. That's blind faith in, in I, a lack I, of, of application and results. I wouldn't ask of that. I would not ask you to ignore what is real. But perhaps in the evaluation, I don't know. What I have found for myself is how much of these issues, how much of my disagreement, my criticism, is it really worth it? I mean, sometimes we're helpful, sometimes we're not. And you recognize that this is like from their bent, because I don't call myself a Catholic or a Christian. The mm -hmm. whole point of living essentially is to ascertain the word and then to bear witness and testimony in order to quote unquote save souls. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not claiming that I'm necessarily doing that, but if you were to look at that dynamic and then wonder why I would spend so much time speaking the truth to try to correct others, obvious failing with cause and effect, there might be something to that. It might actually be a genuine care that I have rather than a need to attack as much as it's perceived. I believe it is a care, brother. I do. Um, but well, let's ask Cynthia, right? Who's more likely to attack her, me or Mr. Fauci? Oh, wait, we won't answer that, okay? We won't mm -hmm. answer that. So the same people they go to for their care and their safety are the same ones most likely to harm them. The same ones they say that are harming them or trying to harm them might be the ones who care the most about them. Usually reality is not what it seems. And it usually is paradoxical from what I've learned. I did no disagreement with you. And tell you what, I think we're all here to help each other. And, um, so I have no disagreement with you, Paul. I am ready to wrap up, though. All right, Thank Jack. You. We'll see you later. I appreciate you. I respect you. Thank you again, Paul. Um, peace. So, brothers and sisters, sincerely, all those who joined the panel, joined the chat, those who tuned in at a later time, thank you. Thank you for sharing your time, energy, attention. Those are the most valuable commodities we possess. Every day is limited. Every moment we have is up to us. What are we going to do? Are we going to share it with others? Are we going to be selfish with it? Are we going to capture it? Are we going to ignore the moment? We get to do all those things, and sometimes we do different things. Brothers and sisters, thank you again for joining today. The idea that I wanted to get across, I think we did. I think we kind of covered it, offering some, some ideas of faith, 
some ideas of the unconditional love that is available, the infinite goodness that's possible. And of course, we discussed having some oneness with it all too. And that is what this life is about. If you take anything from this stream, brothers and sisters, please, hopefully you'll leave with a smile. I'm going to cut it that there while Jack presumably does his politically correct uh, platitude based outro uh, that feels good and generally leads to no conclusion or conciseness. There's a lot of that feel good stuff going on that really just leads nowhere if there's no application and no results. Goblin creature, how are you, sir? What happened? You went off on me, yelled at me again. Why am I a dumbass again? Why? I'm not tough. I'm not hard enough. I'm a dumbass. Oh, in part you're delusional, but I'm not mad at you for it. Um, did you lay that out for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like how you said I'm not about that life. That was your first delusion. I really don't know what that means. What is that life exactly? Right. You know, if you know, you know, right? Um, no, I don't, because there's a lot of real ones. When I, when I there's a lot of real ones, real N words, like they say on the street, who claim to be that. But when it comes time to stand on something beyond what they feel, there's no one around oftentimes, right? So I wouldn't know what that life is. You're going to have to illuminate for me what you mean by that life specifically. Because I wouldn't know by looking at you or speaking with you, I'm not getting any of the intimations. You're going to have to be really direct with me. All right. So real direct. I ain't got no problem boxing is what I'm saying. Um, so when you said when you made your statement the other day, that's delusional. But I am this statement because I am this be direct. Huh? Be direct, oh, okay. please. All right. I'll be direct. Uh, you're a liar and you're a liar because you said that I could be a part of this experience. And then you turned around and you allowed motherfuckers to go in strike all types of channels what the fuck dude wait i allowed that yeah so i am daddy you're conceding indirectly yeah, i'm no, daddy no, no, online no, no, no. because you can't you're, we got i go like i i you gotta go like then that. you i gotta go then you go i go you go right right so we're about that life here as much as possible of course i always break my own rules but i guess that's the hypocrisy of being a host sometimes you're free to break your own rules that you set um so what was the claim again? Can we just get back to it and just keep it like non-emotional, just direct to the point, have the back and forth, see if we can create resolution? The claim was you're a liar. All right, because I allowed other people to use their free will, just like God, the Not God of all media. You're talking over me again. I, the God of all media, much like God of creation, allowed all the participants of this experience to use their free will to choose and create whatever karma and outcome for themselves they wish. So I, I didn't have any control over that, nor am I going to interfere with that, nor do I also believe that it is in everyone's best interest to go against that. Because on some level, I believe it's more beneficial to these communities for Snafu Snaps and his crew to interfere with folks continually character assassinating, lying, grifting, um, all the rest of the things they've done here, I don't see the benefit of it for them, the people doing it, or anyone else. So while I don't engage in that behavior because I believe it will create karma for me on my channel, I will not try to stop others from doing that, and I will also not promote it. So I'm remaining extremely neutral on the issue. Do I find it to be funny and comical that Snafu Snaps, who says everyone else is a pogo, is essentially using a uh, policy on YouTube to get people to stop doing certain things. It's a bit ironic, a bit hypocritical, a bit comical. How serious are we taking this? You're mad at me because your buddies gave you a hangout to waste your life and they That's got struck for a week. A liar, though. Bro, he did you a favor. He freed up the rest of your week for you to actually go do, do be and create something rather than watch a bunch of people fail and identify with it. That's not why I called you a liar, though. It has nothing to do okay, with that. Okay, well, I thought that's what you said. So I was just explaining why, for some reason, I can't take a neutral position. I have to stand for everyone else's rights and freedom, even rights and freedom, to libel me, slander me, character assassinate me, 
uh, and grift off my audience. No, I don't support that. That's not proper. That's not ethical. That's not moral. That's not logical. That's not honorable. It's not authentic and it's not accountable because all the people doing it are the same people who sucked my dick and said I was the best thing ever before I tried to hold them accountable with me. And they didn't like that. I agree with all of that. And that's not why I called you a liar. Well, be direct with me then. Because be more direct. That, I must have you mistaken said that I be a part of this experience. There's no wet snitchings, flow state. We're not part of a gang. We didn't do you underworld activity. Is a cool real dude. quick, real quick. Just let me finish. I'm going to let you go as much as you want, bro. I'm not going to fucking take you out of here. I'm not going to direct you more than necessary for the listeners. There's no wet snitching, bro. You ain't a gang member. You've never been involved. You ain't about that life, the life I perceive he's talking about in another sense at all. Okay, so you don't know anything about having to stand tall and not snitch. Okay, I've been through that process over and over again and the people that I deal with. So there is no wet snitching on YouTube because we all present publicly and everyone chooses their free will to respond and react as they please. Okay, so again, I perceive you, Slow State and the rest as unthankful, ungrateful, dishonorable, inauthentic, uh, power hungry, fame hungry, money hungry cretins. And you really serve no purpose in this venue. So when someone or something comes along to take you the fuck out of here, I ain't losing sleep. That's the way the game goes. That's karma, right? And, and it's just more evidence of your incompetence and incapability because Snafu Snaps has stricken my channel before and I was back up and running in 20 minutes. Another thing you can't do as well as I can because you probably won't apply yourself and you're half the IQ I am. Sorry to break the news for you. See, the man who has less intelligence has to work twice as hard. You motherfuckers ain't that bright, so you better get working. That's true. And that's not why I called you a liar. There is no his rat. Snafu, I just, this is the point. We're all now, you want to play hard online and, and criminality? We're all doing the simulation. We're all in the dope game now, right? Not using it. Just imagine selling it. We don't do that, but we're doing a simulation. So this guy just hit me up, right? Like a month ago, then hits up slow state, hits up everyone else. I'm the only one not bitching and complaining. I got up out the bed, did what I had to do, got back to business the next day. You're all sitting around bitching, whining and complaining and saying the guy who comes here regularly uh, did something to you all and he's my rat. He did the same thing to me he did to you all. I just dealt with it differently than you did, the same way I do with everything in life. You don't see the commonality and the theme here? He's not my rat. He has no loyalty to me. He's hit up my channel and stricken me at least a handful of times before for doing things he doesn't like. So we can all bond if you want to trauma bond and argue he's a common problem in this community. The problem with that is you slaves went against me in this community. So do you think I'm going to feel bad when your number's up and he hits you up the same way he did with me and you can't get out of it and get back to whatever you were not doing the same way I did? No. All's fair in love and war and metaversal games. So stop bitching, stop whining, stop complaining, and stop writing false narratives about people being with me and under me who've done the same shit and worse to me than they have to you. Fuck slave. You sound like a hoe and a bitch again. I would agree with all of that. And that's not why I, just I called spoke you proof. a liar. And that's not why I called you a liar. I'm addressing the Cretan slow state who keeps whining, bitching, and complaining because he's got to sit down for a week and can't get himself out of what he got himself into. It's not anyone else's problem. I have the solution, but he won't take it from me. Because I'm the cult leader, bad guy, the one he has to go against do to make a living and set narratives. So he doesn't want to work with me. You can't be unresolved, dissolute, a paranoid, angry, bitter, resentful, have no results, unsuccessful, and then not work with people who may be able to touch that or at least understand it at times. Why doesn't Flow State just come up and just converse with you? There you go. What's the solution, Paul? The solution is everybody be authentic. Everybody be accountable. Everybody strive to do the best broadcast they can. Defer to certain people at certain times for what they're good at or what they know. And 
and and do not defer to people for what they're known for not knowing and doing, if that makes sense. I don't know how else to put that. That probably wasn't the best way to language it out. There is no immediate solution. This is gradualism, like I spoke about earlier. You're gradually becoming to a point in every venue and everything in life that we do, right? So there is no immediate solution. The point is everyone has to practice authenticity. Everyone has to practice accountability. Everyone has to call the shot and see the move the way that it is, not with the way they want it to be and don't want it to be. The more we foster that energy and that type of communication in this non-community, the more that we can then hold Snafu Snaps and other individuals to that standard. But if that's not going to be practiced regularly, then don't expect it to happen when it comes your turn to reap the detriment of what you benefited from at one point. Your hypocrisy, hypocrisy, arrogance, ignorance to the truth and what is, and lack of resolution because you thought it would be more profitable to fight and do drama, drama slut, than it is to do accountability, authenticity, and resolution. That's where you and I have met constant resistance, and I and most people meet constant resistance. So your solution is a non-solution because it's a way of being this, and it's going to gradually take you and us where we need to be. If not, then you're going to see the same type of behavior over and over again, and probably worse. At some point, a loom of slavery is going to really go off the edge and wind up doing something to himself or somebody else the way that he's been acting lately. That's horrible, man. I care about these people. Right. I know you're a humanitarian. And then when you say that, you don't realize how arrogant you sound because the presumption is that I don't. So it's an ignorant, arrogant thing to continue to say to try to make yourself look some way to presume the rest of us don't care about other motherfuckers. I understand why you why you why you felt that you needed to state it that way, because it's something that uh, people should just know and it shouldn't be said. I comprehend. Right, that. It's called and, the product you know of a human experience is empathy or an empathic ability. I think that I've shown both at various times. You so have. we don't have to constantly validate or, or, or verify that each individual one of us, except the ones who aren't, are empathic or empathetic people and actually care. That's probably the main motivation for why we do whatever it is that we do. Because if we didn't care, we wouldn't. I agree. I just feel, I feel like some people are instigators dividers you uh, could be an instigator and a divider and still care bro yes the issue is whenever there's a conversation that that's me uh has found an interest in there's always some type of chaos that just dissolves. goblin 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 this is so simple bro how many times in our life was i characterized as a divider and instigator at family dinner because i was forced to say some shit and bring some shit to the table the rest were ignoring to all of our detriment this is a regular theme in my life, bro. I just took it online. I took the show on the road, but I was living this before I was ever presenting it. So I'm totally cool with being characterized as instigator and divider because that's what the truth will do sometimes. Instigate motherfuckers and divide. You could argue that's a blessing more than it is a curse. Do you really want to be yoked and unified with motherfuckers who don't care about the truth, who are going to take us all down with their arrogance and ignorance to the facts? You got to understand, like the scripture says, bro, a godly process is a unification and a division. It's a yoking and an unyoking. It's all things. You cannot pigeonhole us to what we want and don't want, what we like and don't like, what we feel and don't feel. I feel that mental health is doing poorly, and I feel that it's going to continue with the economy talk and about you bro talk about you if your I'm mental health is doing poorly then i'll tell you i care about you don't I'm just talk for other people i'm disappointed in myself and others man right but that's the thing you you only got to worry at the end of the day about you not even worry you got to focus on you creating the best version of you and the life that you're living then maybe with whatever extra you got you could share that with others and help them so forget about being a humanitarian. You got to get selfish before you get selfless, in a sense. You got to do what the fuck is right and best for you before you encourage others to do that for them. You can't cart before the horse, bro. So that's what I'm saying. Don't get mad and then talk for other people because you're in a space maybe right now where you're struggling and you need a good word. 
So you want to act out because you presume everyone else is living that right now. Nah, I lived that in the past, but that ain't my life right now. So get with me where I'm at or we can go back together. We'll go back on heroin. That what the fuck you want? No, it's not. And um, this is just going to sound bad or people are going to take these words and manipulate them. I'm just going to say it for what it is, man. I, I go to Jack's channel when I'm when I'm looking for some positive encouragement. I know and that, bro, but that's what I'm trying to tell you in the rest of them. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the positive aspects there are being this. When you create a safe space where that's all there is, it becomes delusional like you try to accuse me of. You can't be deluded with positivity. The negativity upsets you because it's based in truth. It's meant to get your ass up and out and to do and be. That positivity shit is like candy, bro. It can get too sweet to where it makes you sick. That comfortable delusion. I comprehend that. That's the point of our fathers, bro. When I do the daddy thing, I ain't saying I'm your daddy like that. I tease with people, but ultimately it's an archetype. As a man, we have to speak what I'm speaking to you right now into ourselves to remind ourselves. Our mama is that space for the sweet shit. And if you get up under your mama for too long and let her cuddle you too long, you can become like her in a sense. Not as active, not as inspired, not as empowered, not as able to co-create and, and, and take what the fuck you need in life. And I don't mean that from a negative perspective. I mean, chase your fucking dreams. Mama want to sit home and watch the children. That's her biggest dream is to give birth to children. Men got other aspirations in life. Oftentimes, men got other obligations. There may be a warrior tribe coming up over the hill. She got the freedom to do that. I don't. It bothers me when you and Jack are not getting along. It bothers me when you and Flo are not getting along. It shouldn't bother you, bro. It's necessary. This is the necessary evil, if you want to call it evil. Motherfuckers are living backwards and expecting progress. It's a necessary evil. We ain't meant to get along right okay, now. Let's be That's okay, bro. That then. That's okay, bro. You don't think that I'd rather us all get along? If we can't meet life on life's terms and come to an understanding, we ain't meant to get along right now. That's okay. I can still love them from a distance. I don't hate these motherfuckers. I don't wish ill on them. I remind them there's consequences in life for everything you think, feel, do, and say with me or otherwise. But that's just life on life's terms. You know? So I don't hate these people. I don't want nothing done to them. I don't want to be a part of their downfall in any sense. My credibility and my reputation, if anything, is going to be built on the fact that I inspire people to do and be better, if anything. If I can't do that or I'm not a part of that, then I fail. Right? So by virtue of what I do and that fact, I also have to be uh, extremely authentic and accountable and make myself the bad guy every once in a while. That's just the way it's going to be because that's the way people are going to see me. I'm okay with that role. I'm okay with that role in life, on the ground, in my family, with my friends, everywhere else in life, in the corporate world. It's what's got me ostracized and then on the back end now respected more than ever. Because I went my own way. I spoke that truth. I stood on it when everyone thought I was crazy and turned out Pauly Boy was right. So I got to go with God, bro. I got to go with the guy or, or the thing or whatever, the spirit that brought me to the dance. I ain't going to trade that for a relationship with Jack Talcott, with Timmy, with Goblin, with Wizard, with any person, place, or thing in this realm. I'm in this world, but not of it at this point. So I'm going to be your best friend slash best friend. And you're going to see me as a worst enemy because I'm going to speak that truth. We all need to hear. And I don't give a fuck how you or I feels about it. That's a man's position in leadership. And then we're going to walk it and live it together individually or we're not. And then the results are going to speak for themselves, whether it's me, fat Paulie dying of a heart attack or all the rest of the fucking narratives going back on heroin and overdosing, whatever the fuck you want to come up with. We can entertain all the fantasies that are somewhat realities. Thoughts? They're just, these are good men, Jack. I know it. I feel it. I sense it. I didn't know what your intentions were, Paul, but uh, I saw you still going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my intentions are pretty clear, I would think. I meant for the day. Oh, what's, what's it's your always open-ended. I'm very loose nowadays <laughs> and open-ended, right? I, know, I like to I keep know. it that way. I know, brother. It's good. I 
Hey, Paul, I wanted to, and Jack, I wanted to apologize for being, I guess, self-destruct. I don't know if you would say self-destructive, but quote-unquote showing my ass on Jack's channel to you. It's just sometimes I feel like that's the way that I need to um, get my point across. I mean, listen, bro, I'm not going to tell you to not do what I do every day. The point is, if you're going to use that energy, make sure the point is getting across. You can't use that energy and not make a point. Oh, well, that's where it becomes a mistake for you, right? So you don't got to apologize for me. We're doing the simulation. You wanted to step out and drive the sword through me, and then you tripped over your own feet and dropped the sword. There's no need to apologize to me. I did get my point across because we're having the conversation I was looking for right now. Yeah, you wanted my attention, right? There's different ways to get my attention. But I, if that's the way you got to use because of the way I am, well, I guess then you outplayed me. Congratulations. <laughs> it is what it is, man. I'm just, I'm looking for some, some more knowledge. I'm fiending. The, the Gnosis path of knowledge in a sense is salvation. And so I find myself looking to know more about everything I possibly can in this world with no limitations. That's my path. Right, right. but we get back to knowledge itself is knowledge of the universe. You're looking for power and understanding out there when it's with you. And the only way to find out more about you is to take you to more situations and circumstances, observe and report, and do the simulation of life, right? Yeah. Like, how's a motherfucker going to know themselves and where they want to live if they've been to the beach, to the forest, to the mountains? You can't sit in a suburb on Long Island and say, oh, this is where I want to live. You might be intuitively on some level. But you got to really know yourself. And the only way to know yourself is through experience. You got to go experience all those things and then sit back and go, this is where the fuck I want to be. This is where I'm meant to be. I'm just absorbing the understanding. I'm getting out of here, man. I'll be watching. All right, Goblin. Thoughts, Mr. Talcott, Timmy? I was just, uh, well, actually, I just saw an opportunity to hang out with Paul again today, so I clicked the link. <laughs> All right, I've got a, I got a meeting I'm going to uh, in a few minutes anyway, um, so I'll be stepping out myself shortly. All right, Tim, you got anything? Not yeah, I'll time. just, yeah, I'll just say, uh, I mean. Jack, I, I do uh, uh, I do like you, man. I'll just say this, man. I, I've gotten results in my life and the people around me's life from uh, from from bringing a, an understanding, direct understanding. And um, if I can get across the point that uh, if they know that I actually give a fuck, then um, then it works because it's it's not just like some masculine thing uh, about like uh, control and and just uh and uh like evil control do this do that at this like kind of terroristic masculine energy like for uh you know so uh in case you haven't gotten that from me enough to understand that that i i actually wouldn't come up on these fucking things or, or talk to people because i thought they were pieces of shit. like i actually think people are are so fucking powerful and they have so much potential and they fucking waste it. And I go, look, you're doing what I'm not saying to you, Jack, specifically, but to folks. I say, can like look at your life, look at your potential, look at what you've accomplished. And, and don't you don't you want to be more, do more, have more? And it's just like I that's why people say, uh, oh, I seem so pissed off a lot. And I am. I'm fucking pissed off. Because I, I, I used to be a, a piece of garbage that didn't wasn't wasn't achieving nearly as uh, as close as my as my fucking full potential, and now I'm, I'm getting there. I don't know what the limit is, 
But, uh, you know, I see people that have a lot of uh, fucking talents and, and, and power and, and they, they fucking waste it. And um, so, yeah, a little tough love, I guess. That's the thing. There's so many people down there. It's so interesting how they respond to Timmy in a different way than they respond to me for bringing the exact same sentiment and understanding with apparent results. It's, it's, it's almost more evidence in a way of what they claim about me that I'd rather not believe is true. And then they don't even blame me for it. They say, you have a cult like following, <laughs> right? Just literally, you just watch Timmy give the same fucking information. <laughs> and for some reason, maybe they don't believe him. Maybe he doesn't communicate it the same way I do. Maybe it's not from the same place, but it's the same understanding and information and seemingly the same idea about results in certain ways compared to old self. And somehow it's rejected from him the way he gives it. This is more indication of why we can never get to the same vision because they they won't take the same information from one person they'll take from someone else because they don't like that person or don't resonate with him as a speaker. This is the art of the fool. I have so many categories for the art of the fool instead of the art of the deal. I just write a whole book. Uh, Jennifer, it's an amazing concept. A whole book on the art of what fools do every day thinking that they're bettering themselves. And it does nothing but trick them out of value and power and position. You know, why write the book on the art of the deal? Right? We have to get to the art of the fool first. You got to see yourself for who and what you are before you see yourself for who and what you could be. That shit is funny. That would be a that might be a bestseller. Yeah, you just write down in the art of the fool, the person listening re disregards the information based on their feeling of the speaker. The art of the fool. Mm -hmm. And they thought they were doing something like they, they got something out of that. You know, it's like ultimately too, like I say, if the results are there on some level, you can't do that. You can't, the ignorant and arrogant cannot invalidate the results of a speaker who's living their information. Doesn't matter what the fuck you feel about that person's speech or tone or personality. Nope. You know, I this is I where they, we get away from fraternity and ego. They think I'm some guy because yeah. I call people geeks and nerds and dweeds and I may make fun of the way Timmy looks. That that doesn't change that he may be a wingman with me in some venues, right? I could tease him and make fun of him, but if he's living the information and getting results, he's going to be riding with me. You know, every fucking Gorgon creature needs a little skinny archer jumping on his back, right? I mean, that's the fucking Lord of the Rings. It don't matter what we all look like and how we all make fun of each other for certain things. The information and the vision is key. With the results, we ride together. If we can't achieve that individually and collectively, we don't ride together. We go it alone. It's funny when uh, when when I I let myself go and, and not be restrained. People go, he's, he's, he's trying to act like daddy. And it's just funny because these motherfuckers don't, they don't spend any time around me. I'm, they should be I'm saying like good instead of hating like, on you. Yeah. He's trying to act like daddy. Good. Nah, Maybe I mean, he'll I'm, figure I'm out always, like I am on the path of what the fuck a man is. I don't claim to be a completed picture. We're all putting the pieces back together from what we allowed them to break uh, that we're having to recollect, right? Remember. Remember means to put the member, the pieces back together. We're having to remember who and what the fuck we were before they showed us and told us and made us believe it. I'm just an example of that idea. I ain't yeah. the completed picture necessarily. I'm just always fired up like this, and I'm very restrained on your panel because I also don't shut the fuck up if if given the the, the stream. So I'm very just chill around the, the panel here, usually. <laughs> There's nothing wrong at all. You could argue that it's a problem that not more people are passionate or fired up enough. You don't want to be too passionate that it burns you down. Right? And everyone around you, snap who snaps. But you got to have some passion, some desire, right? Some fire within you that is an eternal flame that burns regardless of situation, circumstances. Like the eternal holy flame they tend out in the forest, right? The monk people. There's an idea behind everything they do. The tea ritual, the eternal flame. It's, an M, it's, it's a replication of a state of consciousness. So the conscious and aware being who is resolute has an eternal fire within them that they tend, right? And that is, in a sense, part of the aspect of the light within, you could argue, right? With light, there is heat. You can't have a brilliant person without passion. You don't see that in the world, so it's probably not meant to be, right? So then you got to ask yourself, 
Why, where is my brilliance? Where is my light? And then where's the passion to go with it? Why do I see so many other brilliant, passionate people doing so much evil shit and I can't equalize or outcompete them? There's where your power is going to be gained or lost, not in making judgments about them. You said something there. There's a connection between passion and brilliance. I hadn't seen that before, but there is people dim their people that either haven't discovered their brilliance or haven't discovered their passion or they let the world dim both right to feel safe jack right yeah. how many times they tell me to dim my light on that broadcast you do in order to feel safe and comfortable around me when it might be the exact opposite of what the fuck we need right now these are the same people who showed up and said, Polly boy's right on time. He's exactly what we need. And then when I show you who and what I am on the inside, you run from it or reject it. Sounds a lot like the Christ of being. When he showed his light, they turned away, hid their head in the darkness because it felt safer and more comfortable to just go along to get along. That's what got us here. I agree. Hey, it's time for me to put some, go hit the road. I got to right. go with this meeting. Blessings. Right, we everybody. love you, Jack. We look forward to and seeing what you create. Um, and either way, it's all part of the collective Truman Show that we all live, right? Hey, you for the fire. <laughs> Later, Jack. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Timmy. Feel free, feel free to preach and pontificate, proselytize, maybe even do a prostate exam live on air. There's a lot of folks. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of beta beings on the metaverse, and they're kind of into that thing. Right up. I mean, I could pass for if I had one of the, the coat. All right, everybody. <laughs> Come on. Who's next for that prostate? Um, Dr. Rabinowitz. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Somebody's, somebody might be hiding the truth. They say I'm a 12% or an eighth Hungarian and eighth Czechoslovakian. That's a lot of the, uh, uh, the Hebrews went over there World War II. I don't know, man. I don't know, but um, I asked the guy one time. I met one of the prostate guys. I said, "Dude, will you be real with me if I ask you?" And I already I set myself up with that one because you know it's never going to be the case. But I, I I tried. Like I got to ask you, what leads someone like you yeah. to a job where you're basically going in in people's ass all day, and not the most attractive people either, really the oldest, fattest, most diseased and ready to die people. That's why I was there at the time, by the way. Synchronicity. So, yeah, like, what leads you to do this? I had to know. And I forget what he told me because it probably wasn't the truth. Oh, you know, it's good pay. No, it's not. It's like, it's like, that's what John Wayne Gacy would say, right? You know? I just really care about people. <laughs> yeah, I really care health. about making a difference. No, you're you know, a when I was sick, a small, twisted freak. <laughs> the answer is. I was a small child. I, uh, <laughs> I really just, I, I just dreamed of everyone having good rectal health. That, that was my <laughs> life's mission. Like, you know, this guy's got like ten bodies under the floorboards. <laughs> he does some bizarre sexual routine. Like every one of these guys, when you meet them, you know something's up, right? You try to get yeah, real with them. Yeah. They're like, "No, I'm yeah. very professional. I'm just an ass doctor. I have a passion for ass." Uh, but only in a clinical sense, only as a professional. And I go, okay, Bob, <laughs> I totally believe you. Bob. They're all named you know, Bob. Because I just right. contend I know more about me than this guy's willing to reveal about himself. He's never going to level with me. Yeah, These dude, are guys, I too, when I turn around, because I've said it to a few of them, right? I'm there a lot. I say to these guys, I go, listen, I have the same passion for rectal health. I'm going to go in your ass now. They go, no way. I'd never be a part of that. And I go, aha, exactly. Right? I don't know. And then you find out later the guy you're talking to is not even a medical doctor. And then it really kind of changes the energy in the room. Wait, you're not a doctor? We just had this whole experience and conversation. Yeah, I got He doesn't go. even work there. <laughs> you didn't live stream this, did you? This is going to be bad it's for some me. guy. <laughs> yeah. And that's just the bellhop. <laughs> The bellhop. The bellhop. You got to take it back. That's vintage broadcast lingo right there. The bellhop, Timmy. 
Can we get some 1930s bellhop ass music? Oh, you're the producer, <laughs> man. I'm I'm in the everything here. Apparently, that's how that goes. That's true. I that's like when true. you're here. You kind of break up the. That's true. Back to yeah, see, I'm gonna do a record again. See, <laughs> step right up, step right up. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted like it's the thing. It's just black, you know, a bit more of an active vibe. Directly. One of those like. Yeah, yeah. I need Hal Roach. I need Hal Roach. Uh, Oh, here we go. That's not good enough, Timmy. You were on the you were on the ball there. So like like you need no you need one of these like this. <laughs> I'm gonna do a rectal exam, see? I want you to bend over now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we just pioneered this therapy like five years ago. <laughs> Some device with a cord on it. Dude, you know what I should bring up for this kind of music? 1930s vintage vibrators. You gotta see these fucking beauties. It's like a vacuum cleaner, Danny. <laughs> like, how did the man at that time cope with that? You wonder why they went to being gangsters and making liquor in the bathtub? They come home and their wife's got a vacuum cleaner with a cord on it that they're shoving in their vagina. Not this concerning that is the man's ego. Cleaning. Uh, I can't do anything. This thing does. I'm gonna go drink and sell booze. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go get with Al Capone and make bathtub gin and go blind. My wife has a vacuum dildo <laughs> with a cord on it. Don't laugh at that, Jennifer. You're part of the reason you keep encouraging my behavior and these rants online. They hate you. Like they don't like me, but they hate you because you're, you're behind every great man is a good woman. And if you weren't there, I would have probably fell backward already. For my own weight. Yeah, they, and then they'll, and then they'll try to hit me with fucking copyright. Um, yeah. Public domain, cocksucker. Wes, Wesley's like my song from uh, my childhood. Tell the vision. The vision is. And <laughs> Wesley's like a wizard with full gray hair at this point. The vision is in seven years I'll be on the land with 144,000 people. Wesley, you're alone at a trailer park. No one's coming to visit you already. Where's the other 144, 143,999 <laughs> people coming from, Wesley? Okay, you're more likely to be sick or dead in the next seven years than with even one more person. Closer to that oh. hundred and forty-four thousand. I'm sorry, I'm doing all the team. It's very uh, negative, you know. I know, I know. I'm being very realistic, faith. which is slash negative. You need to have more faith, Paul, brother. I know. That's the thing, though. Their scripture says, "Put no faith in earthly man and woman for whom there is no salvation." What's the first form of salvation? Saving yourself. You guys, you guys forget. I don't call myself a Christian. I know your bullshit better than you do and how it actually applies and how to work with it and get the result. That's the crazy part. I don't need to be a biblical scholar. All I need to know is 12 points of what the thematics are of this text and how it applies to the individualistic experience and collect it. And then live the information. Oh, wow. oh wait, no. Well, stop oh, it. Yeah, stop. No, no, That's no, too no. much. You're right, Timmy. I'm going to stop you right there. Just pass the, the bowl around. Uh, yeah, I, I was, can you get that around? Oh, man, the top? You that? It started to rock, and we weren't even, I was going to say in here, but we're in the universe. We're out on the deck, and I felt it rock like a, like a creature. Where's plate? <laughs> get the plate. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Wait, that was so good. I need something for that. Is that what you're telling me? I don't know my own words. Oh, no, we need to distract the audience. You've never seen Steel Toe head. Morning Show? They actually actively beg for shit with like a collection plate. That's a bit, they say. I go, that's a bit embarrassing. But we might be able to do that here right now. You know, I'll steal a bit every now and again. I mean, hey. yeah. I just, I, it's, it's, it's incredible. I really find it incredible that they. Do you have the plate? I can't see you. I'm in the back. Do you have the plate? Um, 
Okay, there's a bowl. Get yeah, the collection yeah. plate because whatever the fuck I just said was probably amazing, and people should give me shit for it. Come on, everyone. You know what to do. <laughs> I need my resident Jew. I need my resident Jew like we Italian. We need a new roof. We got it. <laughs> hey, this parish roof isn't going to roof itself. It's not going to shingle guys. itself. <laughs> they're not gonna they're not free you know you can do the you know the brown ones but then they have no insurance i i gotta give it to my guy he's not cheap listen i wear a white robe and it's not gonna dry clean itself all right i'm passing the oh. plate around <laughs> what are you gonna do <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, we're having too much fun at work. Oh, man. Timmy Roth. <laughs> Timmy Roth. Yeah, that's that's one of my favorite bits. Timmy Hyman Roth. Timmy, can like you pull the, up the script? Like you want to do a scene with me? We can get, get towel flicks. I'm yeah. in a good mood. Maybe we'll run some lines. We'll get him to chop it up. Do you want to do a, the one when they're in Cuba or... Or uh, at the gotta, but yeah, no, the one where he's he's explaining. Well, yeah, it's got to be two people. How about yeah, when uh, I, I, my, when your brother is uh, banging cocktail wishes two at a time? How about that one? No, I like the one where he goes, "I respected Hyman Roth, business <laughs> of Hyman Roth, but I never trusted Hyman Roth." <laughs> he's he's alluding to him being an untrustworthy Jew. <laughs> He goes, he's good for making money, but don't trust the motherfucker. <laughs> he'll get you killed, he'll make you money, don't trust him. Hey, but that's not Mike saying it, though. Dude, they play that fucking, this song in my building. In my Vietnamese <laughs> building. I'm like, Timmy walks in, he was in the park, Yo, it's and he's, at the, he's in the train <laughs> scene, where they're about to do a <laughs> His ears start ringing. <laughs> I'm like, why are they playing this? Is, is this for me? Michael. Thank you. Amandula is going to put a pistol in the bathroom. Right right behind the toilet. You going to go in there? You going to get it? Shoot yourself from the table. Go in there and get it. You going to come back out and you're going to kill them both. Galazzo McCluskey. You got to go. Corrupt cop, Mike. Time was coming. Who said you can't kill a cop? Where does it say? <laughs> the best of this is the best is there's certain things when you grow up in certain places or you have a certain ethnicity that everyone knows. <laughs> right? It's it's part of the culture. What does it say that you can't kill a cop? Yeah, I don't understand. And then he leans over the table and he goes, Pardon me, my Jew friend. I'm going to speak to this man in Italian. <laughs> Here's an age. He starts going back and forth about selling heroin in Italian. Oh, man. McCluskey's just chowing down on a veal sandwich or something. <laughs> Whatever he said. No, my Mick friend. You're right. He says McCluskey. <laughs> he calls the other guy the, uh, the Jew. There's a bunch of those, those lines in there. Yeah, he goes, my Mick friend, Mick Kraut friend. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Hold on, I got your contributions to me. Jimmy Shively, why don't you go ahead and share with your online godfather what the rest have already seemed to have gotten and known. Thank you, Jimmy Shively, for your contribution. Because he appreciates me and all I do. He is a friend of the family. Julian Barbary. Thanks and blessings, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Barbary. T-Rex says, for the overtime. Thank you, sir. He's a man who values my time more than I do. Amazing. Let Talcott have more of those people in his life. Immensely successful. Your thoughts? I like... I like the ones when, when Vito is uh is like is like pissed off, but he just he just says it real like it's real slow. Like uh the one of the original scenes. The guy comes in, he's asking him for favors, but he never showed any respect. 
We've known each other for many years. This is the first time you come and ask me for counsel, for help. I can't remember the last time you invited me to your house for a cup of coffee, even though my wife is godmother to your only child. Let's be frank here. You never wanted my friendship. <laughs> no, you're afraid to be in my debt. That's your bit. The, the, your bit is the June father, <laughs> where we just replace you as Vito Corleone. <laughs> and you have a yarmulke. You're a half Jew, half Italian. <laughs> Somehow you were made. You know, you come here and you ask me for my counsel. <laughs> it's Woody Allen as the Jew father. You come here and you ask me for my counsel. <laughs> he never once invited me over for hala and coffee. <laughs> if you did right now, that man that hurt your daughter would be suffering this very minute. I don't know. New father, is that going to go over? Probably not. Hollywood's not going to um, produce that. I don't, know. I don't think so. It's that's, too that's, out, yeah, in the, that's a shame. out in the front. You know? Out in the spotlight. All right, Timmy, where do we go with this? Rapidly spinning in the generating. Yeah. <laughs> but we're having fun, you know. Oh, stream your link. Hold on, hold on, Timmy. Don't go nowhere. Oh, this is great. Do that. I knew that God would provide. It does. I brought it over. All right, you got your link down there. Come on up. I saw you. It's one of the fan favorites. Hey. Hey, guys. Hi guys. <laughs> Jennifer loves this kid. <laughs> hey, uh, Timmy, how are you? Hello. Uh, awesome. Hello. What's up, man? Hey. That's uh, Mark DeCasco's, Timmy. I don't know if you saw there. There's obviously him. He's the picture in the name, Mark DeCasco's. Hey. He's from Cradle to the Grave. I don't know if you're familiar with that series. I am, of course. It's not the series. It's a movie. It's a uh, right. It's a movie. Of course it is. I was kidding. With Steve, Jet paying Lee. attention out there. Hello. With Jet Li. And Jet Li. And other men, yes. <laughs> See? Some attractive men, up. huh? Am I right? right now. Huh? What? I'm looking it up <laughs> right now. Look it up. <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> there it is. It's an it's a R rated. <laughs> R-rated, like what I'm going to do with Auntie. <laughs> Sorry, that's X-rated. Oh, look yeah, at that. Next oh. <laughs> Dude, where's Auntie? Go get her. <laughs> she's she's not here. I think she's... Yeah, pa Paul's uh, about to start growling like DMX. I think Amber Hardwick. Auntie comes in. <laughs> Amber Hardwick. I maybe get... I mean, not... Well, I am a Lion of Judah. Oh. Hi, I'm so sorry. Salute. Uh, I'm taking your mama. Now. Hey, yeah, what would you heard that coming from Auntie's room oh, late at night? Man. Uh, <laughs> You're in noise like oh, that. <laughs> the growl uh, of a man in full you climax. You? Or I don't know who this, <laughs> I don't know who this girl is. She does what? a martial artist. She's a she's a girl. Look at this. Look at this. You're doing the fucking foghorn leghorn bit again. Kelly. Or does Kelly look what? like more than like to play baseball? Hey, Timmy, who's that? Kaylee, who? what? Oh, is this who is on first? Oh, I'm I'm uh, uh, uh. Look, Timmy. Oh, it's about as sharp as a bowling ball. <laughs> that dog. Timmy, Timmy, look. I prefer Rush Hour, the no. Asian and the black guy. No, she's better. in Cradle to the Grave. Yeah, Rush Hour is better though. They're no, she's copying not in that. It. She's not in it. Yeah, but they're copying that, right? Who's that? Who's that girl? I know. I say I know what a real boy likes to play. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy, who's that girl? Haven't you ever seen a baseball before? <laughs> All right. Haven't you ever played baseball? All right. 
I guess we're there's trying to figure it out. See, there's something kind of Let's figure this out. <laughs> Let's figure okay, this out. Boy, I'll learn you the game. Now we got the ball, and oh, this is a Now we got... Oh, look at that. What's happening? <laughs> what do you mean, what's happening? This is the downfall of masculinity in our society right in Who's front that? of your eyes. Is that happening? What else would be called into this place? This fucking den of iniquity that I've opened up. This portal to purgatory. That is know. the metaverse. What do you, what do you think this is? It's a school night. It's a school night. It's a school night. It's a school I don't night. know. This I don't is know. the that. boy who wants to be prettier than the woman he's showing on screen. I said, I said, I said something a little bit of e about a boy who calls himself Mark the Case Ghost <laughs> and constantly lusts after man and wants to be pretty hey, like uh, no, Sarah no, no, Michelle. No, no. Hey, <laughs> hey, Paul. Paul. Ain't you never played Paul. baseball before, boy? Paul. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> Baby, look. Why do you do this to me every day, bro? Why do you do this? Do you have some kind of a disability? I'm not being mean now. I'm saying, hey. is there something I should be aware of that I'm not addressing? Hey. How many people are they? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy, what's the, Timmy, what's the proper? This is why I should inspired. never have children. It's best off that I won't Timmy. penetrate women. I, I, I'm probably not going to be the best role model and father. It's what I've learned on the internet. They've taught me that. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. What's that? Timmy, what are the odds that if I have a child, this isn't going to be my daily routine? This is a good behind. Somehow, twist of fate. This, 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 this is Paul Hunsley Jr. Hey, guys. <laughs> right? Hey, Timmy. This is that? Is the, and this will be my life. And then I'll have no more rap to come on here with. That'll be it. Slow stay will just roll through. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, It'll be like Jack. Hey, It'll be like Jack. I want to be sad now. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah forget yeah. about the rights, freedom, hey, principle hey. thing. Hey, forget hey. about the... Forget it. Who's that? That was a phase. <laughs> now I can't leave. I'm. I can't. How leave. many are they? I. I don't know. I can't count. I guess. <laughs> what, what is this? How many are they? Is this real? <laughs> Junior now. Just imagine it's Timmy Junior and try to what? try to parent. Wait. The father's not there, that? Tim. Try what to parent it? him. Try to be a friend. Try to be how a many, how lend many, an ear. How many leaves? News anchors. All right, there's four. Now there's zero. There was four <laughs> beings there. What is your point, Mark? Four what? Beings. Mark. What's your point, Mark? Stop being. That Wait, you fell for the Mark the Cave Ghost funky. thing? You think you really is Tim? Damn, Timmy. That's what you were. Funky, funky. Okay, Mark, there's four people there. <laughs> what is your fucking point? Hey, Paul. Yeah. Can you tell Timmy to search Sarah Michelle Geller photo shoot? No, out, please? I, we already did this. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Hang out with him and search the fucking. Right. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Sarah Michelle. Just look yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, just okay. look it up. Yeah, I just did. Yeah. She's no, let great. me see. Yeah. Let me see. I'm Who would you choose go. if you had to choose to be your stepfather? Because your father's in Mexico. If you had to choose someone to be your stepfather, would you choose me or Timmy? Uh, both. Oh. You want two daddies? How? Uh, why am I not surprised? Uh, it's yeah, because, I should have seen that uh, coming. I just want to. Can or you search, going. Hey, <laughs> hey, guys, can you search? Can you search Sarah okay. Michelle Geller photo shit, please? I think Daddy's Blue Funk is rethinking his whole childhood and lifestyle as a result of this interaction. Hey, you can start to get what I'm saying. Daddy's, Daddy's Blue, Blue Funk, you're getting it now, right? We're, hey. we're right here. Hey. Same top. Hey. This is hey, pretty bro. much you, like tw like ten years ago, right? Hey Paul, I'm guessing. Hey Paul, this was you right here hey, ten Paul. years ago. Just the father left, <laughs> mama, auntie was there. No, Nothing but you and Sarah Michelle Geller, twenty four seven. So you don't know whether to dress up like her or beat your baby meat to her. I get it. It's confusing. It can get like that. Look, look. At We've this. all been there, huh? Am I right? Anyone? Okay, just us. Mark the case goes right. What's I don't up, really Luke? Really I just, I just oh, wanted. To, I think I just didn't that's what I've been said. Just bask in the gloriousness of what it is. Hey guys, look at this. Look at this. Didn't want to end on a bad note. That's all. Guys, look I at love this. You, look at this. Just gonna relight another. Uh, rolling another. Day. Yeah, 
I'd yeah, I'd light one up. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, it's look gonna at be a that. long night. Long night. <clears throat> Jimmy. Mm -hmm. You might want to put something in, whatever that is you just lit up. Something a little bit extra. Really kind of kill the pain. Yeah, really long. It's going to be. Yup, yup. Bodyguard, horrible ending. A new beginning. No, a horrible ending. Bodyguard. Story pull some fentanyl again. From my best mate. Is that a Do white screen know? or white? Is what about now? Is it a wine? Timmy, I could probably smoke PCP like one more time and be okay, right? I have that DVD. You're not answering me. All right. I'll stick to the weed. I'll probably just stick with the weed. Hey! 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 These are the things I can do without. Come on. I'm talking to you. Is this some kind of a, um, a homosexual mating call? Are you guys, guys kind of like summoning in all the other homosexuals on the metaverse by, by doing some kind of mating call? Twin daggers. Because I don't know Twin if I daggers. want that here. I mean, do we want that here? Is that good content? I don't know if I... Do we want that here? Know, well, I you're have, not the one to ask. I have so many I might have to go to Jennifer on this if we want that. Twin daggers with... This it's might like be a good time to admit Amber for clarity. I'm, not ho I'm a bisexual, a not homosexual. <laughs> right, I tell That's people the same thing. Me. Yeah. Because I love oh, women so yeah. much. I'm metrosexual, <laughs> homosexual, can I? Oh, yeah. I love pussy way too much. Oh. Fucking pussy. I was pussy. forced to admit the same that. thing after seeing Rob Cleveland. So, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got pussy? The long story. Where's the pussy? I was doing like Show me the pussy. Song. Getting really creepy and cringy and awkward in here, which, I mean, I guess has awkward. become my specialty. <laughs> Inadvertently. <laughs> we, said, we said the other... We established the other day, you, you, you attract <laughs> weirdo. There's five squares left. We need Tarek, uh, Soft Hat, Hard ass. Uh, oh, you mean the guy who was drunk the other night talking shit on other places, but when he gets around me in certain areas, he's real quiet and meek and he likes to laugh and giggle at me. Yeah. 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 Who else? Brian Lee. Moves and so much stuff going on screen. I don't That's know what Jimmy, to look at. Jimmy, look at this. What the hell's that up there? Jimmy! Oh, my God. My head is spinning. Why are you showing this stuff on your screen? This is you. That's you. Who, Talking that? weird. No, that's you. No. What is that? That's you. Is that <laughs> you? That's me, is it? I said no. He's not hearing me. That's you. <laughs> not even just like Talcott, that's you. Like, that's you. No. That's you. <laughs> that's him. Chief, what? <laughs> or is it Jeff's back? Speak, what, what are you actually studying, Mark? Is he class is there? Writing. Guys, look Should at this! What are you come studying? On. There's Who no class they? to study how to be extremely effeminate. I don't they? think. There might be now. There's new, Who new, are they? New rubrics. I don't care, dude. Just some how to be effeminate male. Hollywood, one -on -one. Guys, Hollywood who are fucking starlets. Guys, who are they? Charlie Sheen's They're not real. Uncle. They're not real. That's all I know. You're not white. All right, this is maddening. We're going to get out of here, all right? Because this is insanity. Going nowhere is always great stuff. I had to start a pound. That's my thing. We're on a road to nowhere. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. All right, Christos. You got it, bro. Paul's been. Paul's embarrassed, been embarrassed off his own stream. Oh my god, not for the first time. Salute. <laughs> hey, Daddy Slootbong, look at this. Klein World. Salute. Oh, <laughs> Who are they? Salute. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Salute. 
Oh my gosh! Why is he hitting the bees? Oh, I Alright. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. My name is Antonio Solis, and I'm getting out. Go outside. Go outside. <laughs> Go outside. Don't have to do this anymore. Go outside. Mm -hmm. Go outside. You need the beekeeper suit, man. You're gonna get stung to fuck. Hey guys. What the hell? <laughs> guys! Seems like a futile exercise. I'm gonna get this fucking <laughs> direction while I'm still laughing. I'm gonna get this fucking job, fucking <laughs> job done while I'm still laughing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Did somebody actually do that? Oh, okay! Okay! <laughs> okay! 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 Those okay. bees aren't the real. That's the computer graphics. What the hell going on? The hell is going on? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> this is the funniest and the weirdest fucking stream I've Who ever been they? on. Who are they? Who are they? I've been on loads, but this is the weirdest. <laughs> Who are fucking they? I'm glad I'm fucking stoned, because I wouldn't be able to cope with that otherwise. <laughs> Who fucking are they? Who <laughs> wouldn't be able to cope? <laughs> are they three? Are they three? Are they three? <laughs> three ladies? <laughs> 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 They're six. They're six. They're six. They're six. They're six. They're six. <laughs> oh no, the <laughs> God damn it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> hey, dumbass. Oh, two, oh. Huh. two. God damn it. Oh. Two. Huh. Blow jobs. Huh. Everyone's got to appreciate. Huh. Huh. Okay, let's stop now. Since we're doing a party, we're gonna have a party with six gentlemen and ladies. Let's try it. Hey! 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 We wish to America. We wish to when you America. shut up, you'll understand. Let's do America. Happy New Year. Hey, dumbass. <laughs> Who the heck are they? Who the fuck are they? Tell me! 
Chubby Debbie coupon. Who the fuck are they? So nobody, nobody's ever seen him with another chick. Look at that, dude. That's you. <laughs> That's you. Sarah Michelle Geller. <laughs> yeah. That's you. Michelle Geller. But nobody, nobody's ever seen him with another chick. That's you. All right. All right, you guys. <laughs> this is it. New levels of pleasure. New levels of release. Fuck your ass. Fuck your ass. What? What was he What were you saying? <laughs> what were you <laughs> saying? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you yelling, fuck your ass. <laughs> Guys, look, Paul, look at this. <laughs> All right, we just got like four more hours of this, and then we'll get back to it. All right. God damn it, Paul. Was fucking powerful, huh? That was powerful. We only got yeah. like three hours and fifty-five more minutes of that. I learned this from oh, Jesse hey Howe and Moose and, hey, and Gen X Jeff. Hey Paul. Yeah, what, 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 what? Uh, can you put the song, please? What now? Can you put the song, please? Yeah, we got we got three hours and fifty-five no, I need more Michael minutes. Jackson. I need Michael Jackson, please. They don't care about us. Need Michael Jackson right now that badly? Are you flashing yeah, back? I, yes, I need that song, please. <laughs> right. They don't care about it. You want some visuals of his bed? You go yeah. with the, the music? Yes? Yes. Well, oh, that's the that's the beauty and joy, yeah, right? The prison version. Like Michael let's said, do the prison version. The greatest thing you could do is share your bed and visuals of your bed with a child. All right, can you all right, can you put the And this is why Stafford hey, Snaps is gonna call hey, me Oh go beat you tomorrow. Hey, Just whatever the fuck you're doing. Hey Paul. <laughs> What the hell? Always ask yourself. Ask question. yourself this question. Hey, dumbass. You're off. You're off. Do you know where you are right now? 
I think that crisis initiation is really tough. When you 
shut up, you'll understand. I would oh, love to fucking see you face to face. You're a twisted motherfucker. God damn it, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is my safe space. Please respect it. My safe space. Please respect <laughs> it. Now. 
A lot of uh, looping does go on here. God damn it, Paul. Yes, there's the demon. Bring it up out of you, Aaron. There's the
I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. All right. Hey, oh, my. How do you take your phone hey, over? Oh. What's going on here? Just because you have a mouth doesn't mean you have to fucking use it. Yeah! Yeah! New levels of pleasure. Pipe up, fat slave, if you got...
This is my safe space. Please respect it. 46? Okay. Okay. 46, go. Oh. Alright. Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's it for now. Hey, guys. The Lake Show with Stephen Colbert. A lot of uh, looping does go on here. Stephen Colbert! You're a twisted motherfucker! For your news, for news, no. Seven years. The poor person. All right, here's the studio. All right, we only got like three hours left. Are you ready? Uh, yes. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Can you put the music, uh, They Don't Care About Us by Michael Jackson, please? Oh, you want Michael Jackson's bed again? Yes. Yeah, the nicest thing that Michael Jackson could do is share his bed with a child. Can you put that song, please? Don't care about us? Yes. Today. Yes. Straight people? I totally agree. Yes. Straight people let's, don't care about us. Yeah, let's try it. Let's we're here we're trying to get used to it, huh? Yeah. Fox 59. <laughs> Fox 59. All right. Uh, I'm gonna get a copyright for this. Can we, how about we do? How about right. we do? Uh, uh, You're gonna watch karaoke style. Hey, how about Camp Rock? Camp Rock. <laughs> That's your fucking jam, bro. I never seen anyone do Camp Rock like you. Yeah, we're gonna, you know, because you like to try to play down your skills. But no, I'm not gonna... the camp. No, no, no. Hey, well, let's do not try the karaoke. Just try the normal one. Oh, we're we. This is our thing, bro. No, no karaoke, no karaoke, no karaoke, no karaoke. This is what men do when they get together, right? No, Bond just do Michael. Coming no, of age Michael. story. Don't do get karaoke. Together and they do karaoke to Ariana Grande, which is your favorite song from Camp Rock. Let's go. Fuck yeah! Come on. I've been really so into it. girl. <laughs> I did my face. face. Come on. So afraid, so afraid to, to tell the world what I gotta say. But, but he's got the stream, and it's deep inside, inside of him. I'm he's gonna, gonna let, let it show. It's time to let you know. Come on, really get into it. Did this happen last time? <laughs> every time we meet, guys, 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 we come here every day, right? <laughs> Guys, we come every day. I play a doctor on here sometimes, and sometimes uh, I like hey, just, like, hey, Paul, the time. hey, Paul, Paul, come on, hey Paul. hey, Paul, can you put the music on, please? It's... Oh, yeah, one more time from the top. Wait, can you put the right now? We can have fun with me. I'm like Michael Wait, Jackson's can father. Can you put the song... Get it right or don't do it. Let's go. <laughs> Serious business, just... Ariana Grande. Come on, <laughs> oh, 
get on that, Jennifer. Why you throw me off? This is the real shit. I've always I'm been always been the kind of girl. In my face. I really wish I had a warrior here right now to sing back up. But I got this say. Someone who's really good with Nathan Sanders, but I have a dream. And it's right inside of me. I'm gonna let it show. I'm trying to let you know. Alright. I'm outside and the neighbors probably called the police. Yeah. Just coming. Now I hear you coming now. I went down the lane. And they're going to lock me up to please play. This is me. Yeah. Do you know what it's like to sleep on dark? To dream about a life where you're near the sun and the star? <laughs> Even though it seems I'm just in the next room. I don't even know what to do. I have to believe in my sound. It's the, the only way. way. This is real, this is me, <laughs> I'm exactly where I push you now, man. God damn it. No more hiding. All right, that was a little bit better. A little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Can you put the Michael the Jackson song, They Don't Care About Us, please? They Don't Care About Us again? We're, doing, we're, we're yeah. cir- you're cycling back to that, huh? Yeah, we're just search it up. Not, don't do the karaoke. Just do the official video. I got, I, all I got here is Michael Jackson's Bed. Are you into that song? Yes, just do the official you're video. Into that? Or Michael Jackson's Bed? Yes, just do the official video. No official video. I'm going to get hit with copyright. Yeah. No, don't get a copyright. It won't. It won't get a copyright. Oh, come on, man. Come on. No, no, no. No, get no real. copyright, okay? No Be copyright. Real. This is me. This is us. Come on. We're exactly no, where we're no, supposed no, to. No, no copyright, okay? Come on. Come on. What you got? <laughs> All I want to say is that. <laughs> What's this loading screen? Loading screens for Michael Jackson? Oh. Countdown. Dan has, Dan has, everybody's gone back. Situation is different. Everybody stuck you. This is a terrible song. It's really bad. Oh, this is a terrible instrumental, and the song is, is not much better. Official, official version. No, you can't do that. You're gonna you're gonna have Michael Jackson's whole estate suing me. Give me a break, man. You gotta turn it off. You can't be here if you're gonna copyright hit me. You know <laughs> that's the thing. You gotta turn it off. All I got to say is that you really don't care about me. <laughs> okay, It's kind of like the song. This is probably why Michael Jackson wrote that song. He started a panel. All I got to say is that they don't really care about me. You're still doing it. Stop sashaying around back there and turn off the fan Michael Jackson. I know you're having flashbacks to his bed, kid. An unpretty story. Someone had to tell it. That's why I'm here. He's not listening. Well, they say never work with children, animals, or tards. And I chose all three on these panels. God, that's why my show business career is bound to come to a tragic end. Pretty sure it already has, technically. Never really begun. Yeah, I had to turn you down. Look at this studio. Okay, you turned it off. Good job. Can't have copyright music, dude. Look at this. What other kind of songs are you into? Fox 59. What's that? Fox 59. That's not songs. What? What? 
Fox 59. How about Joey don't stop till you get an hour. What? Bodyguard, a new. Don't stop till you get enough, which well, I'm not gonna get into it. Don't stop till you get enough. Which say he's an only child. Why don't stop till you get enough, people. My parents said the same thing. Don't stop till you get enough. Don't stop till you get enough. These instrumentals are terrible. <laughs> you want a car- karaoke party? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's Wait, way more to this song than I remember. It's really kind of classy. Now that I'm reading the lyrics, you should be talking about fucking. Keep on with the force, don't stop, don't stop till you get enough. Whoa! Dude, is anyone aware of this? He said, he said, please don't reach to the phone and call the cops. He's lyric. Michael might have been revealing. Cruel intention, film it. Don't Alright, you're not even singing the damn song. Alright, I think I'm done with you. Mark the case. Go, 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 go. Yeah, it's that quick. I lose interest that quick. That was interesting. That's the one I'm going to Let's go. Go, pack it up. Shut her down. Party's nope. over. No. Nope. You got to be at school tomorrow. No, I don't have school tomorrow. You do. We got to get you a no. new helmet in the morning, and you got school. So we got to be up extra early. No. Let's go. No. Get to bed. Go beat your baby no, meat. No, do no, no, no. Whatever you got to do. No. So how <laughs> dare you, Mark? Beat me out for. Marcus M. DeCascos, how dare you get loud with me? I'll take because away your Pokemon. In, if you keep I'm it up, in, I'll take away your Pokemon I'm card. I'll do it. Crash. Get in the room now. Melissa this crash. is why I stopped fucking your father Melissa. shortly after the pregnancy. Get in the room now. I'll take your Pokemon cards right away from you. <laughs> you were joking me. Yeah, the part about your father. Yeah, totally a joke. Just get in the room. All right. Go to bed. <laughs> Dude, I don't have school tomorrow. Auntie's coming around the corner. I hear her stomping. No. She's a large woman. No. She's a large woman. I hear no. her stomping. She's no. coming in here. <laughs> Let's be real. You don't have a family, do you? They completely turned you out. It's a sad hey, story. There's no one this. in that house, is there? There's look no one watching. This. Look at <laughs> this. You're, you're all over the time. I can what is she doing? Is she doing? What are you no. doing? What am I doing? No, what is she doing in the studio? <laughs> She's pretending to to give out information and news while lying. Because I'm a bodyguard. I've seen that a lot of places. Wait, can CBS Four air the movie Bodyguard: A New Beginning, or what? All right, I'm gonna let you go. You seem real busy. All right, bye. You seem like you got other stuff to do. I don't want to hold you up. I guess he's gone. Thought he was still there. I guess he's gone already. All right, whatever. Good night, Mr. DeCascos, wherever you are. I feel like as soon as I say I'm leaving, he's going to go, okay. 
And she did leave. Hey guys, not done yet. All right, people. I don't know what the fuck that just was. I'm not responsible or accountable for any of that. I love you, brothers and sisters. I don't know why any of that just happened. Pretty much, I was going to say the last three hours, but no, the whole six and a half. Okay, time flies when you're having fun. I don't know what any of that was, uh, but I'm going to get back tomorrow and we're going to do it again for some reason. Only the Lord knows. If he doesn't, I'm sure the devil does. All right, I'm back. You Speaking guys. of which, hey, guy. Hey. Oh, I gotta know your move by now. Oh, Pretend oh, to leave and come back. Oopsie, 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 oopsie. Oopsie. All right, get the hell out of here. I can't play with you any longer. All right, Vincent Size, Mark the Case Ghost, whatever the fuck your name is. I'll see you later. Go get some rest. Go relax. Uh, you're all wired up. It's getting late, okay? Auntie's like fucking had it with life, you know, with the whole thing. Give her a break, all right? Go relax. We've been yelling and screaming, you know, lighting the house on fire. She doesn't appreciate it. She's got, she's got shit to do tomorrow. She's got bills to pay. Life is real out here for Auntie. Have some fucking respect. All right, people. I don't know what else to say that hasn't already been said. I'll be back tomorrow uh, at some point. We're between 12 and 3. MDT, I suppose. Uh, miles from out west. As always, out of all media. Signing off. Yeah, I mean, what you really need when you really sit in the silence is peace. And the only way to peace is through understanding and acceptance. The only way to that is through functional communication. Could you see what this God really damn is? It. If you had a bunch of me's who were authentic and accountable and response able, living into their supernatural beingness, being a head or a source of community, <laughs> the system is done. I'm the biggest threat ever. Hey, guys. Man. That self is self. The universe is macro, as above, so below. Anything you see out there is in here. You have to have some ego in this life to go past all the tests and challenges when everyone else tells you you're crazy. If you don't have some level of ego, you're not going to get that done. You're going to fold. Fuck you. It's not going to be true for me. You can't worry about what you're going to lose. You have to focus on what you're going to gain. Your self-respect, your honor, your nature. Uh, and an ability to use your discernment to check other people in their ego. And nobody's above that program. Let's Please. really understand Please. that there's like many levels Please. and moving parts to this. You know, you got to have the understanding with the discernment and you have to have the application with enough ego to check someone else's ego when they want to lead you where they want you to go rather than where we all need to go. There has to be some level of trust in oneself. Well, figure it out, motherfucker. See, there's the refocus. It's not the inclination to be possessive. It's what are you trying to possess? Think I'm going to be possessive over a person, place, or thing and lose my peace and my connection to that and my discernment? Absolutely not. Because supernaturally, we're meant to be a certain thing, it would seem. We got to get into alignment with that. That's God's will, so to speak. And yeah, it's not always pretty. And it's not always what culture and society shows you. Oftentimes, it's the exact opposite. Let's get it out on the table. I love the game. Right. If you love life and you love the game and completion, you love talking about Low jobs. feelings because we're going to get to something through this shit one way or the other. You don't want to do this process. You don't want to step out completely into faith. You don't want to be radically fucking authentic to the point you might chase everyone away. Well, you ain't going to get to reap the benefits and status or reward of real man. You're going to be Pinocchio, fashioned in the wood shop, attached with the strings, lying your whole life with your nose growing. The system thrives off of beta males not knowing themselves and being in their position, not leading but following, and getting to the women through the benefits and privileges and turning that house into chaos against God's law and God's alignment. Why do you think they hate me so much and come up against me so much? Because I'm trying to free a whole bunch of motherfuckers from themselves and a generational systemic problem where we rebuke creation and our supernatural beingness for sophisticated, civilized society. But ultimately, there's an organization here within the seeming chaos. There's a bigger understanding that we can align with to move out of what we see here as so disempowering and beyond us. You know, there's a direct connection to internal and external space. They've proven that. So let's get really real with ourselves and each other. Let's reconcile the collective unconscious. Let's move into purpose and meaning and reconciliation. And let's co-create. Gotta respect.
respect a motherfucker like me who does without for a while and sacrifices with discipline so they could build the future.